Hey everybody and welcome back to NECC Fall 2022. I am Hazard JC, joined on the mic once again with my lovely friend Cairo. How are you feeling, man? I'm feeling great. We're back in NECC, Hazard. It feels like ages since we've actually been able to cast mm. for NECC. Um, to be in for some more Valorant action is amazing. And it's always a star-studded lineup with us, uh, this organisation. Oh, it, it always is NECC, something to look forward to in the calendar. Monday nights mean Valorant, and we've got plenty of that in store for you guys this evening. Just looking at the matchups that we have in front of us, first of all, we're going to have a best of three between CSU Vikings and CU Ravens FE. So we have yeah. two new teams on the block entirely. One, the fact that Carlton Ravens are now fielding an additional roster, a female team to look forward to, uh, active in the Game Changers community perhaps. And then CSU, this is the first time we've seen them as a college take part in NECC. So lots to look forward to in this first matchup in Challengers. And then later into the evening, once Kara and I have departed, we have two champions best of threes coming up for you. So some incredibly high tiered Valorant to look forward to. Yeah, exactly. That will be something to really set um, or to, to kind of wait wait for. Uh, lots of good fragging power in those teams, and and hopefully we'll mm -hmm. we'll get some really good best of threes because that's what this is in NECC. It's all best of threes in the regular season, which is I think probably the most competitive sound format you could have. Yeah, it certainly is. Great to have a few more matches to dig your teeth into than usual. Looking at those first two teams and this first best of three, most specifically, we have CSU Vikings and CU Ravens. So getting a look at the first of our rosters for this evening will be CSU. They've got Zekru, Revy, Exile, Tune, and Land. So a mixture of freshmen, sophomores, and even a graduate running uh, the top of things here, Zekru, to hopefully lay down the law and lead the line. Yeah, exactly. I'm just think, just finding it funny that there was tune, and then you went tune, which is like obviously yeah. like a very UK thing. But yeah, no, it looks like <laughs> a, it looks like a very good team. I'm excited to see exactly yeah. what they can do. Certainly. Looking on towards that second roster which we have for you, which will be from Carlton University, Ravens FE. We have Hans, Octina, Tranquil, Apple, and oh my goodness. I oh mean, look, God. it's only the first game of the evening, but as casters, we're already being tested. Uh, a Queen Octium. I think that's the best go I can give it, Cairo. Uh, I'm not too sure what oh your take on my. that one would be. Uh, uh, do you know something? I'm, I always feel like the the, the the one that you like you go straight forward to to take the mick out of when trying to pronounce things. It's awful. Mm. I hate it. I feel like I feel like I'm being bullied in this <laughs> casting pair. I'm fed up with it. Mm. I've just had had a quick Google search of what that means as well. It's something to do with the solar equinox, the change in seasons. Obviously, okay. uh, this is a, a new season of sorts. We're in the fall, the autumn, if you're from our side of the pond. Yeah. But shouldn't be too long before we get into this first game. But Let's have a look at the maps we're going to be going to. It's a best of three, like you mentioned quite rightly yes. earlier on. We know what kind of maps these teams like to play into, but Pearl has now joined the fray, a new thing to consider, not getting a, a go out this time around. Yeah, it's kind of sad that we had to say goodbye to Split. Peril, we saw lots of, act saw lots of action at Champs, Fracture, Icebox, and Breeze, also three maps that we saw mm. fa fairly, fairly frequently here uh, in Champs Hazard. Yeah, and well, looking at these maps as well, and what we usually expect from uh, an NECC season, last time yeah. out, Ascent was uh, the fan favorite by a country oh, yeah. mile, Icebox a close second, and Bind trailing along in third, or maybe even Haven, I'm not too sure. Ascent was top of the pile though, but it does get yeah. banned out this time around. Fracture and Icebox will be the first two that we go towards. Starting out on Fracture, one of the newer maps in the pool, and well, actually one which teams avoided with a 10 foot pole last split so yeah. interesting to see that csu as the new team on the block have actually picked into this one well i think the thing is though has there's been a there's now a lot of predetermined strategy there's now a, a process on this map and how to play it how to uh, take um we've seen lots of pros kind of really really mm. kind of um make a dent in the strategy department so i'm expecting a lot of people more comfortable especially in a comp environment and especially mm. since you can keep it as a kind of pocket pick is maybe one up on your opponent if they're uncomfortable on it yeah, we're also seeing CSU start out on the attacking side in both of these maps. Yeah. 
I guess you could probably give a bigger argument for Icebox being more attackers favored. But yes. uh, when you look at Fracture, it's almost as if those roles are flipped entirely because uh, starting out on the defender's side here, Carlton, they'll want to try and create some of that pressure that you alluded to. Strategically, yeah. you're going to be wanting to make that proactive control with so many different lanes that the attackers can look to exploit have to keep something under wraps and, and create something for yourself so i'm really looking forward to how this starts us off i think a yeah. lot of casters are maybe a bit polarized in general of their opinion on fracture players alike but yeah. for me it has to be a personal favorite because there's just oh, yeah. so much depth that both of these teams can yeah. show off to us i mean you see casters are polarized but me and you are kind of on the same mm. level when it comes to this map there's so much you can do in terms of you've already spoken about the lanes but you've not spoke about the orb points because there's four yes. on this map here has a, a lot of farming to be had and a lot of ultimate usage to be had on this map yeah, and you've, you've always got to consider ultimate economy almost secondary to economy itself, but yes. sometimes it does give you that X factor, which can turn a low investment to oh, well, yeah. a big investment in terms of the, the ultimate itself that you're providing, and then also the value that that can have. Yeah. And sometimes when teams aren't making the most of their utility usage, that's also reflected in ultimate usage, and that can create some serious problems. Looking at this... Uh, set up as a whole in the best of three the three maps that we have i think fracture icebox and breeze as, as a closing map are all incredibly expansive so uh, fracture and breeze most specifically are yeah. very wide maps to consider i'm fully expecting to see chamber on all three maps icebox maybe even being the better of the three to use him in but even despite the nerfs that have, have come around, if you can even really call it that, there's just so much value to be gained from taking those opening engagements. Are there any other agents that you would look in towards Fracture? I mean, the thing is, though, Fracture's kind of like high octane, high uh, kind of fast paced. Um, sorry, that Haven kind of like looking totally threw me off there. Apologies. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like, already, Breach, um, Neon kind of makes sense. Really good mm. combos you can do there. The KO helps that out, out as well. Fade, a big one, and I'm interested to see the fact that we are seeing CU not bring that through. Yeah, CU, they've opted for the Breach instead. Hands will be picking up that role. An agent which I like a lot, because the thing with Breach on Fracture is that the way the map is set up, you have the two sites and that connector uh, area in Defender Spawn. Yeah. A lot of teams like to play that Breach in more of a flex role, a rotate role, because of the fault lines. You yeah. get so much distance on them, you can employ that from pretty much anywhere on the map, to a certain extent, of course, and it really does add to the value that this agent has, whereas KO, for example, doesn't have the same kind of passive impact. If there's a gunfight coming down on the site, without some kind of a lineup, you're really going to struggle to assist your teammates. So that is something that I'm really looking forward to. Other than that, agents-wise, it is fairly standardized. Neo on, on both sides as well. Teams looking to create that pressure and get aggressive. The flyover is currently of Haven, but we are, in fact, going into Fracture for Map 1. It is CSU's pick, and they will be starting on the attacking side. I think another thing that we could talk about here, Heiser, is the difference in controller. Um, there we are. The, yeah, there we go. Fantastic. Um, the <laughs> controllers between the two teams, we saw CU pick up the Brim, and we saw CSU pick up the Viper. What do you think the difference could be in terms of controller there? Uh, one of the main things to look at will be post plant for both of these agents yeah. and both of them are incredibly good from that position the vipers but looking at ultimates specifically through that avenue vipers pit will be great for consolidating control in certain areas of the map and will provide more longevity than an orbital strike would but both of them can also severely delay certain areas brimstone smokes will last longer when once you have control of those spaces so that will be something to look towards as well and viper on the opposite side can potentially sell a fake with two initiators for both teams they will be looking to just create as much information as possible and the setup right now would dictate that we're going to see heavy a main presence off the back of this breach as is so frequently common yeah, it'd be interesting to see if we saw a double controller set up on Fracture. Maybe that'll come through eventually, or maybe, like, we're, we're still waiting on it coming. At this moment in time, though, no Hazard, we are going to go straight on towards the B site. Triangle just behind this Viper wall gets taken out, and Tower's still to be taken. Sick through, though, all the way outside. And it seems as if the plan still can't be executed. 
Khan and Zekru still in the back line causing problems. Now flipped to a three versus one. Octina, she's going to have to go huge on the Neon to find value here. Just shifting around the side of the toxic screen, maybe isolating the fight, but turning away at the very last moment. Zekru will find the kill on towards her. CSU Vikings do pick up the pistol round. There was a chance there where if Carlton had held on towards that tower position, you maybe favored them in the retake. The rotate yeah. was swift enough, but that's one of the reasons why perhaps you don't see a double controller setup because having that neon in the side instead, yeah. doubling up in terms of the space creation that you can get and just narrowing things down uh, is a little bit more valuable, I suppose, in the way that they try and set up. So nice early pickup here and they look to head towards A instead. Yeah, there's been a little bit of a gamble stack here. There's four players stacked towards A. And CSU slowly mm. creeping up. Has it Octina though? Look where she's positioned behind that box. That could be a huge play if it comes off. Yeah, they're going to have to try and clear this one out, but Land is aware of it. Octina will get felled. And simply put, this team is being slain right now. Carlton, not too much for them to try and work with as we are seeing Aquinoctium playing from the corner, just looking to try and buy some sort of a timing as Apple is finally on the scene. It was their information which allowed for the rotate to come through or the stack to survive, but doesn't matter in the end. A flawless response. And we see that second round picked up. All five weapons kept into the bonus. That's going to be huge for this next round. I wanted to actually kind of make a comment, no hazard. Um, about mm. the first round, and I know I'm kind of throwing it back a little bit, but we did yeah. see that Viper hey, throw wall. throw it back all you want, yeah. baby. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> we saw the Viper wall go across the site, but that actually allowed for a lot of opportunity for the defenders to creep up on towards yeah. the site. I didn't like that. Mm. And it'll be interesting to see if that's the same execute we see towards B once again with such a heavy presence on this south side of the map. Perhaps we are seeing a Ooh. CU side which are allowed a bit more to try and work with and roam to look for these kills. We've already seen uh, this rotate come through. Main control has been conceded, but the first pick is found. Nice work from Octina. Will help her side get off to a flyer. Yeah. Octina and the Brim just slowly dis just kind of disjointed there because of that viper wall and obviously the viper wall is lurking down on dish we see that in the top left there but mostly the large majority of the pack is moving towards a and they're actually going underneath i wonder if they're mm. going to try and farm ultimate points here but zek crew oh. could be huge just misses the opportunity ah uh, well that may not be an opportunity squandered just yet because it's a lot of information that fall into the hands of csu here the shots being fired away and the neon steps as well means that it's at least two players that have moved off of A. Zekru now with a prime chance to take down one of them and Equinoctium does drop. This has perhaps opened the floodgates as we are seeing the rotate come through. Only 30 seconds left on the clock. Ah, but Zekru over aggresses, gets the pick. Does the remaining players get on to site? 20 seconds remain. There won't be much hazard in terms of re-rotates. And we are going to see that plant go through. Apple taking Revy on the rotate there. And now it's all up to one player. It's all up to Exile. They need at least one player to make this worth it. To make this whole round worth it. They're going to swing out. But they're going to meet with a flurry of lead. That's going to be the defuse coming through for the defenders. Yeah, more lead than a church rooftop in that scenario. <laughs> and the majority of it will be kept through here as well. Four rifles to try and work with into the next round. Carlton Ravens, they're able to deny the bonus here from CSU. There were some nice ideas, and Zekro yeah. got into a really damaging position. Just perhaps needed to hold on a moment longer for that support to come through from their teammates, but... Now we look to the gun rounds. A lot of times you can get into a sense of one team is having more success than they really are in the opening stages. When it comes down to the gun yeah. rounds, when you have that full plethora of utility on display, then you begin to tap into how deep does the strat book go? What can these teams offer in terms of setup? For Carlton at this point in time, it's been different on every single defensive round as we're seeing Tina look to set up for some aggression here early on. Oh no, Land might be stuck here, although CSU respond to that aggression. The wall has went through the exact same wall that we were kind of criticizing earlier here, Hazza, and Tranquil holding down tower position. Can she do the work that we need her to do? No, she can't. The plan will go down, and it's now a two versus five. 
That's a, such a big kill. By taking away tower control, there's no kind of leg up, a linchpin from which to work that this retake could possibly happen for Carlton Ravens. Aquinoctium looking for a kill, but completely denied. It's a flawless response to the previous round. And, well, I mean, carry on four weapons from that bonus investment. And, well, you get all five this time around. Yeah, exactly. Um, that was absolutely huge there in the grand mm. scheme of things. Again, that wall, though, you can see the mistake that potentially could come through with the, the, that wall. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like... Well, I mean, yeah, I, I understand what you mean. If it's if it ain't broke, don't fix that's it. That's true. I think right now... That's true. It, it allows... It's just allowing enough space for, for land to get on up. And well, what you need to be doing on the opposite side to make this wall troublesome is to be challenging through it. Post yeah. up the KO on B site. Get ready to pop flash yourselves a peek. But doesn't seem to be happening so far, and the supportive utility is also there. Let's look at exactly what's happening here for CSU. It looks as if they're getting ready to somewhat get ready to go on towards B site, but look at the chamber post up on the opposite side here, Hazard, just looking for any rotates to come through that way. Ooh. There we go. The first kill does come through. Neon on Neon. Tina wins that one out. Like you said, not a massive fan of the wall. It's only a mistake if it goes punished. And finally, we see that change in the defense come through. Forced now these players to move their way over towards A. Still a couple lurking on B, but Aquinoctium will bring that information and the breach rotate eventually looks to come through. Only a player advantage for the defenders to work with, but they have plenty stations here oh, and ready no. to get working. Tina gets a good timing on Revy, and that will only make things worse. Although, you see that, the spike finally might get down here with the Viper's Pit invested. That huge pick on towards Brim might be workable, but it might make it even harder for these players to get in. Although, Hans takes out XL, a spam through the smoke, and we are going to see that overdrive come through. Can they find this Viper? They're going to dash straight in, can't seem to get it. Oh, they finally will as they try to escape from the smoke another defuse coming through and this is very hotly contested mm. yeah colton ravens there just understand the prioritization once the site has been taken to get in there and look to shut down this viper's pit straight away yeah. zekru is the last one to fall gun barrel poking through the edge of the poison cloud but it's another great response and at this point in time i'm just interested to see what the reaction is from csu we've seen an operator get bought up you wouldn't usually expect it to fall into the hands of the viper player so i'm interested to see what kind of a setup uh, we can expect from them here as it is actually revy on the chamber that is lurking by themselves down towards the south side a big engagement about to be happening here outside of arcade and it's tina not for the first time to get her hands on an opening kill Oh, no, Hazard, but look at this. Look at how they're completely punishing the push coming through here. The aggression's perfect. And it's all up to two players. A night fall in pocket. But how useful is that in this situation? Mm. Not too useful. Tune, she's been spotted out, and now Tranquil will look to move in on this position. Has managed to find the first kill, and now there's only a gap of one between the two teams. Soon, too, could we find an isolation oh come no. through here, but the rolling thunder is just perfect. Hands looking for more as Zekru will try and zip out of there as fast as possible. The spike so far removed from her position, or his position at this point in time, should I say, uh, that I think we're just going to be looking at a save call. Yeah. Fairly respectable save call all in all there, Haza. I'm really, really, really liking the ideas from um, CS here. Is it CS? Uh, I'm really liking CSU, that. CSU, see you. See you, oh, see you see later. You. Yeah, see you. Sorry. That, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. For that. That's going to be a good <laughs> reminder. See you, though. I'm loving their ideas. The prioritization on the aggression, the double stacking, the use of utility. The, also, the fact that they, they're like, covering the spike right now, but the brim was like, oh wait, there's a free orb point, I'm going to go and collect that, and that's going to put me mm. one closer to an orb strike. It's so well done at this moment in time, I'm loving the way that they're playing. Yeah, it's definitely something to watch out for. I like as well the fact that Sea Ravens didn't go for a crunch, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we see this a lot of the time. Teams will push from both north sides to, you know, push dish and towards arcade. But yeah. there was also a peak that came out in towards main. And I believe Apple won that out on the Tour de Force. Now buying into an operator to work with. 
Zekru still holding on to that sniper of their own, but yeah, you know, we didn't really see anything come of that in the previous. Potentially a little bit better in the hands of that chamber, so you have a, a better setup to take that opening engagement, but not too sure on, on what the thought process is there. This time, I believe, uh, that north side push will finally be coming through as already Tina has cleared out Arcade and is already moving into that underpass. Oh, no, they don't realise the danger that they could potentially be in. Nightfall just holding. I don't think that's going to hit anybody, though. That wall, Wait, the Viper wall there. and uh, zero point knife coming through. Yes, there we are. We are going to get that come through. It's going to hit Tranquil, but that is a nice no command to come through here. Just to try and deny. They can't put up the wall. They have to engage. Can they get the spike down? They haven't crossed to the backside of sight yet, so this post plant will be difficult, restricted if it comes through. Tune has found a kill, though, which will be weight off the shoulders. Revy is there, and the Neon fast lane has also allowed for safe passage eventually into a four versus four. There isn't too much here to work with on the ways back in. A nice stun onto Exile should leave them cornered, and Aquinoxium will clean up for their first of the game. Player advantage into the retake and that oh, sky smoke will also oh. keep them out of main but still alive in the sight is tune getting their hands on yet another kill but it's land with a triple that cleans house and ultimately finds the finisher and a response from csu that's a massive loss with the operator falling down i don't know i don't know if i'm remembering mm. this right i was wondering where did the spike actually get planted as a it was right in the corner of sight, so the, the plant was for main. But uh, in the right, end, okay. we saw CSU have to collapse in on yeah. the retake and, and play from sight with that Sky Smoke, uh, stopping anyone from contesting it and playing off the crossfire that you would yeah. usually look towards. Aquanoctin with a nice smoke there, but land on the play, high gear play. is able to find so much value with the overdrive as well. And now we look to this Neon Jewel once again as OK Tina goes hunting, but gets put into an early grave. Yeah, good set up there from CSU. The fact that they had the two players there to refrag off one another. Again, prioritization of the orb. Mm. And it looks as if it will be a crunch from the attackers this time. Yeah, it, it is that A split which they look to be poising for currently. So have the chamber still waiting outside of B for any kind of overaggression. But from this position, you don't expect carlton to have to force anything more than is necessary that neon peak from tina a little bit disappointing early on because yeah. it, without the support of a teammate the neon isn't always such a self-sufficient fragger you have those uh, relay bolts to try and work with but still not too strong isolated as in comparison with uh, a some ko utility for example and speaking of we're seeing a fragment come through also followed up with a haunt to keep these players back, the Null Command just stopping the retake from happening happening imminently. And uh, the crossfire once again established with main. Oh no, that's so unfortunate. Land forced out there. Aquanotium actually getting onto exile. And this is a very, very powerful retake so far. The sea is just denying a little bit of time as they try to get on towards the spike. Tapping it, the players start to fire away and with only one player remaining it's all up to tune can she do it no she can't and that's a lovely retake of the detaza mm. yeah, it certainly is that orbital strike was perfect it broke the link between main and sight completely stranding out land and what they were able to do in the round they get taken out and it's so much space which Carlton Ravens just go flooding into. From that point onwards with the Sky Smoke down once again, it's a similar issue. And with how heavy that prioritization was on main, recontesting the site is incredibly difficult without the flashes of Exile as well to support. And we find ourselves tied up yet again. This has been an incredibly back and forth matchup in yeah. the early stages. It really has. And realistically, good ideas from both teams. I'll never get over that Viper wall, but at the same time, we'll have to, <laughs> as we have to keep moving forward. Like the little kid who's sat there banging on the desk, absolutely fuming yeah. that the, this wall is here, but it's only been punished one time thus far. Land looking to make good of it at this point in time. The Prowler clears a couple of those angles, and Zekru from Dish in the early round has now come to support Revy and Arcade. 
Potential double peek onto Tranquil could be damaging. The re-peek at maybe just the right time, but damage dealt both ways. Neither team coming out on top. No capitalization just yet. A good stall game mm. so far from C S oh sorry, from CU from how they're, they're kind of playing this. In terms of the sky smokes and stuff like that, but the utility, mm. we, we need to see an entrance or maybe even a rotate. And I think CSU are setting themselves up for that. May want to try and head elsewhere here in the round, but with only 30 seconds left, they'll be hard pressed to do left. so. It is yeah. all four, four players here, and then main control is completely under lock and key. It has to be the B execute, and time is of the essence. A lot of this utility has already been used. It falls rawly down to the gunplay, of which Tina has already come out on top with a couple. A spray through the smoke will make it a third for her on the round, darting in to try and claim that quad. Goes past the player, but eventually claims it. Tune is dropped, and it's just set crew elsewhere. This one not offering any value, if any, whatsoever. And Apple will just be looking for this kill. Spots out the barrel, and that's the headshot. Clean as you like. Fifth on the board, and see Ravens get their lead. They do get their lead, and, and they also get a couple of ultimates potentially about to come on lane has, as we do mm. see the overdrive and potentially the rolling thunder as well. Big, big ultimates all in all, and two of them combined could be a disaster class for CSU if that does come through. It certainly could. Something else to mention as well is the positioning of Zekru on a couple of these rounds, just poking towards the other areas of the map, looking for a kill on the Lurk. And that's the difference between the Viper and the Brimstone as we see some damage traded early on. Ravi taking the meat of that. It's that you have those remote control spokes, right? So you don't need to be present. The only issue is... If your teammates don't have the same success, then you're going to struggle. And, well, already we've seen another isolated duel go ahead and well, doubled up or even tripled up for right now. They're dropping like flies, CSU. Yeah, CSU again don't have the answer. And unfortunately, that's the problem. That's that We need to see answers. There's one and there's not going to be two. The best they're going to be able to do is drop mm. one rifle. The economy now firmly in the CU Ravens flavour. And the also the ultimate economy as well. But as I say that, it's maybe not so much. Yeah, there's there's different contingencies that each of these teams can try and work with. Some kind of a win condition on ultimates. But we've seen them used very reactively in most senses. And yeah. I fully expect uh, to see that, especially from the Rolling Thunder here of Hands. I think that she'll be using that one for a retake, most likely. We've seen her a couple of times already doing exactly what I said in the pregame, just working that connector position in defender spawn between the two sites, chipping in utility where is necessary, helping to enable that control for Tina to come and take some of these early jewels as well, which she's been winning a high percentage of, I should say. The timeout has come through from Zekru here. Something has to change from CSU, especially on that previous round. It became glaringly obvious that the lack of cohesion between those players, so many isolated duels going against them, and if you can't win out your ones, then what else do you have to fall back on? Yep, yeah, and has a, another thing that I wanted to talk about. When, if, if CU Ravens get to a point where it's 8-4, do you think that's maybe a little bit hard for CSU to get back into it? Um, I'm not necessarily too sure. I mean, looking at the comps that, that we have here, they they sort of play into each other a little bit. I suppose CU Ravens in a post plant, if they're able to, to keep up the brimstone and the breach specifically, there's a lot of stall that both of those agents can create. And yeah. from the defender's side, that's why we've seen them have that kind of success. Fault lines, incendiary being the longest lasting in the game, the sky smoke as well. And they have lots of initiation to work with. And we're seeing that immediately. The flash, just time poorly. Tina able to get nothing from it. And there comes the punishment. CSU. They catch out Ravens with their hand in the cookie jar, their beak poking out for a shiny object, and nothing is found. It reflects back in their face, and we're seeing all players left standing into this post plant. Lovely ideas again, lovely aggression, just not executed to perfection. I mean, realistically, that's okay. Things can go wrong. We're allowed to make mistakes, and those are two mistakes, two massive mistakes. Orbital strike online. This could really close out and mm. towards tower and arcade. That gap needs to be crossed. 
just waiting is with the Nightfall. Apple connects the shot. Now it's a two versus two. No more sound available. An orbital strike here. He cut off these oh, fights no one way. by one, but Apple just does it all by themselves. No, no need for way. utility. And even through the Prowler, the shot connects. A fantastic retake that we see. A five versus two flipped. It's double A, a triple A in the end that we see. I mean, Aquanoctium and Apple, they add that third Last one to really make it high, top of the class stuff. And it's broken the backs, the economy, and potentially even the mental here of CSU. What a round that is. What a round that is. I was talking about mistakes to be made and all sorts, Haza. But what a mistake in that round. They had it locked, but they provided ones to two players at the same time. And they just collected Apple. Five stars, triple mm. A, whatever you want to use. I'll tell you something. That Apple is not rotten because they are thriving in this <laughs> environment. Yeah, just plucking the kills like an apple tree, I suppose. Right now, CSU just grouping up all towards main. And it could be ill-advised because Apple is here. Once again, Revy gets squashed and they're happy to let this Neon go hunting as much as possible. Into the retake, there's a rolling thunder and an orbital strike available. Viper's pit can do as much as it wants, but so much can be capitalized or cleared back oh, yeah. with the utility available. That's the main thing to focus on, just the re-clearing potential here. I think that's the scariest part. An interesting option to, to go for that spike plant there. Ooh. Oh, Thunder, where did that go? And Exile's completely dodged it and is still active from the corner. This decay starts to get to work and the players aren't feeling the best in these toxic situations. Hans has managed to drop the null command, but there is a flurry of kills to be found. Zekru will stop that spike from getting anywhere near. Diffused, the res is also coming through on the top site. A single point of health, it falls solely onto Apple to avenge their comrades in this scenario. A tap will give away their position once more as the snake bike drops to their feet, so too will the player. And the response is there. Seven to five on Switching the first sides. half. I think that's a respectable half for both teams. I think they'll both look at that mm. and think, you know what, we deserve that. Um, I don't know if CSU maybe think they deserve more realistically because they had a good start to the half. Just kind of momentum didn't keep carrying through um, after the pistol round. But that's all right. That can happen. Um, we'll need to see what they can do on the defender's side now. So already I see the chamber posted up on dish. We can see that on our screens right now. Mm. I wonder if a wee bit of a crunch might come through. Yeah, we will have to see. This is CSU's pick for those who are just tuning in as well. We see the vetoes in the bottom corner of the screen. So they'll be hoping to pick this one up straight away. Yeah. CU's comp, however, I think feeds into that attacking side just a little bit better. Having oh, yeah. those two flashing agents in the breach is just being such a strong pick as well to try and work with already. We're seeing that unparalleled aggression come on through. Zekru waiting with the shorty, but already taken out. That site control fully expended. We don't have a wrap on dish yet, but that plant is incredibly open and there's lots to try and work with here coming into post. Land already making incremental steps in towards the site. Although bullets going off, Apple taking a head clean off tune. A lovely little swing through, gets the trade. But we're still in a three versus four man advantage to these attackers. Mm. Just the oh, flashes a again. Flash out yeah. Into the peak of Tranquil and look at the fault line. There's nothing you can do. Exile, dead to rights. Aquanoctium finds it. Eight to five. That's a second pistol round now found for CU. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. First pistol round found for CU Ravens. Each team has been able to get their attacking side pistol. It's just where we go from here. It really is where we go from here. Um, all in all, great round and great refries. Mm. Apple investing very, very heavily, though. Mm, yeah, all on up to a Vandal already, and it seems as if they're going to be moving away from it. Headhunter bullets. The slightly more favorable option, you're able to send them out and keep those yeah. remaining ones in towards the bonus, which can always be a powerful tool. Once again, it seems as if we're going to see this hard-hitting A execute. And once again, the difference in comp is that we don't have a breach, so that stopping power just isn't there. They're ill-prepared to do anything about it. And as Aquanoctium finds that opening kill, Revy has a few headhunter bullets of their own to work with. Bringing us to a four versus four, but a lot of space already conceded. Very pushed back of the defenders coming into an after plant. Exhale just jump spot in the air, seeing Aquanoctium. 
It's going to be always horrible for me. A nice little haunt to reveal players, but as the reveal comes through, a lovely crossfire. Now it's all up to Revy and the fade. But look at this, they're completely Last trapped out here, has a. Tina's got a kill and we'll be looking for another one running around and just shooting players, lighting them up as they have done the game so far. Nine to five and the Vandal doesn't get kept. So, well, actually, sorry, the Vandal wasn't invested. Yeah. I, I'd already forgotten. But, well, some of those Headhunter bullets are still available for Apple, I'm sure, as they did die, you know, pretty quickly in the round. I suppose it was the first kill back that CSU were able to find. Most importantly, though, CU Ravens playing a very direct approach at this point in time. Yeah. And uh, from what CSU have to try and contain them, is it's not the strongest as well. You've got to be thinking about what they can do to put themselves on the front foot. In terms of that initiation, you're really looking at those KO flash drives to do something. Or the chamber on the opposite side. Revy has got off to a flyer yet again. And set themselves up for success in this round. But just double dips a little bit. That's the difference you sometimes see between uh, you know, a good chamber player and a great chamber player. Knowing when best to disengage. And yeah. unfortunately, Revy gets the shorter end of the stick that time around. Which will force these defenders to bring an additional player over towards what's looking like an A posture from CU. Four versus four. Weapon advantage to mm. the defending team, but it looks as if we have a read. And that read is to go towards B. Yeah, Apple's still posted up on this angle, seeing if they can catch a rotate as it comes over. The pace in this round has slowed down so so much and well finally that rotate looks to be coming through now we think to what apple can create and tune is found this keeps zeku locked inside the site for as long as they can fight their way out but they do so up against a pistol it's effectively a wet paper bag that they punch through <clears throat> three versus three exile has swapped positions with tranquil the ko's both go the opposite direction neither of them know as we go to the cinematic pov eventually they get taken out and now the retake looks to be in full swing Yep, top of the spike, Aquanoctium in towards tower here. Can they do much? No, they can. It's all up to the breach. A lovely flash point to come through here. But they're going to keep on the spike. Look at it, just hold it down. But land gets the trade. And I thought they just lined up there, Hazard. The perfect moment, the perfect opportunity. Yeah, it was a perfect opportunity, as you said. But right now, CU Ravens have made the most of the opportunity that they had. The bank which CSU have available to them, the Vikings, is, well, almost medieval in a sense because there's not going to be a full investment that we see come through here. Overdrive for land means that potentially they would want to try and get aggressive. But still, it's not even really a half. I, I think, well, Revy has brought up here onto the Marshall. They're only one away from a Tour de Force, so we'll save that for the next round but the same probably couldn't be said for exile very precarious right now the money situation for them yeah it could be Off your feet, oh the rolling thunder invested this is going to go really really fast here but it's how see you make it work already going straight through in towards tower a great prioritization but land dropping into arcade gets one there it's a big kill to be taking Low on HP, so not in the best of positions, but with that player advantage, it's something that CSU can look to try and work off the Plowler, clearing a lot of the site, which will allow the Relay Bolt to come through. Now, that player stunned, there's a chance for Land to swing. It's delayed a little bit, but still they are able to find it hands with a double from main. So many angles to consider here if you're CSU, and it may just be a little too much to contend with. Only Tune remains has a stinger in hand and will aim to chase, but in a running race, a sprint of sorts, you're never beating out Tina. And once more, oh. we see the supportive utility come through. Picture perfect is the scene, and the 10 rounds double digits will be secured. It's just playing completely into, uh, into CU's hands. CU Ravens are literally just executing in, holding the post plant, holding the crossfires, and it's the utility that's like so beautiful, has a Like, I know mm. we, we uh, casted, what was it, Birds of Prey, uh, which is a different event, and, and the utility yeah. work that was on there, this is something similar to the, that kind of high tier of, of play. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, what Cairo is talking about is a, a Game Changers event in EMEA most specifically, something which maybe CU Ravens FE will be aware of. Um, Kase Hydra, a pretty big org in the region, incredibly good at creating space and then working from it in the post plant. And we've yeah. seen it a couple of times here already, perhaps not to the same extent yeah. as that professional outfit overseas, but very nicely played from them and I, you just got to be looking towards that breach i've said it time and time yeah. again but it does make a whole world of difference time and time again being able to have a passive presence in the gunfight without actually being on the scene or at any real detriment to your health just having that constant regenerative fault line is yeah. so so valuable specifically on this map with the amount of corners that there are as well yeah and it's just setting up tina to be winning out so many of these jewels like we saw uh, on the closer there as well the economic situation for csu vikings with that previous investment in dire straits at this point in time they are so dead. Uh, at least there is a tour de force mm. that could be a saving grace could be is the key or the, the, the kind of you know what i mean the key phrase in that sentence there because if it doesn't find the the, the result that they're looking for could well and truly be all but yeah. over we're already seeing exile on a sheriff as well only 50 points of health as tina goes sliding in takes off the kneecaps of zekru and squashes the brain as well so it's just land from cyber on the stinger can cause problems close up already gets a double and that is far more than what that gun is worth getting huge value in this situation tranquil still far from what their name would suggest concerned of the players that could potentially be chasing them but it's just shadows at this point in time two versus three better weapons to work with but incredibly restricted when we consider the post plants they've had before yeah exactly but the three players are starting to close down two of the fours fires off but it's going to be punishment for it tune getting on towards apple the spectre the lesser weaponry doing work here but tranquil can't find the shots exile takes him out that's going to be the deficit being reduced. Yeah, it is. Three rounds between them now. And yeah, I mean, in that situation, Tranquil just can't get a hold of the spray. Not having the best game so far. And sometimes it's just those small moments which you can't let yourself tip you over the edge, right? They've got to try and keep a level yeah. head here. See you, Ravens. That has done them no good whatsoever in terms of economy because when we look at Vikings on the opposite side, they are in such a compromised position, right? We, we see Exile as well now able to buy up into a rifle or able to save one from the previous round, should I say. They only had 50 credits coming out of it and the loss bonus not even anywhere near being at its maximum at that point in time either. So couple of rounds that we've seen these defenders pick up all being in the retake that does lean into how aggressive ravens have been so far but play, still play. mistakes being made and mistakes punished right that's still on point no i need to see if who will make the first mistake who will make the first move excel in this position we've seen it before has up mm. we were at copenhagen <laughs> it's that that yay situation where he tps out the same kind of liberty won't be here for exile but perhaps it doesn't matter they've got a null command to work with a couple of kills picked up already anti-eco frags to feather the cap just a little bit more sweet in the pot as june finds a sweet shot between the eyes of apple there is a response a couple of guns to be picked up here and a threat that should be closed down by CSU, but they're struggling to do so. Revy somehow gets two from that position, looking incredibly compromised from the corner, but makes good of it and does decrease that deficit a little bit more. This deficit slowly being reduced to 10-8, but the thing is, though, has a, when you look towards the ultimates, Rolling Thunder and Orbital Strike are becoming online, which is huge for either entering into site, clearing spaces, or the biggest one, a post plant. And we know how good CU Ravens can be on the post plant, but on the other side, there's three ultimates potentially available for CSU. Yeah, I think with both of these competitions running the Neon, you're always looking at the most efficient use of utility because yeah. when both teams use up the major the bulk of it, then put yourself <laughs> in a situation, as we're, we're seeing already, uh, the most inefficient use perhaps of the game so far as uh, Tina does stun herself up. Um, 
you want to try and just make as much value from it as possible. Well, this Rolling Thunder should give the green light for the site to get opened up. There's no players which will be met by it, and that will keep a little bit more between these two teams as we come into the retake. Yeah, a nice ad adaptation to just be playing for retakes here. CSU Vikings, or Vikes, they are doing that well at least. Trail detected on towards that brimstone, but hands looks completely the wrong way. Exile somehow whiffs everywhere as all the guns come online on towards the site. Can they find the guns? Can they find the kills? They certainly can. It's three versus three, and it's advantage CU Ravens. The female team potentially doing the work. Tune all the way down to 2 HP. And there's so much here to hold this mm. side down, to hold this spike. It's all but over. Yeah, Tina has found another one. Zek crew once again on the operator. But how many times have we seen the situation come to nothing? And it will do. Yet again, Tina finds the kill. It's a weapon loss and potentially one gained if Aquanoctium chances himself for it. Not going to happen. An 11th secured, however. Well, I think something I love about the post plant there from Ravens is that they just held onto that position outside of Arcade and Tower for so much time because it yeah. allowed the Orbital Strike to have the breathing room if necessary as the time crept further and further towards its limit. And it's actually been kept through into this next round as well. Tranquil will probably be looking to get the Null Command online. A lot of win conditions now popping up for Ravens to try and use as this game comes to a close. Well, there is a Viper's Pit invested, but it doesn't actually deny much space on towards Bane. Still angles on towards the site there. And this could be free if they could walk up and challenge the Viper. Ooh. There's no support. Yeah, but also, it's left the side of CSU somewhat blindsided. And the CU Ravens forces will flap their wings through this connector position. The question is, how aware of this, if at all, will CSU be? I'm thinking probably not whatsoever. Tune really caught on an island. Uh, this peak, if you expect it whatsoever, I mean, that's such a nice adjustment. Trades one for one. Now the jig is up. Land will look to be cleared, and they get exactly that response. A kill found, and such a nice mid-round here from Ravens looking into post. Yep, now we are in post. We have the null command. We have the orbital strike. Two big ones to be watching out for. But again, mm. Hazza, they might not even need it. Zekru tries to take on towards Apple, but will win that out. Two versus three. Plenty of time to work. Flashpoint on towards that dish, that drop position. There's so much to hold here. So many crossfires. Mm. Somehow the defenders winning out. Oh, but actually, right now, Sea Ravens have pushed back quite far. Exile eventually takes that one head on. The Orbital Strike, too much for them to contend with. Position already given away somewhat by Zekru, who will look to clear, but time is not on their side. Aquanoctium will drop down from Ooh. above. They may fall, but the time is gone. Nothing left to work yeah. with, and Sea Ravens will confirm map point on their opponent's pick. Yeah, it is. And the orbital strike there. Uh, interesting to deny the space. Obviously, just gains that mm -hmm. extra little bit of time. Uh, sometimes you don't need to wait for the spike tap. Uh, sometimes you can just use it. No command, though, yeah. to clear through sight. And if the, we look towards the opponent's pick, not a lot of money. And there's only yeah. one uh, ultimate, which will be that tier of force, which could be shut down mm. by the keel. It bridges that gap as well between the site and the retake, the orbital strike. So a yeah. good use learn, uh, burns a lot of time as well. Uh, if this one goes against them, CSU, oh, such a low buy with the null command eventually invested, you've got to look towards Icebox, right? Yeah. That chamber difference between the, the, the two sides. But uh, right now, Revy is coming out on top in this one. Land as well causing problems. So they're not done just yet. CSU with a good response, but... CU Raven still must be accounted for. The oh, trademark no gives away the position. Way. And the quad is there. Land crops up exactly when required. Certainly. And remember, that was an eco as well. An eco 12 9 has. Are we going to go all the way to overtime? Because that's potentially where we could end up here as we look towards the CU buy and it's non existent. Mm. And I mean, the same could be said on the previous round. We were looking yes, in towards that yes. null command as well, but Exiles on the brink of coming to life here. And CU Ravens just need to mull this one over, make sure they set themselves up for the best opportunity to close this game out and find it when necessary. Another hard-hitting execute will be the avenue that they opt for. 
Tina with that relay ball in towards the site and Chun once more finds themselves isolated on an island and taken out. A couple of these pistols coming to life and hands so, so deadly from that position. Even invest the rolling thunder off the back to enable a bit more breathing room for their squad to collect those weapons, get some upgrades and go into this post plant with an advantage in terms of space and player numbers. Seems as if the thrifties is where all the damage has been done. Although they swing through Apple, being found out, having to relocate outside in towards main land's going to swing, but Hans is there. It's now all up to the player in tower. It's all up to Revy. Can they swing? Can they find it? That is a perfect flashpoint. That is a perfect thrifty. And that is an almost perfect game hazard. Oh, such a nice thrifty to close things out for us there. Hans. She did an amazing job on that breach. I mean, she I was did. chalking up the value that that agent can have for yeah. a lot of the game, but then just showing that her individual skill as well with a really nice 3K to close us there. 39 is the result, and we will be seeing a result here for uh, CU Ravens on this opponent map pick of CSU. So not having the best start in their first foray into NECC. Certainly not, Hazard, but the thing is, though, there's still another two maps to go. I just wanted to make yeah. one note before we uh, kind of did uh, went away into our break. OK, Tina had six first bloods. I don't think yeah. we talked enough about the impact that they had on that yeah. map. I think that's fair to say as well, right? It's a combination of utilities. So it's yeah. the initiators I spoke about and then how that can help set Tina up as well. Yeah. Uh, but to give credit to her, she was able to find a lot of the kills off her own back as well. Now, yeah. looking into this second map of Icebox, I said before, we're expecting chamber picks from both teams. We saw it here, not necessarily taking the bulk of these jewels. You sometimes expect uh, your jewelist players to move over into that role and uh, be a bit more of a fragger. But yeah. the Apple versus Levy battle now counts for a lot more on this one in terms of those initial engagements especially from the defender's side i think so we're going to need to see that step up come from csu here onto this second map their opponents pick for the time being though i believe we will be going to a short break but when we return we will have map two for you between c ravens fe and csu vikings
Hey everybody and welcome back to NECC Fall 2022. I am Hazza, once again joined alongside my co-caster Cairo. We just seen CSU Vikings fall short on their map pick of Fracture here in the series against CU Ravens, who both new teams in the tournament in one respect or another, CSU being a new college here on, on the scene and CU Ravens being a, a new roster fielded by Carlton, who are a very strong uni in their own right and proving exactly why with that first performance. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, already on that first map, Fracture was CSU's pick, but we did see CU win that out. And I mean, everything about it, the way the comp was set up, you were talking a lot about initiators, talking a lot about breach. Um, mm -hmm. We were just seeing a lot of good plays all around the board, good utility usage. And I think that's probably the key difference between the two sides. Yeah, and in terms of agent compositions, we'll expect to see something a little different this time around. As we go into agent select, we're seeing a couple of those choices start to come through. No real surprises in terms of controllers. This one is usually dominated by Viper. There's the odd team yeah. that will like to play potentially into some kind of a double controller setup. I know, you know, pretty much any agent, I suppose, would be fair game in that respect. Yeah. Astra has a couple of things which can lead you into wanting to use her. Uh, Brimstone even or Omen, but ultimately Viper is the premium, the standard, and the one that we will be seeing this time out. A bit of a difference once again, though, between these two teams and the way they look to operate, as we're actually getting that pretty, really standard setup come through from Ravens here, actually, with uh, Chamber and then Tina now on the jet as well for that, uh, you know, opening dual factor yeah. to be taking and winning out. Realistically, I mean, has a when you look at both comps, you can make an argument for both. There's, oh, of course. You know what I mean? Icebox is pretty fluid when it comes to the comp. Me and you had a, a bit of a discussion about comps uh, because of a TikTok, actually, weirdly enough. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, I mean, that's the thing. Like, it is one of those things where we could see uh, anything realistically played here. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to, how, to seeing the differences mm. between the two comps. Yeah, it's the thing is, it's about not just the difference in comps, but then how those differences come into play, yeah. how that affects the, the stylistic approach and the game yes. plan that both of these teams have, because any team can select five agents that are uh, meta, maybe loud or optic picked it, and they thought, oh, well, this will work for me. But if you don't truly understand what it is that yes. those agents are trying to achieve and how that yes. can be implemented, then it doesn't really count for anything. Yeah, and also the combos, like, I mean, realistically, when you see a pro team use a comp, they know every possible usage and how it combines with the, the other agents in that comp. That, that That's a bit of a caveat that does have to be made there, Hazard. Mm. So you also need to think about that. You can't just pick up um, thinking, yeah. you know, every team has a personality, and if you find that personality, you find that play style, that's the biggest point. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've always got some some different personalities. You and I uh, have our own, which seem to have meshed fairly well to keep us here on the casting desk. And wow, we're already off to a jump start here as CU Ravens will be looking to defend the B site, which CSU Vikings have gone on a Viking siege of horns out. Nothing held back. The barrier orb already up Ooh. and a spike soon to be planted. Yep, it's interesting that they didn't actually angle that wall. They went for more of a, a kind of hard one there, Hazard. Yeah. It seems as if already the gun's coming alive, but it's just the advantage to the defenders. They're already getting all the way on towards jail oh. box, and it seems as if the utility's working through, but the barrier orb comes through. There's a little bit of a gap. Can they get it? Yes, they oh, can. What? How do you miss out on that? Oh, Exile, the bullets run dry, and they just can't connect. If the previous game was was anything to go off in terms of confidence, that will be a real knock oh, to yeah. the head of CSU. I love the use of the barrier orb there, uh, rotating it. Tranquil used it so that the bulk of it was protecting them on the defuse as well. We saw a nice combination, like we were speaking about in the pregame. Viper and Sova having a good uh, usage between them. Yes. This time it was the poison cloud for a bit of decay, followed up with a shock dart. Obviously, having some changes to the amount of damage it does, but with those 30 hit points already gone, 
very, very strong ramifications. No force by coming through, even though there is a plant. At this point in the game, a map down, CSU playing reserved and to the strengths they know we'll have. Yeah, exactly. Already a lovely spam coming through from Aquanoctium. Lovely stuff. I love seeing that name now that I've got it like mm. pinned down. It flows. It really yeah, does. It does. And well, free flowing seems to be the attack at this point in time. Does get shut down. I was thinking for a moment we could have a plant on the cards, but these players are on the scene. A flawless round from the defenders. And CU Ravens able to carry on the momentum they found so much of in the previous game. Apple as well, I believe, you know, wasn't really introduced to that retake. So yeah. we'll keep the bulk of their headhunter bullets, heavy shields on four of these players with credits to sit upon. The question is, what is the change that they bring forward to spice things up in the bonus? Uh, attacky, I would say. Honestly, just mm, uh, Have you seen the, the barrier orb up on towards belt a few times? It can, no. can be pretty nice, but I'm not sure if we're going to get treated to that on this occasion. What, what one's that? Uh, when you bo boost up left side of the orb and, and go straight in towards where we're seeing Tune posted up already, but instead it seems oh, like Tranquil is preparing yeah. themselves for a bit more of a reserve one, but Apple has already laid everything out on the table and taken the first head of which I expect them to find many in this game. Yeah, moving up slowly though, Land could easily catch one player off, maybe even two. Although, look at oh. this, it's just so unfortunate. The player's getting taken out, and it's somehow made advantage towards the defenders. How has these frags fell this way? Mm. The player's still moving. Just... Oh, sorry, I was just about to say. The... That... Yeah. Oh, on you go, on you go. No, 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 it's all you, it's all you. I was going to say, Aquanoctium is still to come in, though, as the rotate is coming through. There they are. It is now a three versus two on the site. Zekru has the pit up and well this is this is what I was gonna say right on the thrifty round it's just about finding these small gaps that you can punish you saw Tranquil get up on the barrier orb and catch their player unawares land is low on HP here from the 50-50 angle at Kanoctium trying to cause problems the snake bite may just be enough so so close only on 10 points of health still waiting for the heal to come online Zekru's up and behind on a high angle, just looking for a kill, but the timing on hands is so bad. They shift back and forth at the very last moment. Jumping back into the things is Zekru. That spike is planted on the top site. Nobody really holding for it at this point in time, but we could see a spam come through. Aquanoctium does find it. Zekru's still alive, goes up the rope, but drops straight back down to a death. Bonus round converted, and Ravens looking nigh impossible to stop at this point in time. That was a lovely round. Massive props to Apple there. Hasn't really been involved because most of the attacks have been on B, but has came up huge with two big mm. kills there. I think, I don't... I, I, Obviously, with the way that things go and the way that fast executes kind of happen, we don't get to see all of it. We only have one observer who, I must say, Bobby, doing a great job. Just had to say that. <laughs> um, but what I was making was, I just don't understand how you let the, the frags fall in favour of the defenders there. There was mm. full control from those attackers when they were moving through and better weaponry. It's that first pick from Apple that we see, and I spoke about this Chamber Jewel in the pregame as well. I chalked it up to being one of the main talking points, and already we're seeing that Operator posted up here. The Headhunt having value on the last two rounds means there's so much economy to work with, and the kills are already starting to be found. Rendezvous still available, so a thorn yet to be plucked, and that is a ridiculous flick. Apple pulls it out of the top draw, an anti-eco frag all the same, but... One that counts for a few more style points as the third meets their crosshairs. Yeah, flashpoint out Go once on. again. Oh my god, surely not. There it is. Don't steal the ace. Don't steal the Go ace. On, give us a fifth. Come on. We've had four already. Four of the ace, best. Ace, the ace, Prowler ace, will come ace, through, ace. but it's trained yes! onto someone else. And there we have it. Four rounds played, five kills found. Apple well and truly on the board. I love that. I love a little bit of that. It's, I feel as if I was right back in Copenhagen, listening to the crowd <laughs> shout, ace, ace. Oh, man. Yeah, that was great stuff there, um, all in all. <laughs> Cairo goes five minutes with, without mentioning the fact that he went to Masters too. <laughs> Shut up, man. Challenge impossible. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Get the cameras on so I can show off my hoodie. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, no, no. I, oh, actually, I mean, we're in a timeout production. We got production in the air. You can get him to flex his dead stock hoodie, or, oh, or will enough, he not be allowed? Enough, enough. The, the fact to do so. Yeah. I yeah. think we we can't give him that much liberty. Yeah, surely, can, come yeah. on now. You're not you need to, to rein that ego in yeah, just a little. You're not allowed to promote other tournaments, Hazard. Come on. Oh uh, yeah, of course, guys. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and, and slander Riot Games as we're literally watching a match <laughs> uh, from them, of course. But um, in this timeout, things have got to be spoken over right some stern words have to be made not from us but between these uh yeah. teammates on the side of csu from what we've seen from them in the previous map the glimpse that we've had towards their attackers side here is there anything glaringly obvious that you would like to adjust i think one thing i would mention is just these first jewels not being one yeah. out when you have two initiators as well which isn't the case for cu surely there has to be a bit more clearing yeah, exactly. There, there really has it. And I think the biggest point has a... Have you seen an entry into site where an L drone has been used? Hmm. I mean, that, that is a good point. I suppose uh, the L drone is from the defender's yeah. side, so it's more... Oh, sure. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Reactionary. Oh, Prowler then. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And, uh, well, Revy just takes that one by themselves and kills Tina. So pretty much everything we just said, you know, completely irrelevant. Relevant, right yeah why, exactly. why does it even matter if you win out your ones then you're good but that isn't something which csu can bank on here i think if they want success in this game oh no chun sees oh no <laughs> surely the combination of utility hits there though nothing i don't know man it's like icebox both of these players just throwing stuff at each other like a <laughs> snowball fight <laughs> do you remember the, the the snowball game mode that came out when icebox came out yeah yeah, that I do. So Good type. stuff, man. Yeah. Good stuff. Good times. But, uh, it's fall at this point in time, or autumn, if you're uh, if you're in our position. So uh, things are getting a little bit chilly. And well, right now, CU Ravens can find themselves having cold feet for the first time. Aquanoctium, good for a kill. But Tune is on the scene and done a lot of work already this round, setting themselves up for success. It is only the Viper player remaining. That flash actually has alerted the position and nearly we see a flick come around and a kill found. Exile almost giving up the ghost, but instead it is Aquanoctium which will be put in a spooky situation and CSU do get there first. Yeah, they do. And there's still a lot of money in the hands of CU, so they can still keep going. 4-1, mm. though. Again, it's that whole thing that I was kind of talking about where at uh, Champs and... Uh, uh, sorry, I'm going to mention it again, as I don't... Oh, uh, how dare you. Masters. Um, we saw a lot of teams go 4-0 down and come back and have a, re a recently... Uh, a reasonably good half. So 4-0 uh, down isn't that bad, mm -hmm. and there's nothing to be kind of... to be scoffed at. Oh, yeah. Far from over at this point in time, we're seeing Revy on the marshal apple is on a tour de force this will count for more and actually the shot just about clips through the side won't be enough damage to topple land but they'll certainly have felt the effects of it now player advantage and one stripped back for health already map control needing to be taken the trademark <laughs> june sees it says you know what i am thinking better of it apple going hunting and it's ill-advised taken out by exile and that advantage is now lost yeah well the cheapest lost on either side so i mean may not be that much of a loss maybe just equaling things out although map control lost okay tina lost and now the hits come through on a Mm. And we have to see as well that there's two points of initiation that CSU had here to try and work with. It will be the null command used on this occasion, but the Nightfall still remaining in pocket. They'll need to try and give themselves some kind of a foothold to make this retake work. We'll see Hans send that recon in, but there's nothing really to follow up on it. These players still need to clamber their way back through. So many angles to account for. An operator posted up on this incredibly open plant as well will make things even more difficult when push comes to shove. Toxic screen there for the time being, but won't last too much longer, and land is on the scene. Oh, There's no a barrier way. orb up, though, and I think it might be a similar Not scenario a to the pistol time. round. The defuse comes through. Aquanoctium starting to win out some of these kills. A little bit more merit here for the defenders, who are just chopping them apart, but that is the technicality the round is won on, and CSU will be kicking themselves yet again for it. You would be absolutely raging if that was you and they had let that happen. The fact that uh, it, it's just, they know it could potentially be happening. There's you till there, 
I don't know, like, it's just mm. minor mistakes, no control on the site. Yes, they all drop back and play for the yeah. op, which is a good decision, but there's still no control on the site play, for the attackers. Play. Yeah, you see the toxic screen go up at the start of the round as well, so there's information here of that is what the A setup is, and nothing made from it. The flash drive not quite connecting towards the sight line of Apple. Does rendezvous away before Zero Point is able to take them off of that perch? Nothing really happening though, has it? Yes, the Viper mm. wall committed, but as XL comes through, taking out another misstep. Satisfied. A good return. Yeah, Tune has been good for a couple of these kills in towards mid now, and it really splits the defense. We see as well they are actually just setting up here for that A retaken. Well, Tune has come in to find yet another kill. Oh, no way. And will get dropped, however, and Tina has a quick escape route. Look at the spike. Tune already moved, has moved on up. The spike may become an irrelevance if the pincer works out for them, but it seems as if Aquanoctium is still good for a kill. Oh, and just about gets away with their life as oh, well. The no jump up, the updraft slowly meets away from Zekra on this op yet again. I've got to be honest, Kyra, I fail to see the value uh, that this player is able to get from it. He's not having that kind of success that you would expect for such an investment. Yeah. Now it's just Revy on the Tour de Force and time is ticking low. I know Keatina have been in this Ten upward position. Left. So hard for Revy to react. The crossfire's there. Surely not. Surely they don't gift around. No, they don't. Mm. Okay, Tina, just perfectly deals with it, and that's that done. Um, yep, I was gonna. That was gonna be my next point when we moved into the next half. Uh, Zet crew coming through with the op once again, not finding, um, not finding the mark. Like just, mm. just if, if you're not finding the mark, if you feel as if it's not working, I mean, realistically, you look towards the score line, it isn't working. Yeah, they've got five kills, but I think that's been mostly from rifles. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think what I want to see from the CSU side is a few more direct attempts at making an yes. execute work. Yes. When they've gone straight in towards the site, made the most of the numbers advantage, the util gap that they can create between the two sides, they found success. Uh... And, well, okay, Tina gets picked off early on. That should be the go command, the green light for them yes. to try and send things in. However, seems as if this push has maybe hit the buffers for a moment in time the nightfall does get committed however and this should now be the call to action and get that spike planted well let's hope so here chun just on the outside of the viper's wall zet crew comes through huge there that's two massive picks although the hunter's fury not hitting the mark just spamming through can't find land there's a two versus four post plant with a res available which could be massive but potentially a, a, a res flash, as they call it. Ah, I suppose so, but I think if you're CSU, you're not going to be hoping that it even comes that close. But Apple will do their darndest to try and close oh, the no gap. Way. Two kills already found. When do you start to pull the trigger? I don't think there's a player which is even resurrectable in this oh situation. Zone 2, that player will drop. Exile's position known off. The first flash comes out, and that will be the last one they have to work with. Shots connecting. Half defuse not yet found. Has, oh. has to bait for the time. Can't get it. And Exile does clutch up a triple from them, but far more than is required in that situation. Four versus two retake. Four versus two retake, down to a two versus one. The fact that Exile, the fact that we actually had to call it a clutch hazard is mm. enough in itself um, to make a statement about that round. That is, it's just not working together. Mm. There's just no unison, there's no teamwork, there's no unity, yeah. and that's the biggest comment. I think something else as well is both of these teams find themselves in the challenger bracket yeah. as new ventures in towards NECC. Yeah. So I think actually the level we're seeing here is a lot better than perhaps what you would expect. And it's causing for a really great matchup. Yeah. See Ravens looking incredibly well oiled. So I am looking forward to seeing how much further, you know, both of these teams can go. On this round, however, it is just a case of that B execute seen a player down already the hit has been invested still time left to try and get this spike planted a nice big denial from the barrier orb should allow it to come through though <laughs> actually tranquil's found this kill huge 
That is absolutely huge. Dice picks came out there as they chip away at that barrier or Spike going to be finally planted. But look at the control we are seeing here from these defenders. As they move through, they almost get the Viper. That's huge from Zekru. Finally down. Oh, oh it's a big zero here. point. Yeah. Denies the barrier orb, so there's no retake happening whatsoever. Off the cards, cleared from the table. It's Revy with a couple cards up their sleeve of their own. The Notorious Chamber with a 3k to close. And that gap is now halved. I was going to say, has a even though that barrier orb was going to go down, surely the players wouldn't let that happen for a nah. third time. That would have been... I don't think so. Nah. I don't think so. I mean, you would hope not, right? Nah. We already saw it a second time. Yeah. But, you know, time had passed. Wool over the eyes, if you will. CSU looking a lot better here already. But they'll be walking into a stack on A. And actually, look how many players have already gone and pushed Ooh, up towards wee. belt. Damage dealt and kills found as well. It's a nice like, bit of aggression. They will finally get punished, but that's two rifles lost. That's a good little bit of investment. We do have that spike. Oh, no. The marshal just missing out. Doesn't miss out for that time. And that's the majority of rifles lost. Yeah, it is. There are still some credits to fall back oh, yeah. on, and I okay. fully expect CSU to have weapons to work with here. But CU Raven showing that even on those weaker buys, the bin juice buy, as it's been called, with stunted weaponry can still, you know, stick a blunt stone through your head and, and cause the damage necessary. They have an investment of their own here. No ultimates baited out on the previous, so perhaps not uh, the best of conditions that they were able to find, but still... A strong showing from them, looking to just carry on here and uh, play, widen that gap play. before the half comes to an end. Two rounds left. Nice info dot though. Huge information potentially. We've already seen the rotate come through off of that. And Jet Crew with a massive opportunity here. I think they're aware of it though, and Apple is holding this down with the Tour de Force. The shoulder peak will catch them slightly off guard. Readjust to fine tune, and that's half of the HP cut. No command looking to make this execute happen. And I'm just liking the change of pace that we saw here from Ravens. This time they looked towards mid. The previous was the A aggression, and coming into the retake, they have looked pretty strong most of the time. And once again, it's down to a four versus two. Numbers favor them, but quickly things do go the opposite way. Res available. Oh, beautiful shock dart. Land now. Got to do some heroics of their own. Gonna have to drop out here. Getting pinged away. And I want two versus one. Ah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, hands able to get a triple there. The plant, not entirely ideal, more for a belt position. But if you look at the areas in which these players ended up falling, none of them were, were holding for that angle specifically. So it does come up short in that regard. Both teams having a full set of utility to come into the final round. However, the real difference maker at this point in time will be that the ultimate economy for Ravens is looking incredibly good. It really is. I mean, uh, it is what it is. It has a um, mm. tranquil. I was thought tranquil didn't have a buy there for some reason, but no. All in all, this is looking good. Um, both teams mm. going to be going locking head. The fact that there's so many ultimates is going to be the biggest part here. Um, the biggest kind of game changer, if you want to call it that. Yeah. I think the thing is, though, from the defender's side, ultimate usage not always as valuable as we already see one of them taken away as Zekru makes good of the operator, which we had somewhat criticized. I think it's fair to credit them in that scenario. Huge pickup, though, because that was the Sage. They can't raise themselves, mm. so they're gone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, this is an Apex, so we're not expecting that to happen whatsoever. But uh, going back to the point I was making about the ultimates, they're very reactive, right? We've got a Viper's Pit and a Hunter's Fury of which Hans is playing from the site, will look to move away, but not before Tina finds a kill, and this has stopped the push dead in its oh, tracks. So this. CSU do not want to commit off the back of this. It seems as if a lot of these rounds, they really require oh, some no. serious damage to be dealt before they finally press the go button, and Apple will only add to their worries as the spike is now heading towards B. Look at, look at, uh, look at Aquanoctium. They were just trying to get there. Nice denial with that. Yep, there he is. Oh. Nice denial with the Hunter's Fury. You could see the Viper's Pit still invested if they want to get to that position. Not going to matter. Not going to happen. Up to tune. 
she has to do uh, so much work here against four against the operator yeah, but she's got off to a good start the time is ticking low though and if all three kills can't be found the round surely cannot hands gets a triple does one better and it will end the half stars. eight to four a very strong showing yeah from carton ravens on their map pick and well i don't know i don't know what we expected from them coming into this to both of these teams very much an unknown quantity but the mantle has been taken up by ravens yeah. and they've done a fantastic job so far but realistically if you're csu vikes uh, or vikings i don't know if that's been shortened for the graphic but i think it has yeah really. yeah but the point i was going to make is the fact that they won't be too uh i guess demoralized by that half a pistol round mm. and a bonus and they're right back in this and even if they convert the bonus uh has a mm. that, that that's totally eight seven everything's back in play and we are in for a game yeah, and I mean, if you are speaking strictly more so about gun rounds than the pistol anti-eco, you're looking at a scoreline of 6-4 to four instead if you take away those first couple. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe we're just injecting as much copium as is possible. The, the legal uh, minimum requirement as per US law. Different in every state, of course. Not sure what Carlton say is on that or Cleveland's as a matter of fact, as we're already getting those gun jewels coming through. And Hans is winning out the bulk of them. A double already. Looking for a potential third. And denied it at the last moment. Tune with a nice double of their own. And wow. I mean, the carpet from under the feet. Just as you thought that CU Ravens were getting going. CSU make good of the beginning in this half. Looks like the prophecy could come true, has it? The third map. The eight prophecy. four curse. Yeah, the eight four curse. I was going to say the, the map three prophecy um, to get mm. to that point. No, but realistically, good, good round. Zekru not investing. I wonder if they're saving up for another op, which I'd put a big question mark on because we saw them do more on a rifle. But nonetheless, um, we now move forward and it looks like it is going to be a bit of a stack towards B. Yeah, I mean, there's an early prioritization there. I think the call is perhaps more that the setup is for mid. We see there's a trademark and a more aggressive trademark, should I say, and a barrier orb already set up in that position, a poison cloud as well. Uh, but Tune has found an open and kill, which is causing a, a lot of damage here. I mean, no armor to work up against. They need to pincer this player in back yellow. Nice haunt to come in, although it does get shot out. Still some information there. The fact that they're still lurking about. Here. This is going to be rough if they can't get in. Mm. Oh. Zero point is broken. And well, sometimes, even if it doesn't give off an actual tag as to how many players there are, it almost alludes to the fact that there may be a couple. As Hans gets that one, I think there might be a gap. Looks like looking to create something here, but it won't happen. Tranquil somehow allowed to plant in that situation, but it won't really come to much more than just that apple drop. The singular casualty on the round, CSU convert. Lovely, lovely round. 8-6. Potentially a bonus to be converted here, Hazard. As that is four spectres getting taken in towards this mm. next round. And remember, when we get towards those sites, it can be pretty close corners. And that does, it fa that does favor the spectre sometimes. Yeah, the, the problem is on the defender's side, it can be a little bit more difficult to activate the bonus win because you have to spread yourselves a little bit thinner. Yeah, that's true. You don't have that group mob mentality which can yeah. just run it down and collapse onto certain pockets of, air, of the map and create pressure. At this point in time, Cotton Ravens will need to be aware of this. So just look to see if any of those players are trying to take an opening duel and will rev he is. But they win it out. And just like that, there is an early advantage created for CSU, which takes a lot of the weight off of how they want to try and do this setup because now they have an extra player, an extra man to try and work with. Oh, has a Ooh. land. Doesn't know... Well, face check and gets taken out. Apple huge there. The space created. The re reaction, though, is XL going to be good enough to get this? Because they could get taken off guard here. And with the man on snowman, Apple might get taken off guard. Does see them. Yep, that's going to be huge. That's going to be perfect. Absolutely perfect from Apple to create the space and get those pits. 
And it's those margins that we're seeing as well extruded as far as is possible. Really nice kills to just open things up. And now the response from CSU has to be perfect of their own regard. Four versus two with the setup that we're seeing here already. The B defense is always that much harder. You have to really push forward and get proactive with yellow control. And as Tune comes running in, they look to close that distance. Closes the distance of the bullets to the head of Aquinoctium, but it won't be enough. Spectre from this range is like pepper on toast. And Apple will clean up and find a knife. Pepper on toast? Yeah, I, to be honest, mate, I have absolutely no idea. Just peppering from that kind of range. Yeah, I get uh, it. Not going to do too much. Pepper on toast is supposed to be quite nice, though. If you get some butter on toast and, and add a little bit See, of pepper, I've I've been told that it's actually quite decent. I've had it a couple of times as well. I can oh. attest to it. You can attest to it? Okay, I'll take your word. Mm. I might try it out. I see the thing yeah. is, so see, why is it whenever we cast and whenever we like we get to these like yeah, downtime, we just ones, love food. We just love, we, you know, something we like need to go back to Tovskis. That's a big thing that we need. To. We we need a we need a mukbang. Oh we need a mukbang. yes, that would be huge. Um, SEO mukbang. Oh, potentially, potentially. Look, next time I'm up in Scotland, uh, we will we will eat every single bit of food. I need. I still need a bad Mars bar, but right oh, now it looks as if Tune's trying to batter some players. He has one kill onto Tranquil, but it's quickly traded out. And this won't sit too well for CSU. As a matter of fact, they're losing out thick and fast on these jewels. The spike has been felled by Exile. That is all. Swiftly, they're sent of an Exile of their own to No Man's Land, the Forever Box. It's just Zekru on an op, as they have done time and time again. But just good for the one before their counterpart will fell them. Double digits for Carlton Ravens. Uh, looking to grow that gap a bit more. And... Cairo, it's a similar story. Look, you buy yeah. up the operator. It's a huge investment to be yep. making. This economy is completely stunted. I mean, even though it's one of the one of the weapons, just the, the rest of the money isn't there. Really, you ha you have to hinge on finding that success, and it's not something that we've seen. Yeah, and the, do you know what the sad thing is? Zekru is thirteen and eleven, and it's I think mm. mostly been from the rifle rounds. Remember, we've seen yeah. a few couple multi kills come through yeah, from multi them. kills, and it's like just go back to it. Like we get mm. we get your fragger, just uh, oh. And then on the opposite side, Apple is playing very much within their role and it's caused so many problems. We spoke about this being the chamber jewel, right? And making those opening kills and they are leading the charge right now. Aquinoctium also good for a kill. The plant coming through. These are just anti-eco frags right now. CSU Vikings, however, not able to offer too much resistance. A couple will go their way, but with three points of health, that heal ticking away in terms of value it can provide. It's one tiny dragon up against the might of the world. <laughs> and unfortunately, this isn't a Disney story, so it will be another round on the board for Carlton Ravens. Yeah, unfortunately, 11 to 6 to score line. And, yep, timeout coming through. Zit crew calling that one. Mm. Gonna be uh, maybe demanding a little bit better, a little bit more fragging. I don't know. We, has mm. that, what, what, I think, what's the adjustments? Uh, well, Looking plain and simple at what CSU have to try and work with right now, three incredibly good ultimates. The one that maybe you would want instead, a Viper's Pit to consolidate a post plant, but sometimes that also leads into a false sense of security. The setup has to be perfect. At this point in time, I would like CSU to just try, try and play more for a retake, perhaps, right? You have... Uh, the nightfall you have the null command to try and work with yeah wait for that sound cue wait for the plant to to come in and then just send everyone through M maybe even play a stack towards the other site uh set up revy in situations where they're able to take these isolated fights and and perhaps gamble a little bit on their success you see a lot of times where uh, a chamber will go on their lonesome and look for those kills off of the back of a rendezvous uh, where you're able to then create uh, more space for the rest of your team elsewhere by having that responsibility sit on their shoulders it's a lot to ask but that's what you expect of your players when they have to step up in moments such as that and uh, well apple has, has fit the bill for cu ravens so far doing a similar job I think that the, the key thing, though, just has to be making the most value out of the ultimates that they have right now, because there's a good distance between the two teams and stopping CU Ravens from setting up in post also is something which has flown over my head. You've got Hunter's Fury in a Viper's Pit. If you're conceding the site too quickly and you're not able uh, to deny those from having the room they need to become activated, then 
and you're really going to struggle. And there's no information, there's no trademark set up to be like, right, okay, so we're leaving A completely open. Let's sit down a trademark. At least we have that that kind of that plan. Although Z mm. crew may be that plan. Yeah. They just get forced to move away. This site has to be completely conceded. The Viper's Pit most likely will come through when the plant follows it. And, and yeah, we are. I mean, you're caught between two minds, right? CSU have great ultimates to make a retake work. And we're going to see that happen exactly here. Except the problem is, is well, CU haven't invested any utility to take the site. And with the Viper's Pit up, it's a lot that they have to sit back on and hold on to things. Yep, and it's just an absolute whitewash at the moment. We're in Icebox, although Revy getting Aquanoptium Ooh. could be huge. That's a res, and it's three versus four. We have... A, oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh no, Apple from default finds a cheeky kill and their teammates will also chime in for a couple of their own match points secured. Twice as many match rounds, point. the gap which CSU have to mount if they want to take off CU Raven's pick. This is looking very, very promising stuff from them at this point in time. Yeah. And a great showing for their start here in NECC Fall. Really and thoroughly impressed by the setups the mid round calls. I mean, mm. realistically, CSU are not a bad team either, and have been no. pretty good resistance. It's just, I feel as if it's just another level of intricacy to the setups and to the play, and the fact that they just have Apple. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a couple rounds as well, right? When they've been able to change the plan, Apple takes out Revy in that situation, unaware that players could be close by, and that is already chance for this site to get made on the uptake another player that we have to look towards though is tune still lurking in and amongst things and, and someone who i've been thoroughly impressed with so far yeah. in this game could be hard pressed to cause some more problems here on a stinger but still the kills do seem to go the way of this ct side yeah they certainly do we're all up to one player left that is a good wow. response. Good response. That is a comprehensive retake from CSU. And I yep. think we need to give this one a little bit more love than, yeah. uh, than the retake would suggest because you're looking at a barely an investment on the cards. Yep. No real ultimate usage there whatsoever except for the res now to yep. inject a little bit more cash flow. The gap suddenly doesn't look as bad as it did before. And CSU, with every right to, to fight back into this game, oh, yeah. it just has to be what we said about the intricacy of spacing out the ultimates and yeah. working off the advantages that they do have to go from. I mean, as well as that, Tranquil invested the res as well. So that's another mm. big one to lose, although the Bladestorm and the Hunter's Fury is still available. So it's still like, it's like, yay! But realistically, the realization is, mm. oh, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, look, when words fail you, noises uh, do a sufficient job. I think... Tina on the blade storm. <laughs> I was going to say... I mean, it's... I was going to say, uh, like... Words are just mouth noises yeah. anyway, right? Yeah, Apple exactly. off to a flyer once again, but Revy has responded on this occasion. Okay, Tina, hasn't had as much of an impact this mm. game, must be said. Although, still plenty, but look at this, Hazard. Look to where the chamber is on the map. Yeah, the only issue is that trademark does hold them at bay for the time being. It's all about timing. When they, can they pounce? And the angle, so, so tight, plays into the hands of land. They land the shots. And it seems as if that has brought this attack to a halt for the time being. See you, Ravens. Maybe reeling things back in and reconsidering their options. And it's just holding on towards mid to see if there's a peek out. And it has been a real stall out for the time being. 35 seconds remain. So they can realistically pick wherever they want to go here. It seems if they're going to progress through. Ooh. But look at this. Look at Exile. Can they get this swing through? No, they can't. They will at the second temp attempt. Two versus three. And this could really turn into a crunch here with all the players just oh. moving through spawn. Oh, Revy. Beautiful stuff. Angles set up from both sides. Accounted for Land and Revy. But it is the latter of which who is able to find the bulk of the frags, a triple from them. And we go again. Four series points now between CSU and CU Ravens, closing things out on their own pick of icebox. Cairo, what else can we demand here from CSU to keep things ticking over? Or what does CU Ravens need to get things over the line? 
um, sea ravens need to stop gambling with one on ones, and the sea issue need to continue what they're doing because they've started to win those ones, and that's been mm. the real punishment. They're punishing the minor mistakes of taking ones, and that's good stuff. I'm liking it. Mm. Yeah, win your ones, mate. Win your ones. Hands using the owl drone to gain some space already, and the response is incredible. CSU ro rotating in heavy numbers, but I mean, this has allowed so much space here for the Viper to move up on towards oh, A. No That's way. exactly what is required, and this is an, uh, way too heavy of a read. Aquinoctium has so much to try and work with. The only issue is on a Spectre, maybe lacking confidence with the history of previous rounds, doesn't want to push any more than is necessary, which has actually, you know, conceded what they had to try and work off. Waiting for the support has allowed the rotate to come through. Chuno upon rafters, catches off okay, Tina. not ready for it. And look at this, that's a double, that's a huge double. And the response of the Vipers pit is good. But how good is mm. it? That much space left. actually claimed here. Yeah. All it does is stop the push towards CT. Tender's spawn. Land shoots wildly through the smoke and will eventually Zekru will follow it up swiftly back behind the curtain and out of harm's way for the time being. Shots continue to rain on through and well actually they just all but favor CSU. Another connect collected, another shot connected. And three rounds, now the gap. Close. Close. I say close. There was three players still remaining. Nice mid-round calls, but they're getting they're starting to be read a little bit by CSU. And they're really starting to play this well. I think OKT are not being ready for that mm. fight on towards rafters was probably a key lynch point in the round. But there is still a null point available. Mm. So I think something as well here is that now as the game drags no on further and further, Carlton Ravens are play. starting to second guess themselves a little bit about yeah. these executes. Aquinox on another day would, would look to be carrying things forward, taking oh, that yeah. control in the site. If they die, then look, you still have space on B to try and work with, but they waited for the rotate to come through. The advantage was lost. And it's just about having that bit about you, that gamble to try and find something extra oh, as the Chamber no. Jewel comes to a head and Revy wins that one out again. Chun shooting out the old drone denies any more information for anybody else on the site. Although, look at this, they're isolated. And the fact that they're isolated allows for a potential claim of the site. Spike moving straight forward on towards this site. But mm. the players on rafters, the only one really close to deny. Can they get on? No, they can't. Aquinoctium takes out Exile. Although Land Dancer's back for a lovely trade. Two versus three. And we have the yeah. Hunter's Fury. And there's a flank coming through as well. It's taken so much time, but Tina is aware of it. A triple from her looks to close out the game. Only Revy remains in that chamber one-on-one -on -one that they were able to find. Looks to count for nothing. Two maps both end 13 to 9. See Ravens win each of them out consecutively. And we find ourselves at a 2-0 in the best of three. Them having more success here in the uh, battle of the two new outfits. Yep, certainly is. A battle of the debuts and only one wins out. It is the female team of CU Ravens and I have to say, Hazza, again, mm. want to comment on how structured and how well, like, kind of, just well drilled they were. It was like a mm -hmm. regimented roster who had been playing together for years. Yeah, uh, playing together for a substantial amount of yeah. time, I think it's fair to say, looking at how both of those games ended up playing. Maybe just a slight dip in confidence towards the end. Could yeah. have seen a little bit more of a cleaner closeout from Carlton Ravens with the scoreline at one point sitting at 12-6. to 6. But the hallmark of a good team is that they're able to get it over the line regardless. There are a few bumps presented in the road by CSU, but those questions were all answered. And we saw great play across the board as well. Apple, I just said, we need to see in this chamber jewel they win out the majority of them they had six first bloods to the yeah. four uh, on the opposite end of course coming out from revy we saw a step up from them as well i think it's fair to say so credit where it is due tune yeah. on the fade also having a lot of value but as a whole as a comprehensive unit csu didn't get off to the best start and i think that also did come back to bite them it was that four round difference in the end really that you're looking at 
Yeah, it really was. And has a, I mean, all in all, that's us done for the day. That's us done for the night uh, on mm. NACC. And it's been, we've had a long day of casting, to be honest. Yeah, we, we, we have casting uh, left, right and centre, yeah. you know, NECC as well. But it's always uh, a favourite place of mine to hop on the broadcast. So I hope that these uh, last two matches that we've seen have been enjoyable for all of you watching at home. As always, I've been Hazard, joined alongside Cairo. We have two more matches coming up for you all this evening. Two more best of threes to look towards. So don't go anywhere. That is us done for the evening. However, we will see you next Monday. But don't go anywhere because there's still more to come.
Welcome back, everybody, to the NECC. A bit of an extended break there, but the first game of the night has been finished. Great conclusion in a 2-0 fashion. Let's see how long this one goes down. It is a clash of titans, so to yeah. say here, Dallas, as it is UH Premier, this University of Houston Premier's roster, versus Mizzou Esports, two teams that are easily in the top 10, very competitive here for this Champions Division. And I gotta say, even then, I mean, just put some influence more so on the fact that we're in the Champions Division. We've already cut ourselves pretty short in terms of the kind of escalation naturally that we see over the course of the season we get ourselves in these early areas where we look at navigators or contenders whatever it may be but we're hopping right into here we're looking at our top teams or some of them at least at least in this match and maybe even in the next one as well because i mean it's going to be nothing but bangers and nothing but blood from here on out considering that as you mentioned ux premier a top contender most of these teams even then winning a lot of tournaments in the off season i remember they signed up for cea when their charity tournament as well won the entirety of that Rails also scrimming teams left and right, and I haven't heard anything good from the teams that they were facing because they were probably still a little salty about it. So I'm hoping that Mizzou can really bring the the grit today that we're that's kind of necessary. Yeah, the grit will be a big necessity in the collegiate scene. You're gonna have to worry a lot about how your roster changes up semester to semester yep. for the new year. Let's go ahead and take a look at those rosters, see if we can recognize any of those names. Up uh, first, we should be able to talk about the side of UH Premier. Eric Appleson, I've had him in my DMs a couple of times. Love talking to him, love deep diving things with him. Coy, Jivy, Sully, and Adam Solomon on the board. I recognize at least four of the five of their names. I think I recognize all five of their names. Sully TTV is what they also go. Sully TV is what they also go by. But that is your UH Premier roster. Up on the other side of the board will be Mizzou Esports. And this one's a lot of the same as well. Crinkle, Piggy, Conch, Jacrispy, and Ponder. And I think Conch actually wants to be called Serial. I may be incorrect for that. We'll have to see. These two teams, very big titans in the field, like we've said. And it looks like a lot of the rosters are still the same. Yeah, and that's something that's really nice and really exciting, all things considered, that we get to see the maturity of teams, and we get to see them develop over time, that we don't get to see too much of a differential, but, I mean, no matter what, the meta will always change, and we will have to see these teams make those adaptations over the course of time and see whether or not they can actually mature with it. Because even then, we see compositions and teams and synergies become that much more kind of integrated with itself, that these teams are almost more to a professional grade. I mean, considering that these are top 10 teams, this is the Challengers division. We're not going to see these guys kind of look like they're new freshies around the block. They're going to know how each other work. They're going to know their roles to a T, not only just in terms of actual roles allocated by Riot, in terms of the initiators, the duelists. No, they're going to think, okay, I'm a site anchor. I'm going to be the transitioner. I'm going to be the map controller. I'm going to be the lurker. I'm going to be the roadblock. No matter what it may be, they all have these allocated positions for the maps, and they know how they operate. They know how they can fill those slots. They know how they can make those transitions if they have a missing piece they know how to really play the game and i'm hoping to see that to a t today at least for the week one that we got on our hands well if they know how to play the game we'll have to actually see where they're playing let's go and take a look at our map bands to see where we're heading to we've already had our sneak peek so to say and we were super excited because of it Bind and fracture were the first two maps off the board houston got to pick up their one first they're going to go ahead and say icebox the map will want to start things off and mizzou will say breeze is where we want to go to pearl and ascent will then be knocked off instead honestly ascent not making it all the way to the end at least in terms of surviving in the ban that's impressive it's usually that gentleman's agreement map that you see so often but haven's about the same in all honesty that three map objective is where you want to stay and it's going to be very interesting how these maps tune out. You said controllers, you said sentinels, the way they want to play that roadblock. What type of agents do you think we'll see first and foremost on the map of Icebox here, Dallas? I mean, come on, man. For the first two maps, I can go ahead and probably lock in at least, or two maybe even solid selections overall would be the likes of a Chamber of Viper. Considering that both those maps are so big, they have such big open sites, they can allow themselves to take over the map and really cut off a lot of things considering how open it is and how you really want to cut that down for your squads. You can't let these opposing sides really get comfortable. You can't let them make themselves at home on these sides, especially on these attacking sides, and more so on the defense. You're trying to make the job that much more difficult. That's the name of the game. But I feel like when it comes down to Breeze and Icebox, more specifically, the A side on Breeze, that A side on Icebox, I mean, they are both very, very open. They're really allowing a lot to happen. And even then, I mean, even then A on Icebox is just very contested. B was the one that's a little bit more open. But regardless, you see a Viper spin over towards that A side in Maze. You go ahead and throw everything into whack. You make sure a team, not only do they have 13 sites and 13 lineups to keep a track of if they're coming from the opposing heaven, they also have to now maneuver through all of this green goop and figure out, okay, I'm losing my health at the same time. It makes their job a living nightmare, and they don't really want to make that approach. 
Yeah, nightmare is definitely um, an avid term for it here in Dallas, especially because the fact that Fade has been very popular in yep. recent metas in general, that Nightfall staying over towards a site makes a really difficult time for defenders to kind of sit still. That's kind of the meta that we've fallen into, making things very difficult for defenders to really play the game that they're comfortable with, and that's really good for the overall health of the game of Valorant. As typically speaking, you'd consider defensively teams would be stronger than their attacking counterparts because they can turtle up and play their own strategies. So anything to help about those attacking lineups will be very important while we unfortunately won't get to see the phoenix which is the whole reason why i'm not wearing a polo i was repping the phoenix right here i still think that we're gonna have a really great game as we start things off on icebox we do know the map changes that came a while back so these two teams should be very well versed in that i don't think we'll have a very big problem but i'm expecting us to see silva still on the board for this first map of icebox yeah. and i believe eric Abelson will probably be the player that locks it in it for houston side and even then, I mean, Icebox won these maps where we can see possibly somewhat of a triple initiator set out. I mean, this is the one map where we see that duelists don't exactly have to be a necessity. They, they're not required by any means. So, I mean, you could see yourself with a little bit of a flex play, but that's not going to be the case already. We're seeing as some duelists already kind of either being A, hovered, or B, locked in because Mizzou has himself a competition ready and go. Yeah, they've already locked things up and they're ready. I am incorrect as well, Dallas. Feel free to go ahead and say it, say you're wrong. Eric Alps is going to play the Viper. Is also another strong, I guess, agent in their repertoire. We've seen that before in the map of Breeze as well when they used to face off against Hawaii. I bet you they still do as well. Two Titans of teams. Like, Trout will be on the silver for the side of Houston. But overall, the line for Mizzou was they were the first team to lock everything in. They knew exactly what they wanted to bring to the board. They have that chamber. They have the KO. That fade will be brought through as well. They're bringing out the Viper, so there will be a Viper and Viper battle. And there will be a raise as well to quickly get around these corners of the Zeus packs, as well as to combo those paint shields with that tether that the fade brings to the board. I gotta say, I, I love the evolution of Viper on this map as time goes along, because we remember initially when Icebox came out, sure, it was going to be that site you hit 10 times out of 10, but there's also going to be somewhat of a transition. There had to be somewhat of a flex, there had to be somewhat of a differentiation, Select because the static. We've seen Viper now have a big potency over towards the A side as well. You stand up towards that tube, you can shoot that Joker all the way across right there, cover up mid, and the likes of the entirety of Maze making the job extremely difficult even in the champions we saw the most crazy little nooks and crannies you can manipulate out of these viper walls on the day site to get yourself some free headshots towards rafter so i mean there's no idea what the potential of viper could really bring to this map but even then you want to make sure that you have both sites unlocked so it allows a double player set up towards that b site where it may not just have to be chambered 10 times out of 10 but you do have to make sure to be ready for that transition when it comes along another thing that you can really put some influence on the ko that's going to be huge here on this map. That knife covers up so much air on the A site. It really makes sure that your job can be that much easier when you take it in approach. And I mean, I would mention that nightmare again, but we're only seeing the fate on one side of the field. Therefore, really putting the influence on shooting those haunts when they come up. Now, one of the things that we can at least take note of, maybe it's because we've casted them so many times here, Dallas. Maybe that's why we can take note, but... Houston is a team that does like to stick typically to their defaults, like having that 2-1-2 yeah. two, two split. They like to set themselves up and have the same strategy, whether they're pushing towards B or towards A. They're going to have the same type of default. And a lot of the times that comes down to lingering one player over towards the A side and pushing four or three with one going towards mid towards B. And that is your default default when it comes to this map in general. And Houston played very well. So the question will be, will they change things up? Will Mizzou have done the book work necessary to keep them back? From the looks of things, they want to be a little bit aggressive early early three players with the mizzou side stacked over towards green and that will allow for them now to have a pincer as they met nobody as the rest of houston four funneled through orange they do a little bit of a ring around the road they get themselves a very big impact already off the get-go to get three kills on the board exchange for that one so honestly you'll take that every day of the week and get yourself a cyclone as well to really go ahead and tap on the fact that hey there's an extra three hundred crez no matter what happens you don't got to flank with the man advantage in Houston say, we don't worry about that anyways. A pincer keep you trapped. You'll stay there when you die. He was able to find one there under Crankle, and though Piggy does get a refrag back, it's short-lived as Eric Appleson will take their doppelganger off the board, and Houston will take themselves ahead in round one. A very solid one at that. The rush through orange paying dividends. First round of the regular season here for UH Premier. They open up with a bang as they get themselves a little bit of an odd positioning, but even then, nonetheless, a great one and a great call to make just across the board. I mean, already pushing through the mid, you check so many boxes off to say, okay, well, it's yellow covered. Is somebody towards the back of it? Is somebody in heaven? Is somebody towards Snowman? No? What were they going to do? They're going to run in fear back towards our spot and at least run to somebody. If that fight doesn't work, you're setting them up for a retake position, but that doesn't matter since you know exactly where they're going to be coming from. So a great way for them to really go ahead and facilitate the rest of these early rounds. But 
They have the Spectres in hand and the Marshals to work off as well. So this may have to be the play they really make. They keep it on their flank as well because they don't really have too much besides that one trademark, but there's no smokes really coming up, so they don't have to be concerned. It does give Mizzou a lot of ideas about where they'll see Houston pushing. The initial toss out of that toxic screen in the hands of Houston at least sets the tone for how they want to play the rest of this round. They'll start to extend Koi forward to place down the barrier orb that will isolate the player so they can start to put down that spike. And it will solidify before the classic can hand to destroy it. Like garnered though by Mizzou Esports. They're able to find two and take him out, but X Relevant is up on the board on top. That's four kills of their name, and Koi will steal the possibility of an ace, but a fabulous round once again for their bonus for round two of houston i gotta say man one thing that's going to be having a really uh, just a bunch of influence in the entirety of this series just not this game is going to be the flanks you have to find a way to lurk around the map you have to find a way to find that control and i usually like to typically mention these maps as pie charts and, and we're going to see control we're going to see those allocations of different colors of the defense and the attackers taking that control Attackers want to make sure they have the best defense in about, I'd say, maybe 8% of that pie chart. Meanwhile, you have to see the defense take control of the rest of the map, check off all these boxes, and make sure attendance is all in order. And, I mean, right now, we're not seeing this who have too much influence towards these flanks. They're going ahead and giving up a lot of control for that, and even then, already seeing the entire middle of the map just being taken over by the likes of UH from here. They're having a pretty easy approach over towards this kitchen area, but that's where their whole approach really takes a halt and stops and thinks a second time because go right back towards spawn, run into an engagement, get a free van open to trade in the meantime. Uh, Sully not positioned in the right spot to necessarily counter Serial on the opposing side of Mizzou. They'll lose their life because of it forfeiting the man advantage, at least the even odds it was before. Let's go ahead and rotate around Yellow Crate, looking to get a little bit of extra information, maybe a tag over towards Divi, but they will retreat back, slow orb tossed by Koi, and they'll re-swing afterwards, the Spectre finding their target hand a three versus three and even odds for the side of houston they'll place now the option for the spike but they'll have to hop off in just a moment not liking the util mizzou tossed back in return they're forced to take another step back as the fragment is instead though they did have the toxic cloud to maybe cut down sight lines it doesn't stop crinkle from finding their next target onto jivy now it's houston on the back burner they'll have to swing heavy koi goes for it but it's denied and crinkle even finds their second target onto eric appleson a great route by mizzou to clap back yeah, most definitely, I man, even then keeping the numbers as even as possible, not trying to lose. Mm. Relevant gets the early information for Houston's side. The recon bolts in over the top, tagging onto Crane towards Green, and unfortunately, Piggy does not manage to uh, time their escape correctly. The last ping of it will tag them, so they'll be forced to take a step back. And because of that, they'll retreat. No, Houston have started to take advantage of that open space. They're putting up with the default for a 3-2 split, though they do uh, leave Eric Appleson at the ready to rotate between A and B to assist. That is their one player to linger. They will get into a fight here between the KO of Jacrispy because of that Eric Appleson will open up this round in favor for Houston to get opening kill. They stepped up quickly over towards Belt. Notice Jivy is in a spot where maybe they can take a player that starts to swing over towards screen, but there's three players on the defense of Mizzou ready on sight. Ponder knocks the head off Koi, but Crinkle loses the engagement to Jivy. Concha and Tampa Rafter is able to find one more, but their teammate of Ponder falls short and they'll join them in the afterlife, just leaving Piggy left standing, the only player that was defending that B site, Dallas. And because of that, they'll go easily into the line of sights of Sully for them to be finished off.
a lot of this is going to come down to the first engagement, not the victory, not the person who comes out alive in the duel. In fact, both players could survive, and I would say that's a net positive for the side of Houston. This beginning of this round, where they meet for the first confrontation, the importance of it will be determining what the ego is like for Mizzou Esports. If they know the Classic fires back or a Sheriff is sent their direction, what are they going to do? They're going to send all five players to one objective and send full force with their full util and kit. That's going to be where Houston will try to find success in this round. They bleed one, they bleed two. They're still sitting quite nicely to be successful for the rest of this. But the problem child here for Mizzou, and they're creating the environment for this Dallas. They're sending a player early, not just Serial with the nice tour to four shot to take down Sully, but the only two players to have a rifle are the two players aggressing on A. They're trying to bait out Houston, saying, We've got rifles, you, you still have to play safe. sit through mid bit of an interesting play for Mizzou to make sure that there is some safe space that Houston can't necessarily take advantage of but all four of their players working through a main sending the owl drone over the top X relevant trying to find some information notice this player behind Covey they'll be forced to take a step back the suppressing blade will be sent instead and that will force Houston to maybe wait a couple seconds while that suppressed will buy itself some time to crispy tosses out a fragment buying even further time for Mizzou Esports though not all of them have a rifle for the round they've got plenty of kit that's the sacrifice they made for it and note what has given them so far a man advantage 15 seconds on the clock red time ticking away Corey will sit down for the diffuser and because that ponder swings the corner for the kill Make it a 3k and Mizzou pull off a miracle so to say they dominated Houston in a round that was essentially a thrifty Play. Note that Houston are trying to pull off the same thing. They're leaving their chamber of Sully to not have a rifle. They're bringing the operator instead of the tour de force, so to say, the ultimate. They added themselves some success, but unfortunately, Sully didn't find a single kill with that tour de force. So, waste an open for the round because they got suppressed on the run out. Two versus two. Piggy coming in from Orange has a little bit of assistance, but it's not there in time. Crinkle will finally swing and tax down Corey, but they already put down that spike. Thankfully, Eric Appleson is there with the Phantom in hand. And that nets Houston their fourth round win. Now, double digits over the side of Mizzou. Great round for them. That speed and desire, so to say. We talked about that grit before the game started. Houston are showcasing that with a very aggressive push. And go holding within two. A bit of success. When you're playing up on top of this plat, you still have to be quite wary of the long angle held the opposing direction. Houston being at that man disadvantage, they may start to greed for a kill, but know that they don't have the strongest of weapons across the board. JV does have a rifle in their hand, and they are watching that flank very precarious about the fact that a push could come through. Because it's a crispy working through possibility of retreating over towards orange if they do get aggressive. Ponder's in a great angle, though, to remove one, but it is an even trade in actual. Houston are still trying to play up through mid. Maybe stepping through tube with one. Take control of the Twitch kitchen. But Jacrispy will have to meet them first. Thankfully, Sully is there. Not even a chance for Jacrispy to fire back, Dallas. 30 seconds left.
Ten seconds left. Here, spike planted. One enemy remaining. Where he's able to find some sort of refrag back. They also had placed down that spike. This is not a great spot for them to solo defend this. The Phantom is now back into their hands. Prowlers and Hots being sent a plenty. Not a good spot for them to lie. They'll have to re-swing over towards screen. They find one. Spray down for two, but can't connect and crinkle. They'll find themselves the victor. They'll retreat back to pick up the operator and then step forward to try to get themselves that defuse. There will be plenty of time for Mizzou Esports to win out the majority of this round. Small sacrifices must be made on these sites, Dallas. The biggest one being that Viper's Pit being given away, stepping out of your own ultimates. But honestly, I think Mizzou Esports put Houston in a rough spot, maybe thinking that they're stepping through A main instead, not the idea that rotated all the way to B with no audio cue to tell for sure. And it was right there where we saw Mizzou really take that leap of faith. So we're going to go ahead and fully allocate ourselves and fully dedicate to that P site. But it worked out for them in towards the end. UH from here went for a very, very odd retake situation, especially when it comes around to just combining that wall, getting the spike on the very outer edge of that site, and just playing for spawn. Something I've never really seen before. And honestly, probably for fair reason. It didn't seem to work all that well. And it doesn't seem like something you want to do again. But it may have to be forced out eventually. But what needs to be forced right now is the pressure. Push out. Find a kill. But Ponder just can't do it. Uh, starting off strong, though, if you're Houston, having the weaker arsenal picking up first frag, that puts pressure on Mizzou, but at the same time, Dallas, just sitting in the back of their head, they're egoing here! How much can we truly give up? Sully will be, unfortunately, suppressed, forced to drop the headhunter out of their hands for now. He'll be the first player to necessarily aggress. Maybe Koi will meet them early. Flashes is sent out. Koi will, unfortunately, Spike lose their eyes eight. and their life instantaneously. There's only two players left standing for the side of Houston. Shots trying to connect the sheriff is not gonna find any damage let alone a kill divi is just trying to play with what they have a guardian in their hand player of the crispy holding near cubby they will be kind of spotted away in terms of util but still managing to find themselves at least one kill before falling a rifle will drop at least out of mizzou's hands two of them total and that's important that you make sure to kind of go ahead and make the most of these scraps all the debris left around from the last of these kind of encounters here on the site and that's exactly what Mizzou did. They're making sure that things aren't looking too bad for them. They can go ahead and scrap things together, make sure to facilitate somewhat of a play that's here on the field. But I think, honestly, looking at the game and the way things are really curving, we're seeing 4-4. We're not seeing round for round, though. We're seeing maybe two for two. We're seeing one for two, whatever it may be. But we're seeing these retaliations come back almost as swiftly as they've been dedicated on the get-go. So we have to make sure that, obviously, Mizzou, they got to really honker things down right here, right now. So they have that Viper, they have the Chamber. I mean, with the double initiator and the Duelist, they're going to look good for the attacking side. But UH Premier, I guarantee you, with that Sage on the field, they're going to have a lot more up their sleeve on this defensive half, and you're not going to be ready for any of them. It's going to come down to a battle of keeping that Sage alive as long as possible, even for these attacking rounds. should be very important for the side of Houston because this does come down to be a battle of attrition. You lose one, retake control over that space as you force that player who gets that trade to retreat. Pick him back up. We saw it happen just, what was it, four rounds ago inside mid where Sully was felled as they get swung by the Tour de Force that was in the hands of Mizzou Esports. They still get the resurrection, and they ultimately manage to find somewhat of a comeback, but still with Mizzou winning that essentially thrifty and much-needed round result. But with an even odds at this point, Houston are probably as smart as humanly possible. Unlucky for Eric Appleton, his shoulder is caught on the first swing, and unfortunately for him, Serial does not miss with that operator. Yeah, I mean, initial picks, follow-ups as well. I mean... That's the name of the game. We're seeing Mizzou really go ahead and start to iron this out here. Especially with the operator in play as Nick is going to get that entire value that you need. And almost the reads, the audibles, everything is just giving these positions away and making the job so easy for Mizzou. So you can see it. I mean, it's a 5v2 situation. The resurrection's available for Premier, but I mean, there's no way you want to use it on site with 12 seconds available. So try to get that spike down, try to pull something together, but instead... Nothing facilitates itself at all. That's a flawless round the board for Mizzou and a perfect way to bring themselves one round closer. Only one round off from at least best case or worst case situation and even half. That's an important fact. The map of Icebox as well. It depends on the caster you're talking to, Dallas, but players are like, oh, well, it's an attacker favorite map. Oh, it's defensive favorite. And how many times have we seen 9-3 on this map? How many times have we Too seen many. games that seem impossible 
that seem like they're just getting slotted at every turn and it still turns into a very competitive game, if not guaranteeing the fact that it will go to OT. This is the game. This is the map of miracles, so to say. So this first half, it may mean a lot, but the second half, you just can't really predict things. It's hard to say. I mean, this is the one map where, I mean, no pun intended, but you can really ice the kicker, right? You can make sure to really <laughs> slow things down, make sure that, I mean, you can stall out this game and say, all right, well, this is where the momentum was going, but we just completely froze everything up. You can't really play the game like you wanted to anymore. We're having a full flip on this field. I mean, economy's going one way. I mean, lurks are going another because I think it all comes down to the middle of the field, quite honestly. I think that's what it comes down to. I mean, just purely, that is it. We see teams either efficiently make I mean, big, avid use in the middle of the map, or find a way to say, okay, we're gonna really make sure to hunker down and just pushing directly through this map and onto his site. But when you start manipulating the middle, looking to wrap things around as we talked about it, the pincer plays towards these A and these B sites, more importantly, the A site, because you never see it, it's those situations of surprise that really put yourself on your toes, and more importantly, into a leading situation. But UH Premier, they're opting for that in this round specifically, and we're gonna see how much success it can exactly get. But Biggie leaves a little bit of a uh, read there, can get two, but it doesn't really go without being hurt in the meantime. Regardless, though, you're finding more pressure towards the site. You can at least get a spike down. It's extra credits in the pocket, at least something to pad out the next round. JV has already popped that Blade Storm as well, so hopefully a level of impact can be found and maybe put Mizzou in a bit of a worse state, though it's kind of hard to argue that they'll be put in a bad straight because how consistent they have been in these past few rounds, a bit of resurgence spree for them. Still, Houston like to play slow. They like to play smart. JV's going to aggress initially around this corner. Looks like Corey will swing wide with him as well once JV crosses the initial angle of uh, return by Piggy. Piggy is very low in the process. 8 HP and will have to be very cautious about how they swing this. A single blade will do it, and that will be the case. Swing it back over towards Hut. They'll manage to get one blade to the body, but cannot finish the job onto their unfortunate opposing target. Sheriff's only in the hands of Houston. A nightfall will be popped, and now Mizzou should have an easy chance to swing backwards. They're using a lot of ultimates to win oh. out this round in an eco. That's a really good bait for the side of Houston. They get the, the spike down, they get the extra credits, and they burn, what, two, three ultimates in that round? Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's a really good round for UH, all things considered. I mean, they find themselves in a good situation, knowing they don't have that nightfall to work against anymore. The showstopper won't stall a plant by any means, so... I mean, knowing that this is going to be their full buy round, they can make sure to bounce things back, and even they have a timeout to do it. This is going to be the point where they can really make that impact, and as we talk about it, switch that lead up, really bring things together, create a rally, and say, all right, this game just got a lot more different. It just got a little bit crazy up here. So, I mean, you can see it. Taking that time, figuring out what approach do we want to make? Where on the site do we want to go? Where in the map do we want to go? More importantly, who do we have to set up for? And I think that biggest problem you're running into right now is an operator that's going to usually stick over towards that b site and you really have to make sure that you have the right utility to really cut that thing off and viper either you're investing a bubble which is you have to find a lineup for that it's not going to get too far or you have to invest your entire wall which you can't pick up that's the one trade-off you have as viper when you dedicate utility that's the key word you're dedicating it there is no takesy backsies there is no way to shift that around the map it is that wall in your most important piece of utility can't be used for just a single gun and a single player when you know you got four more who are just equally big threats on the retail. No take back season. The game of musical chairs as these players attempt to rotate round and round this map. Hopefully pop a squad on the site and stay. The side of Houston, though, you said the sniper, the operator, has been the major thorn in their side, the bane of their existence, and there is no better way to phrase it. The issue has been against Houston the problem that the operator's never in the same spot. You're peeking towards A, where do you expect to be shot from? Up on rafters, you're expecting to get a long shot while you're standing on belt. That's not where it's been. It's been in middle for some oh. godforsaken reason. It's been on green stack. It's been all the way back in hut. It's so unpredictable for the side of Mizzou that it's caused a lot of problems for Houston. Thankfully this round, they do open things up with a frag, but there's the operator, Serial Berries yet another. And it's these occasions, right? We're over and over and over again. You're seeing players lost initially. Whether it's not just the first blood in the entire map, but it's an exchange. That's what it comes down to. 
it is something to work off of. So finally, we see a huge lurk coming out. That trademark going down, not being in the deck anymore. As we see the flirt, the lurk, or the flank, at least coming through there in the back towards that site. And that spike is not down. You need to hurry these kills up before they decide to rotate. And you are in a 1v3 situation as Piggies may lock them down with that Viper's pit, really considering it. But still, there's a lot of blood to be shed. And finally, Conch adds one more to the tower. Oh, you just can't let them get away with it so consistently. Houston left with just two. There wasn't already the problem of the sniper in their face from the front. Now, Helene yeah, lingering over standing. towards Snowman. There's the constant threat of a presence behind you of Piggy. Crispy left. will have the angle on Jivy. Jivy, sorry, as they swing around the corner. Serial will manage to be silenced, but there's still three more players left standing. Looks like Piggy will go ahead and retreat away from their flanking spot to attack her spawn and has stepped over towards Kitchen to maybe assist the rest of the team in a bit more of a direct manner. And because of that, it gives the confidence to the rest of Mizzou to swing to Crispy around the back of sight, straight to the head of the last remaining player. And Mizzou have not just guaranteed an even half at this time, Dallas. They've gone above and beyond. There's 7-4 and a possibility of an 8-4. And that's the biggest thing, I mean, knowing that this is also UH Premier's map pick, right? I mean, we see that UH Premier, they've been such a titan in this space. They've been such a big intimidating factor for so many teams across the board, an entire nation. And for them to make this opener with their map pick, to see that, okay, this could be your curtain call. This could be your grand reveal right here, right now of the season. And you're already looking like you're going to be in a deficit no matter what here for this first map, or at least for the first half of it on your selection. So you got to make sure to find a way to double down. You have to win this fifth, otherwise you're looking at 8-4. you got two ultimates to do it, so not too big of a problem there. The one issue that you're running into is the guns you're working with. Some players have stingers, some players have half armor. you got to make the most of this, and you got to get thrifty with it. Ooh, Houston being somewhat aggressive to start things off. tv has got a really nice angle, is able to take down a crinkle because of that safe space that they've been able to garner for themselves, that map control, which has been such a key thing for Mizzou to fight with this entire game. Oh. Houston able to at least put themselves up nicely. There goes Spike down as well. Missed opportunity with the sniper in hand, and Mizzou will be regretting that as this lounge continues to tick on. Jacrispy is able to take down Sully. It's relevant good on the flick, though, for the refrag, but there goes Ponder. Paint shells will be tossed over the top, hoping to flush away maybe one or two of those players, but a Viper's hit on the board for Houston, and it's going to be very difficult for the blind Blinded, at least not being able to see side of Mizzou because of that pawn will try to step forward and into it and Jibby will punish them accordingly. Dropping now. Oh, interesting attempt by Serial, but Jibby's good for the 3K. And worst case scenario for Houston of an 8-4 half is at least taken back a little bit as it will be 7-5 as we split. In situations like that, man, I mean, we saw Conch being a huge problem on that defensive side, but once you turn things around, get that spike down, and you're now forced to kind of have some aggression there, go for a retake situation. More importantly, in the last half, that's as more you will never see a chamber more uncomfortable than the situations like that. Saying there's a Viper's pit, it's the last run of the half. I can't run away with my tail tugged between my legs, saving for the next one. I have to push through. I have to make sure something can work out here, and you just don't have the resources to really make sure that can come to life there besides that headhunter and you got to be an absolute demon with that that's the reason we see some players doing that in bct but i mean this is the collegian scene players are capable of those things but they just don't have the time of the day when they got studies to worry about as well but the one thing that we can't study upon is the default that's possibly on the side of uh from we do see this new half going to light here and we see a default once again in a triple site towards this b site where we see the majority of players actually moving towards along with the spike in hand Mizzou will take the aggressive stance early to at least gain control of the long sight line that is green. The inability, though, to push it safely will keep them at bay for just a little bit longer. Now that they're doing a 3-2 split, they do technically have a 1 in center that's kind of lingering around, so technically 1 on A as well. It's up to Mizzou to really decide if they want to take advantage of the space that's towards the A site, but I think Serial doesn't have the best of odds to clear this all by their lonesome headhunter in hand, and it's quite a costly or expense with more total shots that they can use yeah. in the round. That's not what you want to see. That nerf to Chamber has been very important for the overall health of Valorant, but the overall health of Mizzou right now. They're going to rotate over to the A site, seemingly liking the space that Serial was able to create for themselves. Already a little bit of the setup here, and even more so. I mean, Jimmy can make sure to really 
kind of capitalize on this. But instead, after a lot of silent times here, a big wall to go up over towards the other side, you missed it earlier, but quite honestly, you got that Viper's Wall towards A actually working in your favor. Eric Appleson is giving you the opportunity of a lifetime with a, a little bit of an exchange right there towards the back of sight. You say, let's cut our losses. Let's get this spike down and let's start playing for the retake. Let's make sure we can hunger these things down. No ult point picked up, surprisingly enough, by any of these players, but you may not have to get it so long as the right characters to get these kills in the meantime with Connor set up for the initial pick. Uh, Houston need to get that Sage Resurrection charged up. We talked about the importance of it before. Serial missing two shots with a Headhunter, though. Not able to find a frag. Potter is able to stand up on two. His takes down extra relevant. Trying to swing around that corner. Sully down below Raptors has at least a sight line over towards Belt, but Cyril's getting the upper hand with the Sheriff at that range. Sully will have to re-swing and attempt to initiate. Two players can easily peek the player that's going for the defuse, and because of that, they'll lose their life, and they'll be joined by Jivy just as quick as Ponder collects the 3k. Great result for the side of Mizzou to continue the dominant streak that they had unfortunately take a bit of a pause in that last round of that first half, but picking things back up with the first, and more than likely, more than not, that second as well for their bonus. And this is where things start to get really sketchy for Lux UH from here. They don't want to use this timeout early because it's still just these four spy rounds. Not too much you can do against that. But we see Jivy still opting to go for that share buy. We see players still kind of spread themselves across the map. Utility still being invested. It comes down to whether or not we see UH from here decide to actually use it and make sure it's kind of consumed so you can't really carry that over to the next round. And we already see that bubble towards the middle. That's going to be something that Eric Appleson will have to keep mind of coming here soon as well because I mean, you got to make these kinds of plays. you got to set things up, and even then you got to make sure that you get these initial kills. And that's not going to happen either. As Conch can open up with the share, saving money as well in the process, saying, I'm just one step closer to an operator, possibly for the attacking side, but we'll have to wait and see. Zoo's agent selection, very well equipped for the attack as well, having that fade to pop those tendrils on the ground. They see it split on the A site, and they say, we don't want to push that direction. Let's go ahead and try to find something towards B. Cyril does exactly that first blood, now second, and they're doing it all by themselves at a third onto the board as well. Just two players left standing for Houston. One's going to try to work over through Snowman. The other one desperately sprinting through Orange to maybe try to give themselves any chance of success. Cyril could try to re-swing this one back. He's hiding behind it. I guess yellow crate at the current moment. Two other players yeah, yeah, yeah. joining them nearby. Toxic screen is up and waiting. Mizzou cutting down the sight lines for Houston. Maybe find a nice pick to maybe give themselves any sort of chance, but it will be denied just as quick. Serial with the 4K, tying up Ponder and eventually going above them on the leaderboard as well, but both with 16 kills. This has been Mizzou's half, so to say, already. But that was their bonus. I gotta say, oddly enough, all things considered, knowing that we saw Mizzou Esports with the Forest Pie with the Gun Avenger in that last round, that we still see them having to go ahead. And I would say I didn't hear a darn near a single footstep in that entire round. They played it extremely slow. They tempoed themselves. They still kept the likes of UH Premier on their feet to say that they can never get comfortable here. You can't just set up on a side and expect teams to rush it down. You have to make sure to keep all eyes on all corners and really check those boxes where you can. And even then, the invest of the utility, as I mentioned, that's another big factor we're seeing start to come in play right now. I mentioned earlier that bubble that really had that impact towards the middle of the map didn't really show off too much. You really have too much of an impact. Besides your own pockets, as we're now seeing half warmers being brought out for UH from here, showing that their defense isn't going to be nearly as solid as to be expected on a round three of a half. You can think of a team in Valorant as sort of a blade. The team itself, the players and the agents they select being the handle and the way that they play forming the blade. They're going through steps, tempering, prepping the steel, folding, and without quenching the blade to truly harden that steel, they won't have a solid base to work from. It'll shatter under pressure. That's been Houston as of the current moment. They have not set themselves up correctly. They just quickly get rushed down by Mizzou, who had the gun disadvantage, and know that and utilize what the weapons they have at hand to any of all successes they can get. They're able to find themselves four players so far. Just Koi left standing. They're able to take down Miss Piggy. By Piggy itself, Mizzou is the tag. It's just them left standing. You have a rifle in hand, and Ponder will remove all oddities if you're getting it. That is 10. Double again for Mizzou. And you say that's it. You think that's the one that determines the way the rest of this goes? I think it most definitely could be, all things considered. We see Mizzou Esports now on a double-digit start, and only for the second half. No real contestion just yet, or even retaliation, more importantly, which we have to see out of them. And knowing that they want to go ahead and force out themselves in the last round, put themselves in a detriment for this next one as well to possibly guarantee Mizzou an 11th round as well, makes things very difficult because they opted once again for those half shields. If you see a Bulldog on the field, 
that is the last thing you do because that thing does a 135 to the head that is enough to go ahead and penetrate through an entire force of half armor and it's just not going to be enough compared to that full armor with the vandal or phantom you're just giving up for free guns at that point you're making your job that much more difficult you are stacking up the odds against your own favor trying to really test the strength of your squad but strength isn't gonna be too much of a factor here as we already see that jacrispy is gonna be shut down and conch as well so maybe if there's a little bit of light here at the end of the tunnel for Premier to keep this game alive and make it that much more closer as they find themselves one more player shut down. Wow, Houston have entirely turned the odds back in their favor. They double swing two different players on the A side. That only nets them two first bloods. But Serial found one all by themselves with a headhunter. You need that chamber 1v1. You need it to be a victory, and they're able to guarantee it at least at the moment. Houston able to hold on. Wow. But Piggy has not been dealt with. They'll cut down two instantly on the side of Houston, and all of the advantage they had just given themselves all through their fingers you must latch on to all successes toxic screen toss used to cut down sight lines over towards orange as well as towards the back of hut and snowman next relevant will be suppressed in the process haunts of prowlers tossed out this is not where you want to be plank will go down masu has the advantage in the viper's pit popped as well masu says we're taking the 11th you cannot deny us and houston will have to fight with everything they have a rifle seemingly in the hands of their sage Corey will do their best but it's only a bulldog to work with they'll step out of the viper's pit for just a moment mizzou will give up that space for now koi will try to swing to the back of yellow crate but crinkle is none the wiser will find the kill instead oh! it's relevant with the shot now bringing it to the 1v1 piggy is wary needs to wait for the audio cue irrelevance down to one hp and a dream because of the decay but it's not mm. gonna matter a 3k to piggy the lifesaver of mizzou a much needed player to come up I gotta say, regardless of the outcome of the round beforehand, that would completely put this game on its head as we saw a huge clutch coming out for Piggy. Able to go ahead and realize the dire situation at hand, make those adaptations, and more importantly, just the convenience of saying, guess what? Things aren't looking too good, but I'm only one point off from this ultimate. If you give me that spike, I plan it down. If we get this off fast enough, we can really make some impact here. And I gotta say, you and Shamir, they missed out on a very big opportunity. We saw all these guns on the side of Mizzou. That is the only upgrade they needed. They were saying, sure, we had the half armor, but you're only working with a Bulldog, a Sheriff. You need these actual guns when you're pushing through a Viper's pit, knowing how close they are. That's why it's not important to only keep track of what ultimates are up currently, but the kind of conditions that have to be met to make sure there's going to be more in this round. That who's going to be a threat? Who do we have to shut down? And Conch isn't going to be a factor anymore because that's going to be the first one of this. I mean, Houston has no idea how Mizzou necessarily play this first half. They haven't truly had a rifle and rifle round up to that point. So they needed to be quite smart. Kill two towards A, one towards B. Where is the remaining players? Well, Piggies walked through orange and found two and even up the round ultimately went it out. Now Houston is saying, okay, we've keyed in on it. We found something. We found a weak part of Mizzou's game. And it is those isolations. We did it last round. We'll do it again here. They found three, two remaining players for the side of Mizzou Esports. This seems like a really rough spot to come back from. And on top of that, even if Houston do manage to lose a player, Koi has that resurrection up and charged and jv still has the blade storm ready to go two players lingering back to b to defend it in a more direct manner three players stacked in mid dallas they're being aggressive yeah. houston want to take the pain straight to mizzou and remove all chance of even getting spiked down to get that extra credit i gotta say i like the play here i like the influence towards middle of the map but i mean honestly there could be a big radiator ponder knows that a player is probably lurking towards bottom tunnel and this is a huge opportunity. You say we push over towards the A side. Why is somebody in the middle? We didn't see that Sage earlier really have an impact or give it their position, but that's because they're getting ready for the ultimate to use of their own to set things up. Say no matter what happens here, if we win this round, we're trying to save as many guns as possible, keep the economy intact, and that's what they're doing so far. Boy gets one, Bonner can make an exchange, but Jivy closes things out, and that's a 24 saved, and that's a round saved, and possibly the rest of the game, if we can see UH from here really keep this up, unless Bazoo adapts around this map, the circumstances at hand and says, look, that operator solely has not been alive in this game, but last thing we need to do is line up in those crosshairs to let them really start feeling themselves. You can't let the player get charged, right? You can't feed their ego, so to say. And that is the bane of the majority of Valorant players. Mostly in the negative, however. Hopefully Sully can get charged up in the positive. For Houston, a great round and a much needed one. The resurrection, I think, was key to their success. They bought an operator that forced it for the glass cannon Sully, which means only a couple shots would finish, even to the torso with no armor for them. And 
it's just, just a hard spot to sit with, and you're really relying on the player who was bottom fragging. That's confidence. That's trust, and that's something that Houston are trying to at least ensure that they still have within their teammates. And in a spot where make it or break it, you're looking down the wrong end of a bad situation, you got to stay confident in yourselves and your friends and their team around you to build yourselves up. And for the looks of things, they're still going to set themselves up for the crossfire. Nightfall goes out. Showstopper employed as well. Not the case. It will be sent already tagging a player that had been killed off, but an even trade as Prinkle and Jibby trade themselves out. You're not really too worried about that ultimate being invested. You're not concerned about the showstopper and whether or not it went and had that really that impact. It's done its job of a duelist and the role that's at hand, having that piece of utility to work with. It's cleared up the space for sight. It's made sure that you can get that spike down. It's made sure to facilitate a retake here for like UH from here and really forcing their hands on what they can accomplish. But we don't see too much of a lurch just yet. That's the biggest thing that scares me on these attacking sides towards the A side. There's not too much to work with. There's not too much space. There's a big mate in the ways of a lot. And honestly, we don't see too much post utility on hand that can do that damage on these paint cans. And it does get one. So that's the value you're looking for. You just need to get these kills with Eric Appleson and Koi making sure to top on that and make sure to really set things up. But Koch is alive, looking for a 1v3, but Sully wins that fight with the big barrel to gun at hand, showing that the better chamber it may come alive here in the next couple. Very important. Sully on the board. Allows for Koi to go and hop down to that diffuser. Still plenty of time past that point. There's a hard engagement. Fans of both teams looking at that one. If you're Mercy, saying, yeah, Surreal's still up. And Adam has the angle. This is it. Well, Houston fans of a long time come and know just how good Sully can be. They were none too scared. I've mentioned this multiple times when it comes to these top of the top teams, the cream of the crop teams in the collegiate scene for Valorant. Even when the scoreline is, say, 9-3 at half or just a slaughter in general, you're not looking at a team giving up mentally. You're not seeing them say, okay, play for the next one. They're still fighting on this map. They may start to think about the next map and what may occur, but they're still giving it their all on the map of Icebox on this first map, and Houston are still climbing back a little bit closer, even to the point of forcing Mizzou to go for a timeout, which was Houston's problem in that first half as they started to bleed four or five rounds in a row. I mean, this game could just get worse and worse and worse. We already mentioned it. Even in leads can immediately disappear, no matter what, whether it's in the mid rounds, whether it's in the early rounds, whether it's in the late rounds, no matter what. Icebox is always going to be a little bit of a tricky map to really maneuver yourself around if you don't know what you're getting yourself into and if you don't have a read on the game. And that's why I think it's always super important to be checking middle of the map, start filling up the entire map during those force rounds to say, where exactly are these teams setting up? Where are these players getting comfy? Where are they really starting to get this momentum built? For them to say that, okay, this is going to look that much more confident on these rounds. We haven't seen Mizzou really go ahead and go through that checklist, go through that closing points, and say, all right, where can we really set up? What characters are where? What agents are getting comfy in what areas of the map? And it's almost like they're still going to this game blind. They're so concerned about the utility and getting one tap by an operator and really making sure to jiggle peek everything that they can't get that read that they really need to say, where can we just all in at? Because they're still trying to figure out where they can get any space Ooh. at all. And b side is definitely that advocate as you find that first pick. I am in awe at that angle, at that swing. Wild coming out from DeCrispy. On top of that, the first juggle peek had seen the body of the torso of Sully swinging it back towards yellow. And honestly, Sully, you should have known that. They're there. They can light ping that position. They know where they can aim after the point. And it is an easy feast. The Jacrispy player on the side of Mizzou. Well, their chamber, a serialist, taking a look at damage in the early stages of the round, Dallas, but they've given up a lot of space, taking control of the map towards A. A main is there, so send a prowler that direction, a hot to go over the top as well. Jimmy does have the ability to tailwind away. It is charged and ready. They're going to have to shoot, quickly shoot the hot, but it does not matter. Ponder is there instead, and the plant will go down now in favor of Mizzou Esports as they do have two man advantage as well. Also, the specialty of Mizzou, they get the plant down, and none of them will be spotted for the next 15 seconds as they completely deny sightlines. That's the biggest thing, man. I mean, it's these sight lines going ahead being cut off. That wall's still there to work, actually, for the attacking side because you're just seeing blind shots going through, but you have to write in these shots true and find these picks because Koi's going for the defuse and can't really finish it off. So instead, you find an exchange, a positive one, a very positive one in back for Mizzou is not only find the majority of the kills, but keep them a vast majority of their players alive in the meantime as they set themselves up, as you just heard it from the nice lady explaining it, match point. You get yourself one more, Mizzou. It's been a long time coming. It's been two rounds previously that you've started to choke up, but you realize once you get these first picks, things really start to go your way. But 
But the Viper's been to work against now. Hunter's Fury as well. And the 24 is already ready in the back of the map as well. That's where your concerns really start to grow a little bit, at least for this one more. Zoo on the precipice of sending us on over to the vacation map of Breeze. Serial will be the first player. They've rotated away as initially would peek towards A to create that space and take advantage of it. This time around, they're going towards B, sitting inside Garage. Maybe start to rotate back as the three player side of Mizzou is starting to uh, transition themselves and pivot to green as well. There is a player in double stack. This was the kind of point of dominance for Sully on the first half for Houston. They wanted to uh, deny the player Mizzou that was holding on top. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for them the majority of the time. Sully had died two out of the four times we saw it. Crispy does have a lot of opportunity to go for that same exact swing. Note that once again, Houston are leaving Sully over towards yellow. Jiggle Peak is there. I think Frankel got enough of the shoulder around the corner to spot them, but Sully's being quite smart this time around. They will, in fact, there step is. away, but the suppress tags them before they can escape, and the Tour de Force will be dropped out of their hands. You see green tag on the chamber and around where you suppress that, man. You go ahead and press that W button. You slam your entire keyboard. Put some paperweights on that joker while you're at it because you need to make sure to get onto that side as fast as possible. We've seen Mizzou take that opportunity and run with it. They're fighting the necessary kills as well. They've already found two. It's that 24s and Hunter's Fury. The two of those that were available are also the only two players alive right now. This is the only chance UH Ramirez not only has to win the game, but just to keep it going. On the speed and tempo, they've held down the W key, but to the opposite site now, Dallas. They know when they've been beat. They know when they've been bested, so to say. Heavy quotation marks around that. They're not going to go to that B site and test to the waters from where they're already set up nicely. Let's go over towards A, and we've got a Viper's Pit as well. So it does manage to find one kill. Evens up the odds just a little bit. They'll use their Owl Joan to gather at least information that will assist them on this push blindly through the Viper's Pit's not the way you want to go about it. Last time we saw the Viper's Pit come out from Mizzou, they were did a very good job of retreating out of it, but not the case here. Sully's not even allowed to entry. Jacrispy swings back around through elbow and finds their target. Justix irrelevant left standing. Looks like Jacrispy's going to swing wildly again. Oh. Relevant's good for the flick, though. One more to go to tie things up, and two more to try to go for the defuse. Snake fight goes down. That all but buries the chances for Houston, and Piggy ensures that that is truly the end. 13 to seven is our scoreline on the map of Icebox Mizzou Esports upset Houston. And we'll have to send and see how this one goes over on Breeze now. Yeah, and I gotta say that's an interesting thing nonetheless. So we're gonna be going into Breeze in the map where we actually see Mizzou going for the pick and even then after an outstanding start. We see Titans of the entire league going ahead and losing their first map here. The entire introduction they've had to this season where we we're expecting them to go ahead and come out gun swinging. I mean, them just absolutely laying down the law. That's not the case here, man. It's already a map drop. It's already their backs against the walls at a best of three to where they can be starting their season with a zero one. And that's something that they do not want under any circumstances. So I got to say, after UH and what I've seen from the past, they like these contested maps. They like the small areas that they can maneuver around, start to get tricky with. But Breeze may have slipped through the cracks, or maybe they just feel a little bit more comfortable with it because for them to even allow Mizzou to go for those picks to make sure that they can stay on the field, even in for Pearl. A newer map to be kind of lined up towards the ladder into these selections and bands. I think that honestly, their maps, they may be getting more diverse, but I mean, that's during the scrim season. That's where we see them start to go ahead and make these adaptations and change things up. Not really exercise that to the fullest extent when all stakes are really at hand, and this is where they really got to exercise it. You mentioned, uh, at least during the break before this started, that probably not going to see Pearl. I know Observer is quite happy about that when he has not practiced on that map, but. It's sink or swim half the time here, especially if you're doing the Champions Division, Dallas. These are the teams that you're expected to really bring out a map like Pearl. Where they're going to be more rovers, have more scrims, have more practices, and constantly be working together. If you're already at the top of the top, you want to hold that position at top of the top because teams like Northwood, teams like Houston, teams like Hawaii, teams like Mizzou that just took that first map, they're not going to let you sit back and take a vacay for a month at a time to talk things yeah. through and have that break. Summer vacation is not a vacation. You're still on that grind, still in that mindset. They'll continue that mindset here as they talk things through between this break. We're going to take a break as well between map one and map two, so make sure you guys stay tuned. We're we'll right back with Breeze to see if Mizzou Esports can finish this one off.
Welcome back everybody here to the NECC. We're moving on to the second map now. Things are looking a little bit odd because we see that Houston's actually at a 1-0 start. All things considered. We saw him on the map of Icebox. Breeze is going to be our location next. And things are looking odd because we're trying to figure out where's the twist up coming along? Where are these players going to be really stationing them themselves? And where are we going to see Premier at the end of this match? Because if they end up going 0-1 after to be expected one of the top teams, literally yeah. probably what? It's like number one or two in the series? the season and all of the teams across the NECC, things are going to get a little bit crazy. I mean, there's a lot more competition this year as well, at least this semester for the NECC. I mean, you probably, if you don't follow our director on Twitter, Caleb Gloob, or Glooby, I'm sorry, I really don't know how to pronounce your, your last name, friend. But uh, <laughs> uh, we have like 200 teams competing in the NECC for Valorant this year. It is insanely in-depth, and that's just more teams to have to face off against, more teams yep. that will be bearing against you at all chances they can get. And that makes the competition for the Champions Division so much tougher. So expect a lot of these games to be close. It's not all cut and dry. They're the best team in the nation. This is the best team. It can go the other direction. And Mizzou Esports are really saying, hey, you guys may have a lot of expectations for Houston. You guys may have a lot of, um, I guess, I guess expectations is the best word. You might have a history of seeing Houston dominate. That's not the case. Last time I saw Houston on the map, Breeze, though, Dallas, they were facing off against Hawaii and they slaughtered them. And I cracked so many jokes about how Hawaii couldn't play on the map like Breeze, which is so funny. Uh, hopefully, Houston does feel comfortable on this map enough. It has been months since, the, almost nine months since that game. I gotta say though, I mean, now being in Texas, I mean, Houston, they're kind, of, they're relatively close to the beach as well, so maybe they, they're getting a little bit of the air to whiff in and kind of bringing that encouragement to make sure to learn the map because that's got to be the case here. It's got to be required right here, right now. Otherwise, their season will start exactly as expected if we kind of go ahead and fall suit and look at them losing the maps that are at hand because we see them losing their own map pick of ice box, and that's the big concerning thing for me is that we see teams obviously reinforcing themselves, saying, okay, what are other teams also going to pick? It's the first week of the season. You can't really say that Missouri has any maps that are actually, okay, they're going to pick this for sure. They're not guaranteed. They have no actual number one home territory that they play in, like Optic and Bind, or like Sentinels and what could be you know, Icebox over here and there. But, I mean, all things considered, you have to make sure that you can log it down this when it's needed. And already we're seeing the edge of compositions come through and be ironed out on both sides, not just one. The Neon is going to be coming into play. I mentioned the Viper as well. That's already coming through. But it comes to everything else switching up past that. As we do see the Chamber coming into effect, there's a lot more here at hand. These long lineups are going to be essential, and Vandals better be bought. The VAP of Breeze is quite nice considering the open space. We've had so many debates, Dallas. I know we mentioned this like every time Breeze comes up. We've had so many debates about how you attack a side, how you position your utility. And it's a lot like Icebox where you have your standard one or two different Viper Toxic screen lineups that you're looking towards to get safely onto the A side. A lot of teams have stepped away from that to a degree, but still is a very big comfort pick to still have that Viper and send it. It's going to be very interesting to see how these two teams do survive. Piggy was very good in that last game playing as the Viper in the 
same thing can be said for Eric Appleson, but obviously with the loss there of Houston, they may be a little bit more uncomfortable. We do see that Jivy has been subbed out. I noted that they had left the lobby at the end of the last game, and Adam Solomon has been subbed in in return, and Sully is going to go in and switched off of that chamber. They're kind of changing up their line, uh, lineup a little bit. Even, in fact, Koi's not playing a Sage. They're going to the uh, the Sova and X relevance off the Sova and going to KO. Interesting decisions for the side of Houston. Let's hope it pays off. Look at Mizzou to the party here in round one. They're trying to push it right in the middle. They have Viper actually stationed towards that B side. So that means they're going to go for a direct wall, try to push through tunnel and find the pressure there. But you see so much mid influence already coming out from UH Premier that this is just a round one and so much has already gotten bloody and so much investment is being made, more importantly, by Ponder with the 3K. Oh my, Eric in a shot! Managing to tag, but it doesn't do enough over towards heaven. Opportunity Hello. for Adam Solomon. Mm, not going to happen. Piggy is there instead of the classic one-upping the competition. Good decision-making by the side of Mizzou to early aggress. The lineup at the top, FYI, for all of you watching, is backwards. About to get that swapped over for you guys. Mizzou are on the side on the defense. They've been holding quite absolute flank. Coming in over through a main. Starting to flank through attacker spawn. Pillar is a dangerous position to try to push through, but it's a very heavily important one. You'll see Houston try to take advantage of the space for now. Cubby position being held by Crispy, still being the KO, same as they were on that first map. They were quite influential. Spotted, though, wall player there of Eric Appleton, and they'll fall quite easily from the mm. ghost. There it is. Mizzou already coming out with the first round here on the map. A breeze as well, getting themselves a nice start. More importantly, a huge read. I mean, I got to say, I would never expect in a round one, maybe in a 5v5 kind of environment, but at least in terms of, like, ranked games or whatever it may be, and... And so what an environment where things are starting to feel a little bit more staked up, where things are starting to get a little bit more juicy. You're looking at teams mushing it right down the middle, the most open part of the map, albeit, and they bought ghosts to prepare themselves, but they were not prepared for the amount of counter pressure that was coming through. A neon right in their face, a chamber to run up and say, don't worry, darling, we're going to do this together. I mean, just the entire teamwork coming right there in such an odd point of the map. But teamwork has got to be the name of the game here because as big as this map is, you got to collectively push aside. That's exactly what we see already coming out for the likes of UH is they're trying to get themselves on the A, but it's going to work to some extent, but they're not going to lose any blood in the meantime. It's somewhat of a little bit of a differential. Smart play by Ponder to start to head over towards Crate. Unfortunately, Adam Solomon gets the nice headshot kill. Frank was able to find one. Fragment's good for another, and Serial's on the board. Mm. Silenced is the side of Houston. Cut down at every turn. They try to employ the same strategy that Mizzou brought out in that first game on Icebox in their second half of their rush. They know that they have somewhat weaker weapons in comparison. Let's take control of that space and act quickly. And because of that, they at least get spiked down with not much contestion in return. But the problem is you're all congested in one single spot. You're trapped. You attempt to retreat. Ponder tags you for one, kills one, damages another. And from there, you just can't fight back because you don't have the range potential for the ace knight. And talk about potential, man. There's an easy potential to go ahead and at least shut down one of these players. I mean, you can go ahead and look at the scoreboard. Consider what we saw in Icebox in that third round force in that second half. Things aren't looking too good for at least one of these players. But everybody else is kind of wising up a little bit. More importantly, solely taking a sacrifice where it's necessary to say, I need to make sure that this gun gets effect. And I can't do that if I don't have a live to work with. So a little bit of pressure. So we don't to go out already or excuse me, a owl drone and already going ahead and getting some value there adam to go ahead and get one but an even exchange coming out for the bulldog and conch now coming alive with that operator that's gonna be your problem on something like an a site where you're really exposing yourself once that viper wall goes down dark, dark goes over the top trying to kill out the player over towards stack little oh. bit of an isolated position over extending by the side of houston but they still managed to survive for now sully's gonna go for the long shot angle gets tagged in return they now need to retreat toxic Sorry, the Viper's screen, the Toxic screen comes up just in time. I'm going to do every single limb to like find it. Slide comes out by Ponder doing the best model for oh! a two impression. And there goes the kill. They'll find two in quick succession for the 3K. And Mizzou will dominate three rounds in a row. And though Houston find little success, aka getting that spike down, they just can't set up for the post plant before Mizzou dashes in. Yeah, and that's three in a row, man. That's the most concerning thing is when you see these starts of the maps, more importantly, at least in these first halves, even in just the rounds in general, where you get to a 3-0 start, you're saying, yeah, can't win at an even field when we have ourselves, you know, guns. We can't win from behind and we can't win ahead. So what exactly can we do? Where can we win? What can we do? Well, you have to make adaptations. You have to switch something up. You've got to start pacing yourself a little bit more awkwardly. 
you really got to get out of your element and start to fill out these different parts of the map because these one-dimensional pushes on the side obviously are not working. But even then, something that didn't work that first round was a push right up the middle, which could be red once more, but instead a little bit of a di diversion of attention towards that tunnel where we see Adam getting popped off by Conj. You go ahead and create a little bit of space in the rest of the map where, honestly, UH can make themselves a pretty big play if they weren't just sniffed out by Piggy. There's so many angles at which you can pop utility and cut down sight lines. You and I have tested it alone a couple smokes tossed out by your Viper to try and cut down the sight line of Serial in the back. Thankfully, though, for Houston, they managed to at least avenge their player. They cut down the chamber, the Serial lagging behind. They're able to manage to find another kill as Sully swings out with a little bit of assistance. Unfortunately, they'll both stand in the correct line of fire of Crinkle, who finds two. Evening out the odds, it's relevant. Houston know that they have the gun disadvantage. They'll try to collect those weapons quickly, but they'll make sure that they put down that spike first because relevant still only having a sheriff. Maybe a gun will be tossed over by their teammate collecting it over towards wall. So far, it's just a slow game by Mizzou to retake this objective. Rifle only in the hand of Eric Appleson. Pop flash will be coming out by X Relevant. They'll quickly flick away. Good job, and they'll be tagged just the same to Crispy with the refrag back. Eric Appleson rotates around the side, pivots in the right direction, and the pillar player will find themselves the victor 3 1. Our scoreline, Houston, find their first. Look themselves a while, and more importantly, a very thrifty round to make it happen. But hey, so long as you come around, it doesn't matter what the sacrifice is. You find yourself presence on the board, and you make sure that it's not going to be a 13 0 at the end of the day. It comes down to situations like this, where you look at the resources at the hand, what kind of ways you can really split up this map, and more importantly, how we can see UH from here really get themselves comfy. They have a Viper's Pit. They're probably going to rely on that this round if I had to bet on anything. And honestly, I don't think if you're Adam, you should be buying the operator in this situation. Play, honestly, a little bit of the cheaper game for everybody. Get aggressive with it. Find these specters. Make sure your Neon can get that plant down. And if things go south, you got a Viper wall to back you up. No matter what, just find ways to space yourself and say, we need to save money when possible. Because, I mean, we see Mizzou again and again and again. Getting crazy with these setups and these defaults really find themselves the edge where they need it. Crispy trying to play around right pyramid. It's cut down by Corey instead, but they were in their no command, so they don't actually fall just yet. They finished off by Piggy quickly. We'll find one more in return. Where he's trying to finish the job under the downed player, but no one's going to be able to pick them up and stabilize them anyway. It's not a big point. Here goes the best Emperor Palpatine impression we can get. The recharge comes out by Ponder. One, Whoa! Now make it two. Possibility oh! of a third. It will go through. They're blind. They don't even see them through the Viper's Pit. They're outside of it, and Eric falls. A round win by Mizzou <laughs> Esports, and I don't think either of us ever seen that from a Neon. No. <laughs> I've never seen a Neon have success with that ability, period, <laughs> quite honestly. I mean, maybe an ace every here and there if it's looking like all the circumstances are lined up, but never in a situation where things are just looking so against you with the Viper's pit. Because I say it again and again that, honestly, Yoru is the counterpick to Viper. I'm not going to go into my entire essay to explain how that is right now, but if you can think for yourself, you can understand my perspective. But I never thought of a neon overcharge being that solution to that kind of a problem. And I think, honestly, which is exactly what you need. You're moving fast in and out. You're not having that decay really go on too long. And you're just spraying right through, finding damage, even if it's a little bit here and there, because you're basically decaying your opponent as well. But talking about decay, Franco with a double and a shark dart. It may be nerfed, but he's still getting value. If that decays up and running, it's easy to kill them off when they're already low on HP. Sully's popped their own overclock, trying to do their best, but they'll have to ace. We've seen this before, but I don't think we're going to see it here. Mm -hmm. Serial finishes the job, gets the kill. I think it's so funny how much everybody dogs on the overclock, Dallas. We did see an ace, what was it, this this Wednesday, right? I think yeah. we saw an ace come out from it. The only time I've ever seen the overclock be successful. Even one or two kills was it happened to be an ace. This one for three. This round did nothing for Sully. Though that speed did force piggyback initially away from wall and over towards McDonald's, aka Arches, however you want to call it. It's just going to be finished off. Great shock part by Kringle comboed with that decay. And the rest is just lambs come to slaughter. And that's the thing, I mean, once it really dwindles down to situations like these. We see Mizzou Esports in a 5-1 to one lead. They're buying themselves up again and again and again, no matter what, they have at least two buys behind these rounds. I mean, consider they find success over and over again. I like the setup that we see from UX Tremere, making sure they go for full vandals, but the problem is they're forcing these things out and they're over investing these utilities on rounds that aren't really looking too good for them. I mean, the overcharge didn't have to be invested in that round. You're the 1v5. Talking about situations now, you've really turned the odds on their head. And finally, this is where you can use it to kind of capitalize on that. Problem is, Crinkle's just too quick with it. Finds at least one before getting shut down himself. 
Ooh, Koi just does not want to be dealt with. Toppled pillar at center. Two long shots over the door. An interesting way for Houston to finish things off. Almost a flawless as they didn't acquiesce that one single kill, but it was a quick flick by Crinkle. Honestly, there's not really much you can do against that one, but that does give Houston their first round win after a two round deficit. Scoreline still is in favor of Mizzou by quite a large margin, 5-2. They just need one more to guarantee an even split at halftime, but the comfortability for Houston is going to be very important. Even if they do lose, you know, three at the very beginning, two back to back, as long as they find that comfort zone, as long as they find the spot where they're saying, okay, collect rounds back to back, start to find where we can, uh, uh, take advantage of the weaknesses of Mizzou Esports. If they can get that, this game will start to fall more in their favor. The problem is they're just not mm. given the chance. Early mm. blood by Serial <laughs> and missed opportunities once again. This could be a squandered shot for Houston. It most definitely could be because that gives up so much information in the meantime. You saw that Recondar also had the impact. And you know that another player is there because you hear the Vandal ring out. And you knew that the Operator was the initial gun there. So you're now saying... There's two players towards this A-side. If you're really using those audibles to the fullest extent and making sure to you mean, take attendance off that alone, it's going to give yourself so much to work with. And also, Mizzou's figured so much out off that alone, knowing that two of those players, when only four are alive, and you've already checked towards the other area of the maps and shut down Eric Appleson. I mean, you have a lockdown on car near every single player except for one who's probably going to be following up with everybody else when you see that big knee on wall thrown up towards that A-side. So here it is, the pressure coming through, the door open towards two, and Ponder not getting the memo that somebody was laundering there. This is the angle that Houston need. Pressure through the pearly gates of that door and tube. They're able to find one more after the fact, though Sully is not allowed to escape. The rest of Cade's uh, kind of cut short. It is just Serial, a.k.a. Conch, left standing. They have three more players to work through. A tour de force has been popped in this round. And with a KO up, maybe the blade is up as well for the suppress. Doesn't need it so far. Headshot kill with the tour de force. And Adam Solomon is sleeping with the fishes. Player hiding back behind stack. Another one sitting up and play from stairwell leading towards heaven. They will be suppressed finally in the recon oh. as well. Not the spot you want to be in. Great coordination by Houston. Yep. That's what you have to have to win rounds. In situations like that, where quite honestly, I'm surprised UH Premier even pulled out that round to clutch it up because, I mean, they had themselves a very rough start. So much information already given up just essentially for free. Missed shots, critical shots that were just not even landing in the same area code. So, I mean, a lot of things that just weren't lining up for them. But still, they found a way to win out that round. They got themselves a setup on the A side. And Mizzou just did not make that quick adaptation, that quick transition towards the other side of the map to say we are ready for this and we're ready to retake it as well because there was obviously we saw that player we saw ponder not really get them a mobile player in two but even then matter of fact possibly two to really make sure you could have that cover when necessary so already the time out to come out from mizzou and a little bit of a read a little bit of time to breathe take a break and figure out what exactly is going on how is uh Premier facilitating this comeback and i think quite honestly is more mistakes on mizzou's side than it is capitalization on Premier. and it's not to say that Houston haven't made adaptations. They haven't adjusted and found not. things that are working. But the biggest difference maker has been Mizzou trying to change things up themselves in spots where they didn't necessarily have to. If they brought up the same strategy that won them, what, round four, they probably would have won that last round. Or, sorry, round three. They probably would have won that last round. Even because in round three they had a gun disadvantage, right? That was them still relying on the bonus weapons they had from round two, and they, they won against the rivals of Houston. There's a lot of different things that Mizzou have attempted. I think we've seen four different strategies total in the eight rounds we've seen. So they're changing things up, at least statistically, every other round. Hopefully this one will be a little bit of the same. Pressing knife sent out to Relevant, trying to maybe force a taking back, but that has not stopped the Viper's Pit from going down. They do get a look of damage back over towards Piggy, and because of the damage tossed back by Piggy in return, Crinkle gets a nice shock dart for one. Though the trade is successful, it's an even bloodbath for both sides. Well, that's not really the case anymore, because Soli said, you know what, put the cherry on top of this choker. Let's find ourselves one more to work with. And even then, we see the full setup going on towards the safe side, right there in sight. Not getting comfy towards caves, not setting up towards double doors, pushing up towards tower. It is an absolute investment that we've never seen the likes of before. And I think, honestly, that Mizzou may not even get going for this retake. They know the kind of weaponry that we see UH dealing with. They know there's an operator set up that... They may open this door. Ponder could go for that. And I think that's exactly the play. But if you're going into this flight and you still make sure to find one. Around the rosy, there goes oh. the pump flash. And crispy evens out the odds. 
This is a great player to try and oh! face off against. What kit does a chamber have against you when they can't even use their eyes? Jacrispy successfully clutching up, and Mizzou will scrape themselves together for a round win to go up to six, breaking even at minimum at halftime. I got to say, the kind of grit that we mentioned earlier at the beginning of this entire <laughs> matchup to say, all right, you know what? It's a 2v3 situation. We know we got an operator. Why not? KO is a full counter to the likes of Chamber, whether it comes down to the Tour de Force, the Headhunter, or even then just having an operator in general. A pop flash is very, very hard to turn away from when you're ADSing on an operator. So that really worked out for his favor. And DeCrispy showing exactly why a KO is so darn important to your lineup to make sure they guarantee themselves an even half worst case situation. But I mean, we got to look at the trends though here. Every single time Mizzou has won themselves around, it hasn't just been one round. It hasn't been an off round. It hasn't been a fluke. It's been a round strong together what? and they're making sure to capitalize it on one more. Your crispy already out for the fed count, but Andre is still alive and well, making sure to stall and having a stun available still. That is such a bad spot for the side there of Premier. Interesting decision to pop the over the overcharge there, Sully, and try to swing aggressively. Doesn't necessarily pair off. You do remove to crispy, which is a very important factor for your chamber to pop off. That will be the case as Adam Arkham starts to step through mid pillar and able to find one cho uh, koi step quickly over towards the A site. Does see crinkle initially? Flips back the other way and then has to re swing it because that crinkle just barely gets the upper hand and finds themselves the kill. So press does go through and their presence has been detected, though that was known already because of the kill that had been garnered and Koi's failure. It's just two players left though for Mizzou at this point, Dallas. Tossing out of a snake bite. All three players on the side of Houston retreating back towards A main. There it is. Hiding within cave. And they'll toss the toxic coming back in return. The key to this puzzle piece. And they're gonna bait out the spike as well. Now, love these plays when you hold on to this utility for the post play. You make sure to get aggressive with these walls, use it to cut off lineups instead of actually using it to have these strong, solid starts. But Crinkle can only really do so much. No time on the clock left to really get that, but you can try to find some kills in the meantime, and that's exactly what they do. Relevant, we'll probably make it out alive here and make sure to carry a rifle over, but still making sure that Mizzou doesn't end this second half, or go into it, excuse me, at least with a lead, because they're making sure to put a halt on that final attempt and that final drive they need to even get over that line, because there's only two rounds remaining no matter what. So we either see an 8-4 in favor of Mizzou, we see a obviously a 6-6 in favor of UH Premier, which would really just tie things up in reality, or 7-5 in me right in the middle with a little bit of a compromise, because... I mean, sure, we may be at the beach, but this is Shark Tank. <sighs> what is it we called? What is it we called it the other day? It wasn't this. It was. I was talking about a map on R6. We called it trying to deal with being trapped within a prison cell. That's what a lot of that A site kind of comes down to, trying to walk back towards a cave. You're trapped in a cell. That's not where you want to be. You're caged in like a wild animal. But right now for Houston, they managed to free that cage just a little bit. They're even opening themselves up for this one here. Oh! Adam Solomon finds the second shot without even being able to see its target. The first one was true as well. The De Crispy will finally flush out that remaining player there in the back of B. They'll manage to start to go for that defuse. It's a wild fire by the rest of Premier. They cannot stop the diffuser just yet. But finally, they'll have Sully on the long play. Spray through wildly for two. And that's just enough to get the job done. They now go to five. Last round of the first half. Can they even? things out and this is big for mizzou more importantly they had themselves at least enough to have these two ultimates to work with but this was where things really start to have a downfall on their side they don't have all the money in the world they invest in that last round as much as they could they're trying to capitalize on top of it so where you see that now three players are running with half shields and i don't think that needs to be a move you make toward these players that have these ultimates to work with the KO and the Neon, they need to have that full armor. They you need to stay alive. And play. sure, you get half of that equation, but you don't get the full entire thing to work with. So we got to see some of the switch up. And there it is, pressure from Ponder, but not working in their favor as the double swing comes through, encapsulating elbow in the middle of the map, showing that that pressure is probably going to the left side. Keep Mizzou on their toes. That's the go-to strategy right now from Houston. Head spotted Eric. Managing to kill them off before Sully can get a tag in return, though it was quite close. Jacrispy finally able to deal with Core over the top of the felled pillar at the top of mid. That's still a major man disadvantage for the side of Azure Esports. Popping their ultimates now. Use them or lose them as the last round of this half. Used to have already popped two of their own. The Viper's Pit goes down, and they've had the Tour de Force up and running in the hands of Arnold. Shots will go the other direction. Adam had a rifle in their hand, was not using the sniper oh. because of that. They fall victim to the other hand. Sully is able to find a flank there to Jacrispy as they were lingering around towards heaven. 
Conscious trying to work through back of B's side, being pressured from two different angles, and it will be impossible to overcome. Tied up at half is the score line 6-6 six, six, with Houston making a three-round comeback. And that's exactly what they needed. I mean, all things considered, it wasn't looking good for them. They find a way to answer back from the beginning of that half, as we saw, obviously, a three-round start there in a streak. And knowing that you were able to go ahead and rebound, get right back into this thing right before the new half comes around, it's much easier to find a mental reset and make sure really iron yourself out for a new section of the map It's if you find yourself in a tie scenario. So, I mean, we're going to see that really start to come to life here. And honestly... It really just comes down to, once again, this big debate that a lot of these casters have, of, or even then just players as well, whether or not Breeze is actually defensive sided or attacking sided. Sure, we may see the numbers trend towards another way, but this is Mizzou's map pick, keep in mind. And this is where they finally get to see that Neon, that Ch and that KO, and that Sova really start to come to life and start to facilitate these pushes. Keep in mind how even that first half of our map of Icebox was. Now it's an even score line at halftime again, and could be the time where Houston pull off the return much like Mizzou had did to go above and beyond. That will be allowed for at least a little bit longer. Ponder turns the wrong way and Eric Appleson will essentially execute them from the rear. Koi is able to find a second kill. Houston's defense has so far been uh, a force to be reckoned with at this point, Dallas. Player over towards bench, playing up and having another one. Got another player lingering on the A side. Houston are ready for any sort of rotate. And they even have Sully on the flank working through Canada. But with two players lying in through that B main, it's going to be an easy lineup for Sully. They'll knock the head off Crankle and Coy Ooh. will join them to finish off a Houston strong start. The second half flawless. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the biggest thing. I mean, it's a pistol round, so you're not saying, sweet, we get to carry these sheriffs over in classics. You get those for free anyway. It just comes down to the fact that you have kind of dominated yourself. You showed that there isn't too much to give. And more importantly, there isn't too much to get that attacking side because no plant went down. No extra credits to work with. That You had to make sure to guarantee that this round somehow to find that even exchange on the board and make sure that this third round when it does come around for Mizzou, if they don't find a thrifty here, which is going to be very, very difficult on the map for Breeze, that they can find someone to exchange. Make sure they still come out with somewhat of a leader, somewhat of just an influence showing that they can still fight here on this attacking side. So while they may like that here early, there's still plenty of time left. Thing just started. We're here in the second round, and we're looking for where this fight can go. And as it looks like it's heading towards that B site, they're still very indecisive. First kill does still net in favor of Houston. It's two in a row. An obvious statistic, considering that first round of this half was flawless for them. Koi is an angle that could prove to be successful for them, but... Note that Mizzou have managed to sneak just a little bit below. Sully has that sight lane over towards Paul. How did he not see it in time? Ponda with a flick, good for one. But there goes the tandem duo of Eric Apples in the next relevance. They're able to find three in total as Koi finishes off the round very successfully once again for the side of Houston. People questioning how Houston have been doing. They're trying to show it up ahead now. Two more rounds. But that was their bonus expected result. Mizzou with rifles now. I think this one, one of these big players, you have to learn to shut down. I think obviously going into this round specifically, the Mizzou, they don't look too hot. They're going up against Guardians and Judges, and, and there's no Bulldogs there, so you just have to worry about Adam. So that's going to be good for them, considering they all have half armors. But knowing that, I mean, even then, the one player you got to keep your eyes on, the one player that I think honestly is posing the biggest threat, not just in terms of scoreboard alone, but considering that last map as well is Koi. Being on that Sage earlier, but now being on a Sova, Koi can set up their own fight. They can move in and really just say, I can go in and swing whenever I want because I have my own information to work off of and I can create it as well. So a little bit of a miss shot there towards the edge allows Mizzou to actually get on the site. Almost unscathed besides that Viper, but Piggy still manages to get one in the meantime. So you're really finding these trades. You're setting things up. You're pushing towards the back of the map. You're taking control and you're keeping your players alive. Honestly, Vanna Solomon and even found a single kill. On that early peek out in the back corner of Pyramid, probably yep. would have been a round that could have been returned by Houston because they would have lost the chance to go for that pot flash, but it's ended up netting them too. That's the worst case scenario for a single player to go on their mental side, but it is still a flawless round recovery by Mizzou to find the third round of this second half and bring this to an 8-7 scoreline. Very smart of Mizzou to once again take advantage of their speed and tempo. Ponder was very quick to engage again. And on top of being the fast fastest player in terms of neon being able to sprint like that as well as being the most aggressive player on the mizzou side they're using all of that to work alongside the fact that they are just clinically talented dallas 
Yep. Very, very skilled. We saw the flick just before onto Sully. They're standing on top of Wall on B. They are skilled, and that is showcased last game and this one here as they already have 16 kills. In situations like that where you're starting to look at where are these trade-offs working, what are we really kind of stacking up against ourselves? I think, honestly, with the weapon in the last round, where you start going for Guardians on Breeze, and sure, the map is very large and the Guardian can work, but when you look at the power of the Vandal, you got to think about that one-shot potential that can really reign true at any distance where there is no drop-off. The Bulldog allows that same value, but we didn't see UH Premier utilize that in the second round and therefore really choking them up in that third one. They could have found themselves a lot to work with all when Adam only well, did one shot to the head. He said he couldn't find anything because that guard didn't have nearly the RPM to be expected and you could have actually found something with. So Mizzou really turning things on his head right now because they found themselves a very, very strong start to this round, but things are slowly starting to dissipate out of their hands. I've sent out a little tag that at least one player is on site. That's information that can be kind of sent over to the chamber that's one closed. That happens to work out for them. Adam Solomon finishes this one off. Does not like the fact that they were kind of made the fool in that last one. So at least finish things off strong. Mizzou had a really interesting spread in the ending stage of that round two players pushing to A and they had Ponder on the flank. It was pretty well set up, but Ponder didn't clear out Finch. They didn't clear out Nest on that heaven side of mid. And because of that, they get caught on the flank by Eric. That cannot be allowed. That's a mistake that Mizzou make that ultimately would have led to them kind of brewing up a better strategy because Ponder would have had the flank of not just one or but two players and could have saved the lives of his teammates. And it would have just given Mizzou a better advantage going forward because they would have maintained those rifles and buried the economy premier even further. There's still a lot more game left to go, and more importantly, there's a little bit more opportunity, but solely, um, good job, I guess. A little bit of a roundup. Go ahead and wind things up, why don't you? Get, get antsy. Get yourself to cat. I don't know what happened, but hey, it resulted in some kills, and even then, at the end of the day, it's almost resulting in what could be an even round, but there's still a player advantage towards us out of UH Premier. Mizzou also had the man hard and near good to, as dead as it stands right now. So, <sighs> Pop Flash Silver Souls Crispy won, and they can actually push this towards the side. This is an interesting decision to make as well. Which site do they head to, Dallas? They use the suppress figure. Nobody's uh, kind of, I guess, cheeky peeking, cheeky holding that door leading over to the A side, double door. So it looks like we may see Mizzou head that direction, which seemingly still wants to go towards B. They'll have to meet that player first if they do happen to go that way, as Eric Appleson is still sitting on the B site watching towards Hall. Same cannot be said for Adam, who's lying all the way back in cave. Crispy's just clearing out that left. space. Adam Solomon has the audio cue, I think. Here's the players walking and lines up the shot. The 2K spray down from UH Premier. Adam Solomon continuously proving that he's top dog on the Houston side. 10-7 our scoreline and a much needed timeout by Mizzou. That's exactly what it dwindles down to, man. I mean, UH Premier, they stepped up where it's needed most. I mean, they're going ahead, retaliating, and returning the favor. More importantly, to say, hey, here may be a map L on the one that you selected, and that's exactly what they need to get the series going. But as it stands right now, this timeout is exactly what Mizzou needs, and this is honestly their last rally. I mean, this is what it comes down to right here, right now. Double digits on the board. You have to make your return right here, and you need to make sure to start feeling comfy on these sites. It's not that we haven't seen Mizzou really pushing and trying, but they haven't been succeeding is their ordeal. They haven't really had a rally onto a site. They haven't been pushing definitively anywhere and finding control of the, not only just the site, but the entire half of the map. I talked about it earlier. These teams have to know their roles. They have to know what role they can play, not only just in terms of what they can do, but where they can make the impact on the map and a constant start to finish placement. And honestly, I haven't seen too much of it out of Mizuo here on Breeze, which is kind of odd to say considering this is their map pick. No, there hasn't been a very definitive push with a lurk somewhere on the map. There hasn't any, been any players looking for these lurks in areas that just seem unorthodox. They haven't really been locking down these sight lines to say that, hey, our job is getting easier the less they can see. They're pushing out very aggressively, and sure, it looks good, but they don't guarantee the spike is down before going for that. Would you say it's kind of a brood problem for them just not checking off all the, all the steps along the way, right? Like... You, you got to go through the stage. I was talking about tempering the sword before. How are you going to have a sharp sword if you skipped all the processes to get to that point? It's just 
the wrong idea at the wrong time. No command has popped out from the side there of Houston because of that ponder no longer is allowed to use that overcharge as of the current moment. And eventually be cleared off, they'll repop it, and now they kind of have to take control over towards space, but it's denied emphatically. Adam Solomon able to find a nice long shot. That's a 3K to the man in this round. And Houston will find himself with their 11th round victory. Five rounds in the second half, and they've only mm -hmm. lost one for a total of six rounds to have occurred. This is uh, this is Houston's comeback, isn't it here, Dallas? It most definitely is. It is a side of redemption. It is a just complete refresh. I mean, I mentioned it. Going ahead and having that mental reset when you lose, when you win three in a row and go into a new half compared to Mizzou, regardless of how strong of a start they stat add, they're worried about the present. And whenever it came to the rear end of that half where they you lost three in a row, they're saying, this is not a good look for us, man. And if we don't win these early rounds, things are going to look even worse. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, they're just almost kind of spelling out their own defeat. They don't really find a way to switch these things up. Gotta check every single corner. Oh my By the God. time they even check with the Owl Drone, Adam's already found two. Hunter, thankfully, is starting to come alive. What if I find two in that round with a Frenzy? But now with the Vandal, you're gonna make that much more of an impact. And it's not gonna happen. Same result. Mizzou, you have to clear that player. They hit one shot, and what do you do? You re-swing with three players in a row, and you allow for them to collect for a second. Adam gets an easy trade because of that. Now it's down to the 1v1. Mizzou have been able to climb back a little bit further. It's Jacrispy, the clutch player for the side of Mizzou, and they will oh. happen to clutch. Much needed for the side of Mizzou Esports after a <laughs> not good start to that round of Adam <laughs> Solomon managing to find too quickly. You play for your life there, Dallas. You no, know, you do yeah. have the rendezvous to escape. I can get a second one before I go. I can get a third one. Oh. Adam Sullivan's been feasting, and I do not, do not think that is the wrong idea. It is one of those things right now where I can guarantee in the comms, there is no celebration. It's just sides of relief. It's not, <laughs> let's go. We move on to the next. It is, thank God we didn't lose that because things are not looking good. You have almost no safety nets available. You have two rounds of leeway, and that's enough that you already lost in the beginning of this half that you could have gone ahead and buffed out almost immediately. And all things considered, you need to make sure to capitalize on this right net here right now. You have to find an economy reset. UH Premier has won so many in a row, and so many of these rounds, they barely lost any bodies, that you have to make sure to win the next two in a row almost near flawlessly to make sure to reset them. But Adam, he's saving this time. Goes to the 24s. Doesn't get shut down by Jakursby, doesn't even get sensed out yet, and can still use that operator to find some value and make sure to capitalize on that because there's a lot more available. The Viper spit over stationed towards that A side, forcing players towards B, and solely set up in Zabroza, looking for the pick of a lifetime. Well, he's lying in wait, Dallas. Jakursby has an inkling of an idea, and they do. Zabroza will fall. Sully forced to give up that, that tiny amount of map control in that spot. That has even up the odds now for Mizzou's attack. Piggy will be forced to retreat away from the elbow, leading out towards mid, but they're actually going to take full control over towards Pitter. Pillar? I don't know why I'm saying it like that. Ab Solomon finds a nice shot with the door to force. Eric Appleson finding one of their own. And Mizzou's retreat, their transition to the A site, has not worked out for them. Major disadvantage, a little bit of a uh, return fire back as the Tour de Force wheeling Adam Solomon will be felled quickly. Sprinkle is in a rough spot to still manage to cross successfully. Eric All Alveson's right. got the operator. Double sniper to the side of Houston. And that was unexpected by Mizzou falling victim so consistently to the sniper. Same problem that Houston had on the map of Icebox. Like brewing up over towards Cave to the player through doors. And, well, the last player of Eric Alveson hiding away in defender spawn, waiting for the rest of the team to position themselves here for his last kill. They'll swing <laughs> both. X relevant gets the final blood, but Koi was there just the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard not to find a situation like that funny, but that was just Houston saying, yeah, guys, it's, we got this. It sucks. It, it just <laughs> sucks. Like, I completely revealed, no real place to hide, and you're stuck still just wide out in the open. I just having to check so many angles that there becomes a point where your brain is just cutting it off to save mental for the next couple, considering that you even find yourself a position to do that. I mean, look at the stance of the rounds right now. I mean, two in a row, three in a row. And honestly, you only need one more to close up this game for UH Premier. And we see Mizzou every single time just being in a detriment, having to find a way to clutch things up and find a way to stay relevant in their own map pick. Once again, both these teams are looking like they were going to lose their own map pick. And the decider will mean literally everything. So, I mean, a budget buy, a thrifty. This is what it's going to have to result to here in this last round. But thankfully, for Mizzou, they do have that buy first pit. They have to find the space to really find it, though. 
And as once again, Adam finds his initial picks, you gotta shut this man down. It just you can't allow that to soak. It's can't keep it growing. The coffee pot is boiling over at this point. Adam has eaten everything. It's a buffet at, at every single round at every single turn. Eric finds one more. Adam was allowed to escape over towards staircase to find their second. And Mizzou, though they have spiked down, are left with two remaining players. Solly will easily cut down Piggy, but before they even find the kill with the stinger, Koi removes Crinkle from all chances. Chances. GG and yes, we need a re map three will be guaranteed. We're heading to Haven. Mm. I just I'm not tell you, man. <laughs> We're in these situations where it looks like once again, I mean teams are back and forth, back and forth, that we see these two Titans going at it. Absolutely bloodthirsty for results here today. And once again, we talked about the ice box. We said it during that first half. This specific player who is a top fragger in this map, we said you need to shut down immediately. Not only just in terms and in, in relevancy for this one map specifically when we were back on Icebox. We kind of warned you, do we not? Yep. I mean, we kind of gave you a little bit of a, uh, this is this is not going to be a children-friendly program if you let Adam <laughs> start going off. You need to shut this man down early. And even then when you go into Icebox to freeze, a much bigger map, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to buy an operator on Icebox. He's not going to go and buy a sheriff on Breeze. He's going to double down on that. And you have to make sure to check these lineups and hold out on him and make sure to lock him down again and again and again and again and again and again. I can repeat this for the next five minutes and it still remain relevant. We did not see Mizzou set up for him and really find a way to lock that out. We never saw them check that out or side of B. They barely went for that A site when they were on the side. I mean, it was... It was every single time when they went for A, when they went out for the open, they never checked that side. When they went for B. Wait, did that happen? That's the point I'm trying to make here. There was no diversity here in the map. And they need to make sure to really double down on that with Haven because there's going to be three sites to go to. And if you're going to the same one again and again, it's going to make <laughs> a UH job very easy. Consistency is good, right? But you're... <laughs> Maybe a little too consistent here, Mizzou. And <laughs> that's not the right type of consistency. The only consistency we were truly seeing is you funneling to the same exact person and the round score continuing to fall in favor of Houston. Adjustments have to be made. I know a lot of people are upset about JV being subbed out and not playing for this game. You guys might want to be quiet for this third one because Adam Solomon, the player that subs in, was the reason why Houston win that game. The same way that yep. we saw the chamber battle, the chamber fight go so successfully in favor of Mizzou on the map of Icebox, it falls in the same direction now on the second map of breeze that's how influential how important a chamber can be smart decision to switch sully over to the neon as well they weren't feeling as hot they weren't feeling as spicy on that central world the chamber on icebox switch him over give it to somebody else overall amazing adjustments made by houston cannot understate what they did to change things up that is their map i called it way before and they slaughtered hawaii on this map way back they managed to find some sort of return and they do it here against mizzou that upset them on map one can the number two, I think, rated team of Houston close things out in a full BO3 as we head over to Haven? Will Mizzou still manage to squeak it together and win this one? Stay tuned to find out.
predictions that's what's first on the board welcome back everybody to the necc we've got our last game our last map so to say we still got a whole nother bo3 after this one yep. our last map though here from mizzou esports versus the houston premier roster and predictions like i said name of the game dallas we head on over to haven who do you think's taking it <sighs> man i got this is honestly i feel it being mizzou didn't find that early closure I think that's where UH really goes ahead and takes the trip here. I mean, all things considered, you got to look at the map, you got to look at the trend, you got to see the way the game's been going. That even then, when you get a third round in hand, see, even then, my stomach's trying to make a little bit of retortion as well. That, I mean, UH, they look better the uh, later these series go. They look better and better and better. We talk about momentum, we talk about the way they have a tendency to usually wake up. That needs to be something that's locked down here by Mizzou. And I don't think, honestly, with the way they spread themselves on that defense, their breeze defense was an outstanding, and they only got two sites to rotate between. Sure, they're pretty big distances, but that's why you go for the agent selections that set you up for both sites. When you got three to rotate between, and three, not only just to rotate between, but to hold down, more importantly, yeah. make sure that no approaches come onto it. You have to make sure to have somewhat of an actual reinforcement there than just knowing that, oh, okay, it's there. That's where things get a lot more iffy. And I talked about it earlier. Premier, they love these smaller maps. They love these maps where you can maneuver through the middle of the map and really take advantage and dig into these opponents, not only just from a one-dimensional approach, but wander through B and hit these connect sites coming from your spawn. Come up with these pincer plays again and again. Go for these full approaches and these splits that work in areas because they'll find a bigger split and a bigger you know influence towards the middle of the map and the actual deviation from the site than the actual main approach they do these weird things which aren't even really all that weird they just work and that's something you have to lock down here right now impact 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 the name of the game so to say you've got to make a big enough impact early instead of having a small splash a small puddle jumping off that diving board you want to can a ball in and essentially force everyone to be into your wake and spread away that's kind of the what Houston failed to do on map one on Icebox. Did a much better job to return fire on map two. I think I'd have to hand this one over to Houston if I had to make a prediction now. But that's kind of a biased opinion. And I'll openly admit that. I'll be the first one to say it. I have a big history with the side of Houston. Having casted them for so long up to this point, I think I've only casted Mizzou once or twice to this time period. I don't think I did it alongside you, Dell. So it wasn't as fun, uh, to say the least. But uh, still had quite a lot of fun. Mizzou's great. Houston, when I think of a map for them, I'm thinking of the map, obviously, a Breeze, where I have such a big memory of them taking down Hawaii, because I thought that was hilarious. And it's also the map of Haven in Ascent. Ascent for the negative, because, oh my goodness, Houston last season it was horrendous on Ascent, and they weren't the only team. I can count at least three or four other teams that were on the top of the line. Uh, Hawaii was really bad in Ascent defensively. Houston was really bad in uh, defense on Ascent. I think Northwood is also pretty bad on defense on Ascent. That's why it was completely avoided in the playoffs. And I was telling them to myself, do not go to Ascent. You're going to lose that second half when you go to the defense. Haven, though, my goodness, Houston is good here. They've always been good here. They know what they need to do. The biggest difference maker that I'm seeing here for this lineup, though, is the fact that neither team has that Sova, which means no default recon bolt over the top to long C, and no great way to gather information on A, bar sending out that fade utility. Mm -hmm. I was, I was going to say, uh, we, we was going to have some real big problems with each other right there if you want to say there was a utility. I know fade exists, bro. <laughs> I know that you, you I only mean, fade. love fade, but... Sure, she's great, and I'm kind of with you on that matter of fact. I mean, you need to make sure to find a way to manipulate fade and really get these lineups that are kind of a little bit tricky and are pretty difficult to shoot, which there's plenty of space for that. But more importantly, you got to find the influence on the map. And I mean, even then, when you've got the raised combination to work off of, which we don't see oddly enough for UH, they're going with the jet off the fade. And when you don't have that paint shell combined with the tether, things don't look too good because... It's one of my favorite Wombo combos to see early in these rounds. But instead, it's going to be on that attacking side that we see the jet start to come alive. You have to make sure that solely in these blade storms, and even then, really able to go ahead and clear that space, it has to be efficient, and more importantly, has to be consistent. And with UH Storm on this attacking side, that's the thing that starts to concern me for the side of Mizzou. That was the same problem we had on the map of Icebox. It was a jet brought out by Houston instead of having to race, so there was no combo. Instead, they supplemented that with the KO for the fragment and the tether combo, but I don't see it wasn't as successful. I think they only netted one single kill with that. Haven's a great map for the paint shells and tether. Oh, get out. Great toss over the top. Oh. Allison's in a really bad stock force to use their stride and step to recover. Prowler's also sent over the top. I think that does manage to tag. They're trying to use the boost pack to success. Ponder will manage to get down to the ground, but they'll have to stay there as Sully finishes the job two to their name, and that's a Houston round one win.
but what a hectic way to take it as, uh, as, as everything just hit the fan all at once. I'm going to say, good round start here for the likes of UH. I mean, uh, things got a little bit bloody there towards the end, but that's because Mizzou didn't really have too much of an actual hold. I mean, for what we saw, we saw them really, uh, I want to say, allocate everything right off the get-go, not really space it out. And I got to say, I like the tank can, you know, stun combo that we saw with the Breach and the Rage, but past that point, everybody else is kind of running in, a little bit of a funnel. You're not really going for the flank plays. You're not really spreading yourself across the map. But you are spreading this money out very, very aggressively. UH on this round. We see a Guardian with the full armor. We see a Vandal with the half armor. We see plenty of players having plenty of money that Spike went down and they have the investment to make right here, right now. But is there going to be a switch up? It's going to be some kind of aggression. We see a little bit of a stall. We see these, you know, smokes going closer to the spawn and closer and closer coming out for Piggy. But what kind of impact are they going to have? Because with all this noise lurking around now, there's no real players pushing out because now UH gets to read. Players are over towards the A side. And there's another one to go ahead and stack on top of the pile. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. The side of Houston, Adam Solomon, left alone on C long. They're hiding close right corner. Because of that, they're not spotted as the retreat of way to try to get that flank. No, you can't miss oh, that ponder. ponder. Because they sit the other way, you are completely short-sighted. Irrelevant will punish <laughs> you for it. Oh, Mizzou shooting themselves in the foot. All of this from the beginning from a pretty nice strategy. Of all the people you would want to give an ult orb to at the beginning of the round downs, even extending to the point of possibly losing your life for it in such a dangerous spot, you give it to your omen. That's the idea of Mizzou right now. They're doing that because they want to make sure that at the oh. very least, Houston cannot collect for that ult orb to make their attack even easier. And well, pull the scraps together, Mizzou. You're not out of this round just yet. To Crispy over towards Link, able to find one. Now a second as they retreat through Garage over to Big Window. Problem still is the spikes on the A site. There's no way you're going to get over there to get this defuse. And even if you do get near Houston or closer to the retreat, they pivot back, setting a player up inside Heaven. Sully's nearby. Will they have the shot? They do. The rifle mm. connects, and that is a second round now for Houston. Also, it's much like that with you, Crispy, starting to look really hot on that. Sheriff, you don't even pick up the sector. You don't even whip that joker out. You <laughs> yeah. look at behind, and you keep going for those one taps. Because, I mean, best case scenario, Spectre's a two shot to the head. So, I mean, regardless, that's all behind us. We're now in a new round. We're now on a new stage, and we get to see what exactly can be done here, right here, right now. And Mizzou coming into a round where they don't have too much to work with. They often really invested into the Sheriffs in the last round, trying to make things expensive. That instead, I just never really understood that too much because Mizzou, what they were doing was setting up, sure, they made the round expensive, but on a force round, you're expected to kind of lose this round anyway. Sure, you make it look good, but if some of these weapons are still prevalent, if you still have them really just hitting a shot or two, a miraculous, whether it be or not, I mean, it's going to go ahead and put a massive, massive problem in the rear end and over the longer term of the match to really set yourself up and look good for these weaponries and these arsenals to start playing your favor. So, go on arsenals, they're already there, coming out in full force. Calibers, go ahead and going down range and finding kills, but the only retaliation we've seen thus far is UH with one, but they get the spike down as well on that B site. So, this retake has to come in uh, to the fullest extent, and a Rolling Thunder will be invested, oddly enough. So, it's a 1v4 now with an ultimate use. It all comes down to solely with that Guardian. I'm sure with that full armor, he can maybe get one, but that's not even a result. Unfortunate to say the least, Houston will acquiesce the third round, although this is fairly expected at this point, Dallas. They got their bonus in round two. The third one will go to the rifle squadron, though dropping two weapons, two rifles, out of the hands of Mizzou is quite important. And also forcing away a rolling thunder. Like you said, it was an interesting decision. Ultimately, it works for Mizzou if they feel it necessary to win the round and, and, and at least ensure that they won't lose one or two many, I would say, rifles. And you'll take that cost. It's a, it's a sunk cost fallacy at that point, but they'll at least get a little bit closer. Rifles now go to both sides, though obviously with Mizzou having lost two rifles, they can't buy up everybody. Instead, it looks like Serial will opt to use the Headhunter in the pocket with their full armor, oh, maybe you. trying to have a follow-up behind their entry player to pick up the rifle should it fall, and that does seem to be the case. They'll engage early for the Headhunter inside of short. They may be the first player to lose their life just purely because they view their life not as important as the rifle player following up on all. I say even then a little bit of a weird default here. While it still may prove efficient and look like it works on paper, double set up towards garage, kind of split towards the A site, composed of the fade in the chamber. It's all a little bit odd, but if you get a little bit of a peek and maybe things work out for you, you can definitely find some value with it. There it is. A double down, a little bit of an FBI clear coming on their hands or, <laughs> and, well, you know, 
able to go ahead and look uh, much more efficient in these pushes. I mean, UH Premier, we talk about momentum, we talk about feeling comfortable, and they're definitely looking like they're making themselves at home here on Haven. I mean, the way they're clearing these sites, not only just to get there, but I mean, to just honestly be there. Find these holds, push out from the site. Once the spike is down, it's just looking magnificent. Buried two more. X Relevant watching the flank as Mizzou stumble into their line of sight and are dealt with very quickly. Looks like Piggy will just opt to retreat over, save for this round, keep that rifle, and just hang out on that C site. You mentioned in the break, right as we were starting up for this game, that Haven is a different beast, so to say. You're going to have to rotate a little bit further. You have to defend the site a little bit harder. Mizzou was struggling to do that in the map of Breeze in general, and there's going to be even more angles that they'll have to worry about for those operators. Same thing can be said back for Houston, but Houston have had a very dominant spree. The difference maker here is the A side is the most easily retakeable objective in all of Valorant, statistically speaking, that is, making it quite easy for the defense to retake. That's why you see a lot of defensive teams just give up that site to play for the post plant, and... Top of the matter, past that point, link and defender spawn. Make it very easy to rotate. 16 seconds maximum if you walk to get from A to C, and about 8 seconds if you want to go to B to C or B to A. It is very quick to get over there, so post-planting isn't the most horrendous thing in the world. That's why defense still has a really good shot for this map. Well, I think, honestly, you talk about speed and how quick it is to rotate from point A to point B. I can tell you, I mean, the game just keeps speeding up. If you incorporate a jet dash, you incorporate a chamber TP. You exactly. <laughs> you just actually run. Crazy, crazy plays that can be made. And girl, if you're trying to speed run site rotations, good God, she's the perfect one for you. But it all comes down to more importantly, how you push these sites and how you execute them. And we're seeing UH Premier once again, just kind of double down. They're looking outstanding. They're checking every single corner. They're making sure everything is accounted for. And sure, we see them kind of making an overinvestment here and there. But honestly, it could be sort of a blunder right now as we see that Pringle kind of clutching things up. You've got to follow this trail if UH Premier. You know the lap around is going towards the outside. Go for the double swing, take the shot, get the kill, and you get yourself one more round to work with. So that's going to be a 1-4 now. Mizzou not looking too hard on this defense and finally opted to take that time out in a round where they can't really buy up for this plan anyways. That's the Houston you're expecting to see, Dallas, right? A team that will double swing every angle. Honestly, the fact that Crank was able to find not just one, but two players on the entry over towards site after the nightfall went out was very impressive. Good job by Crinkle, who was very much so one of the top fraggers on map one and did their best on map two to try to give Mizzou as best of a chance as they could. Still, overall, not a terrible round for the side of Mizzou, burying and leaving only two players left standing on Houston, but that scoreboard will continue to tick in their favor. 4-1 is a current score. Timeout being called by Mizzou. You get one per half, use it or lose it, and you know I'm an advocate, Dallas, of always using that timeout. Even if I have to sit here and you know ad-lib for 60 seconds, that's always something yeah. to talk about, and it's so important for these teams. They're the important factor in this. Not me or the caster having to buy time. No, they need to work things out. They have a lot of trouble dealing with Houston. Much needed to take this break. And honestly, I mean, it gets to the stage of the game where you're starting to say, all right, what can we do? Because, I mean, honestly, looking at the way that we've seen Mizzou play so far, we got to kind of be on their side for a little bit just for the sake of the game to make things look better and even the kind of even the odds that we have to see what exactly they can do from you know our luxury of being able to see where everybody's placing themselves of how they can set up across this map and as i mentioned it was a, a budget round they were kind of timing out going into so they're not going to be able to kind of really fully invest and bring these plans to life just yet but they're just thinking for the future they're looking for contingency trend plans and honestly finally having a little bit of an idea of how can we force players off? Well, A is one of the best places to start. You create a funnel towards C, you lock things down, have a player in garage, a trademark towards that B site, and you go for that double setup on A. We haven't seen that come to life yet. There's a reason that's the professional default that teams go for again and again and again, but it hasn't been a factor here just yet. And the retake has to come through from this garage area where honestly we're seeing some relative success, somewhat of a trade and conch having that tour de force, but not really making too much of an impact for it just yet and making it very difficult to retake with this gun considering the shot's already rained out. Big waves to come, though. Looks like Ponder's oh, going to work way. through Courtyard. Unfortunately, Adam Solomon meets them there. Outside the gate of the run. Shots will try to send the other direction. Adam Solomon just cannot <laughs> connect with the Vandal because of that serial will re the no. Tour de Force hits. One way smoke popped away. That is one of the boons of having the jet over that raise. An extra smoke in the pocket. Two, technically speaking. Cyril gets another entry over towards site. Relevant able to step up. Oh! Quickly by Conch. Making a big wave, like we said. But their players on plat. He can't see. He trout and steps. And Eric Appleson oh. gives away their position. But there's no time. 
for Mizzou, and it'll still be a victory for Houston. Well, if there's at least one thing you did on that budget round, you made it expensive. <laughs> you made sure that even then, if things don't work out, Sully's going to have to possibly get an all point here and find a way to double down the next one. But that's not going to be the case either. Every single one of these players are having to make an investment, and there will be another case. But you've made yourself one step closer to getting yourself to be in a relevant position, to be able to look like you can actually contest to this game, and just at least in terms of a factor that doesn't actually you know show up until you press and hold on the tab. That's the problem. You got to find the impact just naturally, where it rains on the top of the screen, tried and true, and you have to do absolutely nothing to really get those deep down stats that just really doesn't matter towards the end if you don't find a way to really manipulate it. So already, Zoo with these two ultimates to work with from the shadows, the show's tougher. It have an impact here, but more importantly, it can be used for a very quick rotate because the from the shadows, that's the fastest way, faster than the Eon, faster than Jet Dash. No matter what you incorporate, it's gonna be a very easy way to get yourself in a relevant finding distance, but it's not gonna be a factor at all if we see Piggy fall a little bit too soon here on the seaside. I don't know if you noticed this as well as Piggy does happen to fall. Great call out there, Dallas. Uh, interesting setup by Mizzou. They didn't go for the tether paint shell combo to isolate and guarantee that long A ult orb. Instead, they sent them over through garage to find a player mm. towards hay. That was the idea of Mizzou. They went for the frag instead of trying to pick up the old pip. They felt kind of desperate enough that they wanted the man advantage. Problem was, they didn't get anything. Nobody aggressed there for Houston, so it wasn't successful. And the fact of the matter was, if they had gone over towards A, Houston would have rushed them. So it was a smart play by Mizzou, but almost a coincidental smart play. Play over towards Towards onto site though, Houston tried to use the crowd and step, it does not work. Ponder gets a paint shell if it was tossed initially, teleported into it. The crispy's good for two more on the top, just so he left standing. And uh, well, Cereal makes quick work of them. Zoo clutch up the round in a nice fashion despite giving up first blood down. And even then, I think it was also just not only giving it the first blood, but on the other side, Houston completely gave up that spike. Eric Appleson yeah. served that spike on a silver platter towards that a site saying your spike monsieur just saying honestly <laughs> take it hold on to it eat it up keep it it's yours now and, and in situations like that you saw the rest of premier say we had to follow up on this this man just absolutely served to him on a silver platter <laughs> and we got to go an entire uh, heist just to get it back and at that point we might as well just dedicate ourselves to the side so you have to look at the plays here now and again. You have to look at the double down once more. This paint shell tether combo we see toward, going towards this A site. It could really prove to work out as it's already gotten so many players. So much stuff has already been marked up. You know this place is going towards the A site. But if you're coming from C, you need to look out because you know that flank's going to be watched. If not by a player, even then, a trademark nonetheless. You use a smoke. If you have Piggy send the smoke over from their defense on C long over to A ramp, then you don't necessarily have to send the tether initially. We saw them holding on to it for the time being. The issue is they weren't able to find an impact despite saving it. They wanted the util for the post plant, but it's not there. Piggy's the second to fall afterwards. The crispy joins them in the afterlife. And well, the magic conch, much like that SpongeBob episode, it has to end after its time concludes. And it looks like Mizzou's time in this round will be concluding very quickly as Serial is being trapped within the attacker spawn. A lot of information trying to go in the favor of Houston as they're hopping and skipping their way around this direction. Headhunter out for Adam Solomon. Uh -oh. But Cyril does manage to find the kill. Another player swings. Cyril takes down Koi. And now if you're Houston, you have to start questioning. Do you go for the player? It's an operator, not a tour de force, which means you do want to drop the sniper out of their hands. At the very least, find that level of success to punish them. Sully has the best chance of doing so. First shot misses by Serial. They'll try to escape. They've got a line up by oh. Relevant all the way on C long. Great pincer and great flank by Houston. They'll close out now guaranteeing a positive half. And that's all it comes down to is making sure to get themselves at least an even half because they're sitting at six. But I think honestly, looking at the trend of the way the game's been going, I'll take your bet on that one. That they will find themselves going positive, knowing that Mizzou will have to be themselves in a little bit of a thrifty situation, even just keep some relevancy in this half, knowing that things aren't going their way. Conch is the only one looking positive, and that's because two of those kills were resulted in post-round saves, which still wasn't even successful. So things are looking good for Mizzou right now. And even then, I think the setups they're finding on the map are looking a little bit lackluster. If you have Conch that operator, let him hold A long. He's going to be able to cut that off, at least find some blood, give that call, let you know somebody's backing out. And then you find two more players to spread it somewhere else in the map instead of doubling down on one exact just approach. I mean, you're having to look at the resources you have at hand. 
and make sure to it's spread out as efficient as possible. It's a little bit of an over allocation when you have two players there time and time and time again. It's useful for the early game, to kind of scare them a little bit, and think of that's going to be your default, and then switch it up. But if you actually use it as your recipe to success, your cake isn't going to taste all that good. Mm. It's a piece of cake to bake an easy cake, but you have to have the recipe. Oh, you can't let yourself be easy. Eric Appleson managed to put down that spike. Paint shells we sent the other way, and they'll have to use their shrouded step to try to escape the hydra that smoke. They were actually paranoid in the process. I think he's able to find one more, and though Serial and Ponder attempt to swing over towards hell, they get sent there instead. I think he's able to find the head of Sully through the box, but... Now it's all up to Crinkle. They cut down one more, looking for the second to close things out, but denied it. As Houston will, in fact, make my prediction accurate, Dallas. And we're looking at a 7-2 split already with Houston on top. Can I go back two more rounds? Where you said, uh, what was the French line you made about serving up on a silver platter? What was the term? Your spike, monsieur. Yeah, why can you say that so well, but not tour de fort? Because... I know, how, I know how to break out the French when it's relevant. Right, I, you know I'm what? telling you. I know my French, and you want to sit there and tell me how to say tour de force. For those of you out of the, out of the, out of the queue, so to say, me and Dallas have a, uh, a debate going on, a big debacle about how tour de force is pronounced. You guys can feel free to comment. Is it tour de force or tour de force? Let's see how you guys say this one. But the next round goes underway, Dallas. Mizzou get early aggression. It most definitely does, and even then, a little bit of a spread once more. Instead, we're seeing more and more players going to this A side again and again and again and again, man. And it's every time it confuses me, but honestly, it may be the recipe that they need this time that is at the plant that's going there. Instead, it's going to be a little bit of an overspread, some aggression towards that spawn to be unexpected by the likes of Mizzou. And honestly, Soli kind of overstepping his boundaries there. Not looking too good, but Adam looking even better as a return at least comes through while fully blind. But Mizzou, it is a 4v2 situation. And honestly, you got to consider what players are there. They're going to be somewhere on site. So you just go ahead, full breach onto there, no pun intended, and find yourself a deep fuse and even then just spray through the smoke. So... Finally, Mizzou getting themselves once again one more round on the board. So worst case situation, they're looking at 9-3. That's not bad, but it's also not good considering that looking at this board right now, looking at the scoreboard and the spread of rounds with streaks on streaks on streaks, two, three, two, and only need two more for UH Premier, they can make that 9-3 very, very, very doable. It's manageable. We talk about Icebox in game one being the map that's, uh, well, the most recoverable, the most common for a 9-3 scoreline. Haven's no foreigner to it either, to be frank. But that's honestly, I would say, because Haven's just seen so often. Maybe the same thing can be said for Icebox. So maybe there is a case to be made there. Still, scoreline does indicate that Houston will hopefully continue their reign of dominance. But Mizzou are not done just yet. Ponder, you got to look both directions. Cover your corners. Turn that mouse to the left. Big problem, child, for a lot of players. Though it is even trade so far, X Relevant will be the difference maker, managing to catch to Crispy as they try to sprint their direction. But X Relevant's now caught between two players. One's inside big window. He'll attempt to jump out, but Serial is silenced instead. Paid to, I guess, get punished for their indiscretion. And it's just one player remaining. Uh, Crispy, you may have a chance here. Sorry, Crinkle, you may have a chance here, but you may get too crispy as it's uh, right into the frying pan. Oh, and some more shots on the relevant. Not enough to go ahead and get the kill, but still. And the crankle is in a very difficult situation. Just go ahead and back yourself up off that site. Spike, go ahead and take down. We talked about the 9 3 looking very doable, being manageable at least. But now, all of us, you could say it's guaranteed with how much money is available for this buy, following things up. That Ponch is going to have to go ahead and buy out for DeCrispy. Piggy only has a half shield. Ponder has a half shield. We got to see a switch up, man. I mean, it's the last round. At least get crazy with it. You don't have the best guns to work with. Try something new. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be the best time to do it, right? Where you already feel like things are looking down in the dumps to where you can go ahead and say, what do we have to lose? Why not make that switch up that could be necessary? That we could have looked back on rear sight and said, honestly, that's what we just needed to do. But we were missing that and didn't really go for it. So even then, a very aggressive hole, once again, coming out by Piggy right here on C-Long. And I... Pretty sure if they pushed it, they would have went ahead and checked out. But instead, they lap things back around. Go for the cloud burst act as if they're almost still pushing onto that site. But they know that A has worked just time and time again. I won't plan to go for it once more. Yeah, it's just such a consistent force right now for Houston. Stick with what's been working. That's why we say Mizzou needs to change things up, even if it is kind of crazy and out there. The biggest problem has been they have not found a strategy that works, but they've been doing the same old strategies over and over again. Wrong kind of consistency. 
so change things up be crazy they're trying to do that here quick rush comes out from houston mizzou has early aggression to use that rolling thunder beyond that trying to get too aggressive payment is brought back and returned to houston side as adam and solomon falls to piggy on that flank piggy's now still sitting in a main maybe has a chance to take the player coming up short opportunity comes a knocking and it will oh. in fact fall no piggy loses the fight and sully takes down ponder an unprecedented failure by the side of mizzou to try and get that pincer and the full effect of the flank next relevant comes from long removes conch to crispy falls them afterwards it's just crinkle left standing for the second round oh. in a row they don't have the best odds to really take this one back they'll send util dumped over to long they try to spray over towards short they'll tp eric i'm not sure what you're doing silver platter all over again monsieur Shot misses by Crinkle, but time is running out. And Extravagant would deny you the possibility of even going for the defuse. It will be a scoreline dominant in favor of Houston as they close out this half. And this is where they're obviously on the attacking side. And I mean, honestly, we mentioned it already. Houston looks very, very good on this map. And where you mentioned it earlier, where they kind of fall a little bit lackluster on ascent, that could be their same kind of lackluster attempt on this map specifically. But you got to consider how much of a force they were on that attacking side that honestly momentum may just be the one thing to carry them over the finish line past this point. They win a pistol round, they double digits right here at the start of the half. If they win the force, which is going to be considered and honestly going to probably force a force out of Mizzou, which I still don't think they should go for, it's going to make things look much more difficult again and again and again. The odds are going to stack against Mizzou if they don't make a halt right here because every 9-3 curse that comes along starts right here right now and it's still 9-3 and you get that first point. You got to make it 9-4 Mizzou. That's what it comes down to. Bottom line, you need this pistol. For the side of Houston, if they take this one, like you said, it will more than likely than not force the round for Mizzou to also buy out. And then even if they win that, they won't have the money for the round after. So statistically, they're still going to take a loss at one point over another. Just make that loss a little earlier. Houston, though, struggling already in the round. They've lost two. Only Adam Solomon able to find one. Quick sprint out by Ponder. Aggressiveness from Mizzou paying dividends. And it's now down to the 3v1. Adam Solomon within B sight. Has a bit of a cheeky position. Headhunter misses, though, as both players split. Cannot find the right target acquisition. And Mizzou will start things off on the right foot, Dallas. First round of the second half falls within scoreline now 9-4. Yeah, big plays here to work with, and more importantly, a big round for Mizzou to make sure they have some relevancy here once more. And they can actually look to fight, to contend for this game and really put it under their grasp. But, I mean, I mentioned it before, going forward, moving on, moving forward, we got to start looking at this game, what can really lay itself out in front of us and how Mizzou can actually make these plays. And, I mean, again, we got to talk about the presence on the map. Their biggest weakness on Breeze was their attacking side. It looked very, very, very one-dimensional when trying to push onto these sites. It was just a push right through main, and it was on the same site every single time. They have to switch it up this time around, and them losing two players right off the get-go is not a very good start for them that UH Premier has a man advantage, but has to fight to actually gain it back. Under somehow still struggling to survive. Sully will not find the kill, and the attempt by Houston to kind of take control over towards attacker spawn a little bit. Frenzy in the hand, though, of X Relevant. May not be relevant enough as Ponder will turn around with a little bit of assistance by DeCrispy to cut them down. Houston will lose a second round in a row, but now will come the full buy in the hands of Houston. We mentioned this before, the way that these halves go, you win two, you lose the third, much like we see in that first half where Houston take the first two and lost that third. This is where the rifles will come out of the hands of the two of the losing squadron that took out the first two. But I think Mizzou may need to feel pressured to buy up to kind of match the game of Houston. And this will be the problem child for them. If they fall into that mindset, they just have to give up this round. Honestly, Dallas, they have to accept that this could be a loss, even if they don't have the proper weapons. Don't force out. It just makes the econ worse. Well, no matter what happens here, sure, you're going to go for a round win. I think, honestly... The biggest thing you need to set up, these are the kind of rounds you have to get thrifty. You have to get a little bit crazy, look for these lurks, look for these free kills, and more importantly, play off your initial player. Honestly, Piggy, I wouldn't blame them. Say instead of actually setting it back towards window, working with the squad, you're an omen. No matter what, your smokes will be relevant in pushes on the site. You can throw them through walls anywhere on the map and put them somewhere else on to another site. Meanwhile, you are lurking around the map and making it seem and be perceived as if you're with the rest of the team. Meanwhile, you're in the pack. You have picked up a vandal. You are now lurking everywhere, making their job super, super scary to even go anywhere else on the map besides where their feet are currently standing. But that's not the case. Instead of 
four-man push comes on the side of this A site, and we're going to see them making themselves at home at least with the plant. But the retake is still into full play here with all the utility available from UH Premier because they didn't get too much of an influence early to say we need to invest this. They're going to do it all right here, right now for this retake. As you can see, the setup trying to come to full fruition, and I think it's going to be disgusting when it does. No ultimates for either side just yet. Sully will swing over to Cubby Corner. Pringle's able to get the better end of that situation. Wow, an extension by Pig over to Hallway will net themselves one, but only an even trade. A two versus two. Wallfire does not work for Eric Appleson. Coy's the last one standing, but Crinkle, who still had not been removed from Cubby Corner because of Sully being killed off first finds the final frag a round win coming out three in a row by mizzou and they make me eat my words there dallas they come out on top they're not only a three round buffer between the two squadrons and look at what houston are bringing to this next round it's nothing not a zilch a marshal maybe in the hands of their jetta sully though they seemingly take a step back from that they'll just even out the eco and bring essentially whatever they can collect off the ground it's scenarios like these, man, where I said it already. Mizzou, no matter what happens there, even then, they were just trying to make that round expensive. And they actually ended up winning it. So that's the biggest thing. Sure, only one player survived, but they were expected to lose that. They didn't invest barely anything at all already, and they still came up with a rifle in the end. So they broke even, no matter what. It's still a bonus that they didn't really lose out on. This is a situation in the round where they really have to step it up. Because if UH Premier with this Blade from in hand and the first blood already on their hands, that makes things look pretty nasty here for all things considered for Mizzou, knowing that they've lost their fate. All sorts of util now gone. Sure, they can flash and kind of raw peek into these sites, but besides that, there's nothing else to really work with. They have to rely on these timers more than anything else. Serial's trying to be the hero at this point. Dallas has early angle towards B, but Piggy opens things up. A little bit overstepped by the side of Houston's defense. Mizzou was thought to capitalize. Speed has been the name of the game when they're thrifty and it works so well in Icebox. A little bit lackluster on the map of Breeze, but it's seemingly working here, at least to a degree. Serial's able to find Koi. Eden gets a quick flick to the player of Eric, kind of lingering back towards platform. Eric has not been as, uh, I'll say, consistent on this map, to say the least. But uh, at least can give some information. It's quite useful for the Omen utility. That's exactly what you need from them. Sully had the Blade Storm, but Piggy removes the oddity of it. Two rounds closer. We've now had two rounds in a row for them, four total in mm. this half. Mizzou looking great and feeding yeah. on the side of Houston. Finally, on a map, or at least on a half, more importantly, where you don't really have to flex yourself as much. You're not really spreading yourself as thin, and you can actually play as a collective unit. This is where Mizzou can really start to feel at home. We saw it on Icebox, where the map was much smaller. Breeze was a much bigger map where they had to spread themselves out once more. And that was honestly the biggest thing that was setting them apart. And that wasn't looking too good on an individual level. They look good as a pack, but individually, they're just not at all that efficient. So they have to make sure to kind of stick off each other because these lurks, even though they haven't been going for them, and as so much as I encourage it, they've proven that they really don't need it. That their recipe to success is making sure to push right up the middle, wherever they can, with each other, and they're actually straying away from that exact game plan right now in this round. As you see, a huge default in lines being traced across the entire map, whether it be middle, pushed up right there in A short, or even over towards the area of C along. I like how so many times they said Mizzou needs to be cheeky. They need to be shifty. They need to be strange, change their strategy up. Honestly, they haven't done much changing. Crap look has been pretty stagnant. And honestly, I'm very impressed with the fact that they've been able to recover in such a way, despite things not having been changed that much. They'll send out a nightfall from middle of courtyard. It doesn't really give them the impact they wanted. So start to pivot over to maybe push towards B. I think they'll go through mid window to step over to A instead. Because note, look where their raise is. Ponder has stepped all the way through A and has even gone through Link of Hall to take down Sully for first pick. Problem is, Ponch cannot escape that middle courtyard and will have to stay there for the remainder of this round. Mizzou's quick sprint last round netted them the win. This there time around, it's slow and steady. Showstopper is popped, and though UH Premier will manage to escape from it, they're not out of the dire pit um. just yet. Ponder gets a paint shell in and through the smoke. Finds for their third. When Mizzou needs a hero the most, Ponder will be there for it. There's two remaining for Houston, and I think they've decided to save the sniper at the least. That's exactly what they're going for, as you can tell. Adam saying this has kind of been the biggest thing I could rely on for that entire last map. That's exactly why I was a top frag. Nobody really checked me for it. But even then, when you have a 50-50 chance to run into it, you're probably going to. And even then, whenever you're trying to save it as well, it'll eventually be inevitable. But... I mean, in scenarios like this, we got to talk about what exactly Mizzou's been doing. 
where they have had these lurks. They've had these over-aggressive plays in this spawn, which are actually working out for them. They're stepping over the line. They're finally going ahead and showing a little bit more confidence here in the field as they're bringing this game back as it's now their fifth in a row. But, I mean, as I mentioned, as much as I wanted to switch things up, it was on the defensive side. It was on the attacking side and relativity to the sites and really starting to diversify across the map. That hasn't been a problem here on Haven at all. On the defensive side, they didn't look too hot. But, I mean, they're finally showing that, okay, maybe that same ideology they were trying to incorporate on their defense because it works so well in their attack hasn't really proven to be as successful. But they're not really concerned about that here now. They're you winning these play, five in a row. Play. They're putting thrifties into the hands of UH Premier again and again and again, force them to take their shot. And when you just kind of push up and when you really connect everything, all the dots onto one place, that's all you have to worry about. As you can see right here, right now, they've cleared the entirety of C. They know a player's most likely in garage because nobody's on site. And somebody's be laughing around from CT, probably from B. You gotta check that flank as well. And that's exactly what they already have set up. Two players in the back of site, one kind of extended towards garage and two right there. Almost an exact sandwich with the real substance being that spike there in the middle. And Mizzou is equipped for a very steady hole on this C site. Yeah. They're not playing for the post plant. They're looking to deny you totally. Problem is, UH Mirror, they have skilled gunners. They've now absolutely destroyed all chances you have of sitting on that site. And to make matters worse, they're just pushing. X Relevant doesn't even have to worry about a classic in hand. And where did this Houston go? Where have they been? They find themselves the victory in this round. The defense goes through. And after a very tumultuous five rounds in a row of losses strung back to back, they finally find their first in the second half to reach double digits, kind of increasing the buffer just a little bit further. I mentioned so many times that Ascent's not Houston's map. But the problem they have on Ascent is the total opposite of what they're having here. Mizzou's speed has been the undoing of Houston. Unlike Houston's initial problem of the slow and methodical buildup was their problem of facing off defensively. They seemingly are struggling on both ends. Finally finding some success. Maybe this is the momentum they need. And even then, I mean, you got to consider that what happened in that round. We saw the top player, Conch, for Mizzou Esports. Being honestly the last line of defense, oddly enough, that needs to be your first player there to be in combat to guarantee that kill. Because once you saw that first kill go to the side of UH Premier, they were playing for nothing but trades. Mizzou was fighting to even out the numbers rather than keep that advantage. And that's the problem that we saw in a 3v1 there towards the end in a post plant situation that now, once again, lining up everything towards the back. UH Premier, look at all these ultimates they have. They're not concerned about anything at all. And even with the breach, they can also have the same exact lineups and force off of the site as well as Mizzou does, just to keep them off. Interesting placement here for the there spike. Not in default. Eric's gonna go ahead and snap onto the diffuser. that we cleared out, Conch gets two. But Mizzou, you've gotta defend the spike. You're not doing so. Serial finds four total in the round, and though Adam Solomon does eventually kill him, it's after the round technically ends. And they'll fall quickly. Though Mizzou are the final survivors, they give up the objective of this game. And that squeaks another round in favor of Houston. That cannot happen. That cannot be allowed. If Mizzou ultimately lose this, Dallas, that's the round they're looking back on. That round yep. of the round before where they should have won it when they were so in the favor in terms of eco and what they were bringing. These last two rounds are not the Mizzou we saw just win five in a row. That spike was in a really bad spot. It wasn't even Four. set up for the post plan on C-Long. It was over to the left. And the only person who really had an angle on it was Faith, just kind of sat there in the middle. Kringle, who was also forced out by Iron Aftershock, keep in mind, because that breach was still alive. It's situations like that where you honestly see has been the hit two rounds here in a row. You don't need to go there again. There's a bad omen around that spot of the map. And honestly, UH Premier, every single time they win around there, considering that's been their only two round wins in this half, the more you hit that spot, the more confident they're going to get, quite frankly. Was that a They're dog going on, to feel much better. Was that a dog on Eric? You said a bad omen on C, and that's where Eric is right now. This is a little rude, don't you think, Dan? I know he's. Um, I mean, that's not really what I intended, but, if, you know, I mean, <laughs> take it as you please. I think it comes down to the. It, art is in the eye of the, you know, receiver. And honestly, I think that you're the one that now I call Eric bad. But oh, we'll it. go ahead and talk about that later. Instead, I want to talk about what is bad. It's the situation right here, right now, from the side of Mizzou. They're getting that spike down again. They're able to manage that. And talking about Premier, they have so much to work with. They're pushing onto that side. And they're just funneling straight out with the Tour de Force. They're able to go ahead and get one more. It is a 3v5, and this spike is down. C has been the hit again. Mizzou is only planted in this one spot. And they keep on doing it again every time Premier wins it. I think what you have 
line of sight, but you have to be deep within C lobby to actually get that line of sight. Smokes make things difficult. You have to be really good about that lineup to deny. Piggy is there and Ponder joins them. But Zoo will find themselves around Wint, reaching nine, getting a little bit closer to Houston's score line. A really great half of them so far. They at least make a recovery after the placement failed before. They apparently saw something that they didn't like or they still liked in the round previously that I said, keep going, run it back. Consistency. We have to be uh, steadfast in our approach towards these sites. And the speed of Mizzou is very impressive, Dallas. But there's yeah. hardly even time for us to break down what's happening in these rounds, let alone make corny jokes in between just because of how Mizzou plays, the play style that they love. They brew up something for 10, 15 seconds, and then they send it Hail Mary style, like a football field all the way downfield and just apply pressure and force to try and punish anyone in Houston. And that's going to be the case early with Adam Solomon falling. And honestly, I'm amazed that Sully survived their little indiscretion down a long as well. Oh. Hmm. It was... It was satisfaction and it was closure. That's what they wanted. They said third time's the charm. Honestly, we have to nail this site here and now because not just for the sake of just winning the round, but because of the sake that UH Premier is on 11 now. If we see Premier win a single more round, they're going to be on that match point. So, I mean, honestly, that was a lot for Mizzou to risk. And thankfully now after they finally did that, UH Premier was probably thinking they were hitting that C side again. Even though they didn't really set up for it, as you can see those blue X's kind of scattered everywhere except for C. They had the read it wasn't going to go there, but still, that uncertainty has had a really bad approach for this retake on site where Eric is the only one remaining. So already a lot of util to work with in the meantime, but honestly, you're just going to have to use that to cover up and find as many kills in the meantime. And you're going to find these picks, have these players swinging you one by one, and that's what they did, but with nothing but the sheriff to work with. And the Spectre actually in the back pocket, probably not realized by Eric. You don't go for those shots, you don't win those battles, and you see Mizzou going here now to 10 with four supposed to work with. They're closing the space. This gap has closed. This is an uncomfortable, yep. very unfortunate spot for Houston to be in. Mentally, this has got to be a, a hard situation to be in. Mizzou, look at that first half. They only picked up three rounds. That's not good. Same thing we're seeing right now for Houston, right? But look at the way that they've picked up those three rounds. Breaks, sporadic. Two, then round. Three loss in a round. Two, then a round. And then back and forth. This has been a dominant half for Mizzou. There's been no leeway in favor of Houston. It's not been their game mentally that's got to be so difficult spot out utila chamber they only have one left it's still quite successful you can kind of put down that slow field with it and keep them at bay for a moment but mizzou are too quick for that expedite their plant put it down and now they can situate themselves inside courtyard and maybe towards mid window what is a consistent force for houston well it's typically sending it their chamber in through garage this time around they'll send three players the first one of Corey loses the fight but eric appleson and with it and submit their name but there goes cereal they both fall on insanely fast speeds for one player to do so it's the chamber on chamber doppelganger battle and houston oh. will find themselves the victor of it and secure themselves and match point series point guaranteeing at least they can win this one or go into ot Match. Well, yeah, that's really all you can fight for now. We talked with those four ultimates that was available for Mizzou, and they weren't really utilized to the fullest extent. They didn't find the appropriate pressure, and more importantly, they didn't find the necessary kills to guarantee those main advantages in the very end. So UH Rainier Hal has that same exact kind of opportunity available to them. More importantly, they have it available in the form of AoE crowd control for an entire site in that Rolling Thunder, and that's going to be the biggest thing here. Sure, they don't have the most money in the world. Sure, they're not looking outstanding by any means. But we've seen them take the necessary sacrifices to look good enough to really fight and contend and have enough utility that could actually set them up to have enough of an advantage just to play off of that rather than anything else. I mean, look at that. Sully already with the Blade Storm to work with, and that could really result in something. Adam with that operator already falling to Piggy. So that could be the biggest real dig in the dirt if we do see Mizzou really winning out this round in a dominant fashion. Interesting decision being made by Mizzou, though. Nightfall goes out. They know there's at least two swinging in from long. Problem is they give up at least one kill. They don't initially double swing. Crinkle's forced to go for the refactor due to that slow position. Crispy is able to find down the second player that was on long. That's Koi. It removes a lot of the opposition that was initially on a side. In fact, all of the opposition that was on a side. Because note where Serial is currently lying for Mizzou. He's all the way in defender spawn, Dallas. He's already locked down all through B, worked his way through courtyard, and has essentially 
devastated the chances of Houston being able to retreat over from C or back from B link. There's a big issue to be had. And I think the issue here is that they're just going to save. There's no way Houston are going to win a two yeah. versus four. Smart decision making. Save the sniper in the hands of X relevant. And uh, keep Eric alive for the time being, even if they're not as successful in terms of gunning as their uh, scoreline definitely shows. They can hand that rifle over to a teammate. The kit of the Omen is the most important factor, and Eric has been very good about that kit throughout this game. Yeah, and honestly, this is one of those moments where you're kind of thankful for it. You're just playing things respectfully, and Eric, oh, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> Relevant got one as well, so make we're making things expensive Last at least. But I gotta say, there's Crankle, able to go ahead and close one as well. But you know that the players are on the other side of the map. Relevant, you just go back towards that C side. Leg yourself back in that cubby, don't get too crazy with it. But, I mean, now knowing that, sure, Premier, they say we need to save what we can. We had that leeway. We don't have those problems in money now. We hold on to the operator. And last round, even then, we didn't really have too much to work off of anyway. So that's really good for us to know that we made it somewhat expensive. But more importantly, that we have the money to work with now. Losing streak is kind of going in our favor. This is our last rally. This is our last chance right here, right now, to really make that impact. And no matter what, I think, honestly, your breach needs to sit and spawn for you at Tremere. You cannot lose that resource no matter what. It has to come out right here, right now. And if you lose that, honestly, your approaches, your retake scenarios, your entire capabilities, your catalyst is completely cut from the equation. And you're making your job that much more difficult. And Mizzou's looking for a way to really get that spike down right now as quickly as possible and still vacate the area fast enough where that's not a fact. That's been the problem on C. They get there. They're there. They're fast. They're zooming. They just can't get away. The one time we see Mizzou actually send all five back through C-Long, they win that round in the post plant. Other times they did that where they tried to be, I called it sturdy on site. They wanted to sit there and really be kind of that forefront towering above the opposition. They got thriftied against. And it wasn't just like a simple, oh, 1v1 at the end. It came down to a close scenario. No, they got slaughtered. It was bad. Yep. It was not a round that Mizzou should have lost, let alone in such a way that was so in favor of Houston, considering what they had brought to the table. Mizzou are a team that has been adapting on the fly. They've kind of realized their shortcomings, and that's smart. That's the way you want to play it. And another thing that they've been able to key in on is how or where Houston have been positioning themselves so statically. They always send one player at least through the line, and they like to swing that early. The problem now here Boy, is the fact that they send no. three. They send three through Garage. Piggy takes down one, but Sully's good for two. Dallas and Houston now cemented themselves for a possibility to close it. I mean, you gain something, but you lose something. I mean, it's the trade-offs of life, and you have to really find out whether it's worth it or not. And you got to make it worth it if you UH for me or consider that we see that breach. Koi dying. That rolling thunder. I said that needs to stay alive. Sit and spawn. It's the first player to push up. So, I mean, if that spike goes down, I hope you're going to clear this like SEAL Team 6 because that you only got five players to work with, and one of them's already dead. So that's going to make things very much more difficult. It, but more importantly for Mizzou as well, because, I mean, I'm not really sure where they stand on these ultimates too much, but they can't be very close considering that Showstopper was invested kind of not too long ago. They're having to wrap around the map once again and again. Yeah. Thank you, Spectator, that right there, relevant, also sitting off one for that nightfall. You have to make sure that even then, no matter what happens, everybody's so close. This chokehold is so narrow. You can smell the smoke ah! coming off the barrel for UH yeah. Premier to close out this not only map, but the series more importantly. That's the Houston that everybody has been looking to. Everyone's been waiting. That's the number two team. After their affair on Breeze, people were shocked. People were confused. That's why they're the number two team. Despite the abysmal mental that they were brewing up because of Mizzou's comeback in the second half, they can close out. Eric Appleson isn't just there to occasionally place a smoke and pop a paranoia around the corner. They can close out in a clutch scenario. There's a couple times we won't mention them too often where they miss the first click for the kill. Still clutch for it in the end, but great way to close out. Two for Eric, one to finish off for Sully. Three total for Sully in that round. And what a great way. Storyboarding-wise, all by itself, let alone the way that it actually turned out. Houston surviving the best way we can phrase it a BO3. Yeah, I think that's the best way to word it as well. I mean, neither one of these teams looked just outstanding in, you know, one circumstance or the other. There was constant fights going on. Teams obviously really wanted it. Mizzou wanted to get this shut down early in the season to really put themselves in a new contender. Because if they won this, if they won this entire series, no matter how close it is, they would have hopped up the rankings just in an outstanding fashion. No, even then, just within a top 10 scenario, that would and just when you're in a top 10, regardless, compared to all the schools that's inside this entire league. 
when you're that high up anyways, there's barely any little room for improvement. There's barely any way to hop up. Two or three spots in the top 10 is an astronomical jump rather than just one. And taking down Houston would have been that leap you needed to get yourself to be uh, almost dominant in the force and really show that you're going to be better than a lot of these other teams. But when you see the kind of vulnerabilities we saw today on this squad, more importantly on the mats that they choose, on breeds, that was their biggest weakness to where even then on the map of Icebox where we saw that Houston, it was their selection, and they didn't look strong on that second half necessarily. They still kept it relatively close. They showed they found rounds here and there. That breeze, though, was darn near blowout for the likes of Mizzou when they tried to get themselves on the attacking side to find any relevancy in that half. It just wasn't there. When it came around to Haven, that's where they showed that, honestly, their picks are that much stronger. If they can work on that map more, knowing that a lot more teams will opt to go to Haven just off selections alone rather than leaving it to a deciding map, if they get that lead earlier, they can go ahead and close out games much quicker and not have to worry about that third or really come to swipe them out from underneath. You can see teams in the rankings, even if they win their game, it's not by enough, and maybe they'll still fall. If you're in college football, that was Alabama when Georgia took them for first. I know you're happy about that one of all people here, Dallas, but uh, that can still be the scenario. I expect Houston to maybe drop a little bit lower if they do happen to drop. Mizzou made a great statement, though, for this game. Though Map 2, like you said, just wasn't the performance they were looking for. The ability to stay in the game, the ability to mentally still be thriving and making that comeback from a 9-3 affair, even though it is the curse. It is the curse scoreline. It's expected. It's still hard. It doesn't understate. There's no way to understate or how valuable a team that can recover in that position is. Yeah. That is very important. You need to have that grit. You need to have that tenacity to survive in the collegiate scene for Valorant. And they showed it. Just couldn't close out in the end. Clutched up by the Houston side who was managing to scrape around just a few to finish the job. They could finally pat themselves on the back and go take a much-needed break afterwards. But speaking of that break, we're going to take a break between this game and the next one. Considering me and Dallas are back on the desk for it, this one may be a little longer than it should be, all things considering. But uh, we'll happen to see you guys in a few short moments as we'll actually see two whole new teams come up the chopping block.
Welcome back, everybody, to the NECC. Two more comfortable casters than we were in the first one as we popped a squat no longer standing for the entirety of it, uh, which is odd. I have not actually sat and casted in six months, so it's going to be interesting how this one goes down. We got two new teams, much like I mentioned before. It's the Indiana Hoosiers versus Northwood University, which is across the board ranked number one the top team in Collegiate Valor. We'll see if that is the case. Houston struggled in their matchup against Mizzou. Will the same thing plague the number one team of Northwood? I got to say, man, I'm not quite sure if it will. I mean, Houston Premier, I have a lot of hope in them. I've seen them time and time again, just always trump the competition. Northwood, though, Trump is a little bit of an underestimate. <laughs> they are dominant, and yeah. they are young, too. That's the biggest thing. They are disgusting. They have so much potential as time goes along. I know the director of esports over there. I've seen them not only just compete in Valorant and dominate here, but in Call of Duty, Rocket League, you name it, they have put their name on the map for it, and they need to open up their season in a dominant fashion today to make sure they don't lose that title. They have built a program, is what you're saying, and that's the big thing. Programs win titles and build esport teams in general. Very excited to see that one. All right. But well, before that, we jump into the actual game. We got to know who's actually playing tonight. Let's take a look at those rosters. We've talked about the two teams enough. Northwood first on the board. Tyler Rip Benji, Ali Darkest, and Dip. And like you said, they're young. A freshman in the hands of Rip Benji. You got a senior in the hands of Darkest. But beyond that, sophomores and only one junior. There are young blood on the side of Northwood. And maybe you see Darkest come back on a master's program or something so they can continue to play and have that uh, master's degree going back again. I'm never going back to college, but that's because I was terrible at college <laughs> in the first place. Now let's, let's go ahead and take a look over at the Indian Hoosiers as well. They have an interesting lineup. Druff opted, or sorry, D Ruff opted, Smart oh. Punch, B Smooth, and Polly Gaga is, I think, the way that they want it phrased. They just said G-A-G-A, -A, so I'm assuming Gaga, like Lady Gaga. So Polly Gaga will be the player there. And uh, they do actually have a graduate student on the board, much like we were saying that Northwood could possibly do with Darkest. I got to say, as a graduate student myself, props yeah. to Polly Gaga for wanting to go through the ringer again like that. <laughs> I, I like to take my titles with a little bit of just, you know, retirement, enjoy it, just bathe in it, and watch the competition grow behind you and just enjoy your time and just hitting on the ranked ladder. But still, 5v5 is definitely a different environment, and it definitely opens up a lot more opportunities. It feels a lot more fun, and that's exactly why I'm casting it, not playing it, because I can't exactly get away from it. But all things considered, though, looking at these two squads, we looked at Northwood, they're young. And even then, we talked about it, they had a singer last year, obviously to be switched out now by what we see in Rip Benji, but still, the rest of the squad is still the same. They're there, they have fulfilled those roles before, they have filled those shoes before, and they have climbed up the entire ladder to being what was semi-finalists in last year's playoffs and looking disgusting in the process. Yeah, and we'll see where they have been disgusting in past history and continue to be in most leagues they go to. We'll also have to take a look at where they're going to be disgusting tonight if they're capable of it all over again. Let's look at our map veto. Banned off the get-go was Fracture and Breeze. So you expect maybe some of the newer maps won't be played. No, 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 not the case. Haven's up first. Northwood's pick. But the Indiana Hoosiers have something they want to showcase. They're going to Pearl. Second and interesting, mm. a guarantee. And you know I'm excited just as you are about that one, Dallas. And should the need arise, we're going to Ascent because Icebox and Band were banned next. And Haven, obviously, this can be a nice little transition from one series to the next, considering we just ran into the Haven as the decider of that last map between UH Premier and Mizzou. But, I mean, all things considered, these are going to be two new teams, and it can honestly, depending on what we see, give us either a better read of whether or not we saw Mizzou and UH really play that map to the fullest potential, or whether or not we're going to see a new kind of tempo set from both these squads in this new series and really go ahead and set a tone here and feel much better or look much worse for either better or worse. We will be seeing it and there will have to be a winner. But Pearl, that's the thing that really gets me excited is that this map is guaranteed. It's not a decider. We saw Indiana go in for it very, very early and they want to make sure it was on the board to play. But the more concerning thing is that Northwood, a very dominant team, we know why they banned Fracture. That's the thing though. Pearl being this new map, maybe, maybe, Northwood really feel comfortable on it. And they lift it up there for a reason, just to play some mind games to think that Indiana is going to have themselves an early lead in developing the meta. Development is kind of key at this point as well, Dallas, right? And you're talking about a new program yep. coming up. Northwood having that young blood. They're developing things all across the board for their esports program. And Indiana Hoosh has been along that same way. They've been developing, building things up. And when you're talking about the development, it kind of sets a precedent. Expectations on the line. And 
having these two teams that are ranked quite high, one obviously more than the other, but it's kind of hard to discredit any team facing off against them. A lot of people say anyone in the top 30 of the Collegiate Valorant scene could probably face off against each other and win. I don't necessarily think the top 30 is the case. I think more no. along the lines of the top 15 would be a bit more manageable, but it definitely, depending on the day, depending on the game, depending on the maps, anyone can truly compete at this level, especially when you're talking about the champions division here for the NECC. Agent selections have been locked in. It's not been long since we've seen Haven, Dallas. What are you expecting us to see first and foremost, even though we don't technically have them up anymore? Let's go ahead and take a guessing game. I mean, overall, is going to be kind of tried and true. I did see the Gastro, which is something I'm excited to see, knowing that Astra, honestly, is one of my favorite controls in the game. I feel like there's an oversaturation of Omens and Vipers to know that when Astra does come to play, and even then, more so, it could be getting warmed up for this Pearl pick because that's been the number one controller we've seen on that map. So I think, honestly, it's setting a nice little precipice here. We're going ahead, setting a little standard, and honestly, I think it's going to be upheld for the majority of this series, all things considered. But Haven... This map gets tricky. These players have to make the adaptations necessary, and these teams need to control the pacing as much as possible. Something we saw a little bit lackluster in that last map, but whenever you realize that you have a place in the map that isn't exactly as comfortable as typically used to, you got two more sites to go to instead of just one. So you can't really get locked down ever. There's always going to be some fighting chance. There's always going to be some opportunity to really reignite the rest of your squad's will and grit and get right back into the game. It just comes down to the IGL. So really go ahead and set that standard to get everybody right back to where they need to be. I just point out something that is so rare to see. We get a lot of information from the players and the teams themselves to make sure everything is correct for the casters and talent all yeah. across the board. And Valorant has been a little bit behind in regards to that in terms of what the teams will give out. But I've always found that the higher ranked you are, the more confident the teams are, the more information they give. There's a lot of intel for that last matchup there with Mizzou versus Houston. A lot of interesting facts the players gave about themselves and each other. And it's the same thing here for these two teams. That is such a fun way to do this. And it just shows confidence because they're having fun with it. And they'll start things off if you're an Indiana Hoosiers fan. Revenge's off the board. Dark is quick for the refrag. Now make it two. Classic in hand. And they're starting to find some momentum. Man advantage for Northwood. Even the sky as well for these pistol rounds. An absolutely just disgusting option. Having these heals available, that's something we don't see very much of anymore besides just having that Sage's sky and the potency that Agent alone has in these games. Can have the heals, has the dog to go ahead and track things down, has these seekers for an ultimate to go ahead and let you know what you're dealing with on a round around basis. And Speaking of rounds, the first is already done and dusted. We see Northwood will go ahead, winning it out, get themselves the force to work with this next round. And I'm sure, especially after a dominant force, four players still standing. Sure, pistol rounds. Attack usually has the advantage when forcing themselves onto a site, knowing these numbers of advantage are going to go into the edge of the side that has more bullets to shoot, considering everything doesn't really do too much. But knowing they can capitalize off that and make sure to double down here with a Phantom and full armor, a Vandal and half armor, and a Bulldog, they're pulling out the rifles really early, looking to play the long game with them. It's all about setting the momentum, setting the tone of the rest of this match, let alone here for the first map. So we really need to start to punish the opposition for making any and all mistakes. Revenge starts themselves off strong. The young blood, the side of Northwood. That is a kill with the Marshall rings true for one. They're going to start to swing out. There's that Tasmanian Tiger quickly sprinting its way onto the ace site. These will toss out a bit of utility. Wow, connection with a classic, but there's Benji for two on top of 3k total in the round. And Tyler will finish things off strong. Not a flawless for a round two, but it was pretty darn close and they spent a lot mm. for it though. Yeah, they're, they're not concerned about the flawless. I mean, they lost a Spectre in the meantime, the worst case scenario. No. They hit onto the three rifles, exactly. It's it's. I know it sucks, and really that Spectre would have made such a difference coming these next couple rounds, but honestly, maybe, just maybe, these rifles have much more of an impact, and they them maybe the number one bot gun in the game, something that a lot of teams and a lot of players default to, knowing that's going to be their big reliance and their right-hand man coming to these rounds and these fighting scenarios. But still, slow and say is the name of the game. And Northwood, knowing they only have three rifles compared to the likes of five, now make it four on the side of Northwood. They need to make sure they can find this information early, capitalize on top of that, find these early picks, and make it out safe as well and retort. But we just haven't seen that already. First kill going to the side of Indiana, and they can make sure to capitalize off it as well. And instead, they don't. Opted to go ahead and switch things up once more. Sure, there's no heals available, but... I mean, you're not worried about it when you got way more players alive. Ooh, that starts things off strong, but it doesn't mean that the Indiana Hoosiers are going to be done and dusted just yet. 
Two frags gained for the Northwood. The man disadvantaged, and it goes even further. d rock good for two. They'll Ooh. knock down two players a peg. Ped flanks around the Radiantite crates, and they'll manage to finish off the job on to dip. The Hoosiers will find themselves the first round win. And Northwood, because of their somewhat egregious purchases, you would assume that maybe they'd be rough for the Eco. They're anything but. Rip Benji's got an operator in round four. They have all rifles with armor, and I'm sure they also have the kit. I don't even sure how they managed to scrape all this together. Yeah, but the problem is, considering how much, in, or a better word would be how little they have left over, if they do end up winning this round, the street doesn't go to one side or the other. It completely starts from scratch. They will have nothing to work with, and they're probably going to opt to save the operator, if anything, with that being the most expensive gun out of their arsenal they have right now. So that's going to be a lot of rifles lost in the meantime. This round has to be in dominant fashion. They have to capitalize on what they got. They have to make sure to utilize what they have to the fullest extent and save as many lives as possible in the process. And I think this Rolling Thunder they had to work with, with how many players on, on top of this A site, they're not going to rush it down completely, but they could definitely find a lot of value from it. Value is going to be the main save point to look for, at least for Northwood at this edition. Benji does find themselves the opening blunt. Tasmanian Tiger goes out to gather a little bit of intel, flushing a little bit of Hoosiers back in the FA. Use it of the shrouded step to step below into hell. Darkest will be forced off of their plant position just below heaven. They'll also go ahead and use their rolling thunder here to try and force back the Hoosiers a bit further. They're trapped over towards hallway in length. One player will start to pivot themselves up towards heaven. May have a little bit of assistance as well, but Ted's the player to get the next frag. Dueling off against Tyler has the high ground and will take advantage of it. Darkus is trying to have to get forced down. They'll be removed by Smart Punch. Ted is there and good for one more, but Smart Punch will have to join them on the feed. Just Rip Benji left standing. Shot misses, though. Uh -oh. A rough spot to be in. And the third uh -oh. misses as well as Smart Punch collects for the 3K. And the Hoosiers tie us up. Situations like that where the Hoosiers can go ahead, retaliate, and get themselves an operator in the meantime as well to give over to Bali Gaga. That's a uh, mm, situation to say nonetheless. And I talked about this round kind of switching over to where if you did win it, even if we saw a clutch come out from Benji, things are going to be very rough for him. Because as I mentioned earlier, the operator would have been the only thing to actually carry over to the next round. Because sure, the deaths would have counted up, but that streak would have been reset. The streak actually stays relevant here. It carries on over. We see Indiana able to actually purchase two of their lowest cost players just to have somewhat of a fighting chance in this round and really stack up against the likes of Northwood. So a thirty is definitely could be at hand here because we don't see them being completely not of resources, but they're definitely a little lackluster and have to get scrappy with this. And I think with their approach on the C, if they play this correctly, they can manage at least something if they went ahead and picked off Opti, but that's not the case. That's already two kills on the board. And blind fires. Almost finds a third. Tyler's in a rough spot. Darkest removed by B-Smooth. Tyler's gonna unfortunately meet their maker of Ted once again. A 3K for them in this round. And the Hoosiers will climb up a little bit further. The operator of the hands of Polygaga. Not necessarily been the end all be all for them, but I expect that to change, Dallas. How many times have we seen an operator or a sniper on the Tour de Force come out and absolutely devastate the opposition? It was the problem for Houston in map one. It was the problem for Mizzou on map two. And it was the problem in the second half for both teams on map three. The snipers have almost been a crutch weapon, which is a meme of, across the Valorant community. But it's been super reliant on. And, you know, we did see Rip Benji buy it early you in that first play, few rounds. Play. Round four is when they purchased it. They now have the Tour de Force. So they don't have to spend that extra money. I Got your trail. Well, that money could definitely come in handy later, but can they make use of it right now? It's the biggest question because they're trying to push on the site and smooth it. They would just go ahead and shut down an entire attempt almost single handedly. Dashing off two players, almost looking for a third, but Ollie's going to go ahead and win out that fight. That the blaze form is available, but you don't need to use it. You just know that it's online now and you have something else to work with as well. The Tour de Force already playing towards Garage to get one more. That slowing field can create a threat enough to go ahead and make draw kind of cower a little bit not want to push onto the site so you're going to find some coverage you're going to find these players you're going to find a spike to get down to make sure to really force these players into your hands but that's not been the case yet slow and steady is actually winning the race here and that could really be the detriment of northwood if they don't find a move quickly slow and steady usually wins the race but right now for northwood the okay. battle of trying to even the odds a little bit rip benji good for one smart punch now dead Relegated to having to spectate his teammates, both of them working within Garage. 
like is in hand. They do have the potential to still plant on this site, but note the hesitancy left. we're seeing coming out from Northwood despite their uh, full-on sprint that made initially onto that C site. They seem almost methodically careful. Like you said, d forced away, scared. That's almost like what we're seeing from Northwood, but they do have plenty of time. Indiana Hoosiers are playing slow themselves with the spike going down and the post plant up. It'll be up to the smokes coming through. A cosmic divide popped by the Hoosiers. They want to guarantee they keep that One advantage. Ollie's going to go and sit up on top of Crate. The updraft is there. And because of the slow field, Polly Gaga is doomed to die as Ollie extends for it. Great round by Northwood to tie things out 3 3. I got to say, I like the idea of the cause of divide to come into play there. It's just the angle was a little bit one sided, actually giving Northwood more of an advantage than the side of Indiana, who actually utilized that. So. Still, not too big of a differential. Actually, the game getting tied up off that round alone, so good for Northwood to really get scrappy there, as I mentioned earlier, and create that tie game situation. But as we carry on now, we have to look at resources. We have to look at the longevity of this matchup and what really these first six rounds say for these two squads and what's going to happen for us. Because we're now saying if this thing does go for the perfect 24 across the board, getting ourselves into an overtime. We're a quarter of the way through right now. And we haven't really learned too much, quite honestly. Neither of these teams either. They haven't figured out how each other are working. They're switching up a lot of these presences. No. The one thing we know that Polly Gaga did have an operator and it's now lost it. That's not the right idea. The Hoosiers now struggling to overcome the obstacle that is Northwood on site. Ollie able to find Ted, who has been easily the top fragger for the Hoosiers. The looks of things we're gonna have a post plant situation set up for northwood their sky will go and retreat back over towards short long way to do so two players over towards long ones actually in cubby rip into the operator takes down smart punch another player looking to maybe step over through hall d roughs just trying to buy their time to go at the same time as their teammate but honestly if i'm indiana i would be looking to save and i think that's what they're going for they're sending their breach backwards be smooth they'll go and take a couple steps back they'll have to return fire back as ollie extends past that flash but they still lose their teammate, a D-Ruff, who was trapped within the corner, running through a defensive spawn. Beast moves, praying that Garage will be their safe haven, but they'll be met in turn by Tyler, who loses the engagement despite knowing that they'd be there. Shot spraying through wall, 22 HP, oh. and he gets finished at the last possible second. Dip with the wall bang through two walls to get the job done. All it comes down to, man, just spray down whatever you can in Northwood. Like the pack, they are hunting down players at the very end of the post-round situation. But going forward now, this is where things start to really get a lead. Northwood is looking to feel more and more comfortable as this game goes along. They're starting to really iron out these kinks a little bit. But, I mean, as the game goes along, we mentioned it, man. Northwood finally getting a lead. They're kind of starting to feel themselves and realize that people are starting to catch up. Even in here on Haven, where, I mean, sure. We could talk about the jitters kind of being shaken off here. That's what's going on because this is the curtain call. This is the first week. It's the first matchup a lot of these teams are going to be taking, and you have to be prepared for that. And Northwood, they're showing it so far, but Indiana is as well. A team I haven't seen too much of, but already out of these, what, six, seven rounds now, they're showing they can at least contend, and that's all I got to see. Put up the gloves, right? This is a boxing match. You got to go all the way till you hear that bell and – well, you want to start off your record an undefeated fighter, to say the least, right? Like, you don't want to come into this yeah. one and be like, oh, well, they lost last week against this team, right? You don't want to have that record showing that you fell short when the time was needed the most. And I get it. It's the first day of the season. It's the first game that you're going to do. And to start things off, when the NEC starts the season back up, which we have today, it's the first day in total for the NECC on this season. So not only is it the first game you're having to play, this pressure's on you. You're on broadcast. You're on stream. You didn't get to play this one without the pressure of an audience, without the pressure of the fans cheering you on. Some teams kind of rise up to that occasion. They say, we're used to that attention. We're used to having that one up. And you'd expect that from teams like Houston, who've played for the MSI Radiant Cup, who've done things for CBC, who've done things here for the NECC, have been here, always on broadcast, such a... A, a pillar so to say in the community for this same thing with northwood they've come out of nowhere but now they're just they're up there with the rest of everybody else the indiana hoosiers like you said not much is known in comparison to these other two teams and they've got to like add up to that pressure they've got to feel the weight in a way that's not weighing them down but in a way that lifts them up stand above the competition don't fall short to it yeah, and I think, honestly, if we look at the hits and what we've seen already from the likes of Northwood on this attacking side, they've had themselves a pretty even split. They've hit C at least once. They've hit B, at least had influence there for the first couple rounds. But they haven't actually planted that spike there. It's another one of those kind of 
I don't know. It's one of those uh, like disabilities we see from the B side for a lot of teams. They like to avoid it. They don't really want to work into it too much, even though as big of a weak point as it is, it's not something you have to plan on. Just finding control of it. Northwood has kind of been lacking in that consistency, haven't been pushing at the middle, which, I mean, we see on the higher F well, echelon that a lot of teams don't like to swing out window because they know somebody's probably going to be holding that with an operator or a vandal and knowing that everybody's probably radiant or mortal at least. They're going to know where the crosshair placement lays and how to get that free shot off with the rifles in hand. But at least you're on these pistol rounds and these things where you know you're going to have to get thrifting. You've already made sure your opponent doesn't have those resources to work with. I think it's still worth pushing up there. At least throwing that element, that variable into the equation, even if you're not using it, it's going to end up confusing your opponent more than actually really hindering yourself. It's more of a why not than why not. It's, it's a really kind of perspective thing that could really be manipulated that a lot of teams don't like to use in these collegiate scenes. But honestly, I think these IGLs, the way they're playing up the game right now, the way they're pacing themselves, is going to keep the series close, but neither team really wants that. They want to take that lead, and I think mid-control is going to be the biggest thing they can take with it. I love that you mentioned everyone's ready for these teams to know what to do. The game sense is there. They have the press. We saw Jock Crispy in game yeah. one on Icebox, an amazing swing around of Garage to take instant kill to Sully, and Sully just silenced the entire game on map one, just was not playing well. Looked like Eric Appleson's scoreline there on map three. It just wasn't where they needed to be in comparison to the rest of the team. This is the same case here, and there are teams, you'll see it all the time. Me and Dallas work a lot of other smaller leagues, do a couple of events, and you'll see teams that come back a week after week, and they're winning the total tournament. They're finding these victories, but then they get oh. upset by a nobody team, by a T4, just random pug stack that comes out of nowhere because they're playing in a way that's unexpected. They're playing in a way that just shocks teams. Comes down to that's what it comes down to. If you know they're going to watch that angle... Don't peek the angle. Go a different way. Just weird peek them. Do something strange, and that's the way it's got to be. That's the way you got to win these rounds. And apparently for Northwood, they're sticking with winning it. We had a little bit of a break there to detect errors on our end, and Northwood had now climbed up 6-3. to three. Well, Northwood, good looking like we mentioned earlier. We talked about finally getting the momentum running away with the game. And they say winning two rounds in a row, that'll, that'll definitely probably darn near do it. Just got to keep it going. As they've now guaranteed themselves an even half, and more importantly, as they're sitting in a four and a one situation with that spike down, they're definitely looking at seven. Beast me does five health and is on the complete opposite side of the map, so that's not too big of a concern. So, Northwood, I don't know what they did. Maybe they utilized the middle of the map, as I was mentioning. We're not sure, but whatever the heck it is, <laughs> it is sure as heck creating results. And that's kind of what it comes down to. Be smooth. We ended our last time on a bit of a save towards the end. They didn't ultimately survive. This time around, we can see it again, and they do happen to survive. But North would have not just guaranteed an even half. They've actually gone above. They will be seven at minimum, worst case scenario, entering into that second half where they'll be switched over to the defense. And from what we saw a lot from Northwood on their attacks previously, they like to be aggressive. Kind of like Mizzou was. When Mizzou realized they had a disadvantage when it comes to the arms in their hand, they would sprint to sight. When they had the advantage for momentum, they would sprint to sight. They would take control over the objective quickly. And while their post plants were somewhat lackluster in a couple of those rounds, which ultimately were the deciders for how close that game came down to, their speed was the ultimatum. They said, hey guys, you gotta adapt to our speed or fall short. And that's what Northwood had been doing. And unfortunately, Dip can't collect enough shots to find Ted. Ted takes out the ankles of him and he even gets the wall being finished. Already a little bit of an aggressive start here for an Indiana, more importantly, trying to push him to spawn. And it almost works! And it even dies as we see Polygog close it out with a 3k. A very, very That's rough right. round. Very yeah. sketchy there. Just in this spawn back and forth, back and <laughs> forth. But nonetheless, you find the closure you need for Indiana to say, hey, maybe it was a little bit of a long shot. But hey, it had landed. And that's all we need. Hmm. One shot will get the job done, right? Just hit the shot. What's this? What's the What's the term? Well, Just get good? <laughs> get good, kid. Right now, you've been playing a lot of Modern Warfare recently. You should have heard that plenty of times. I, oh, you have no idea. Console's <laughs> a different breed, man. Um, from being a PC, like, you know, always playing PC and now hopping on console to play it this weekend. Man, they're crazy. Console players are crazy. Crazy in a great way. It's always fun. Hoosiers are needing to act a little crazy. That was their 
you know, expedition to the attacker spawn last round. They just hiked their way forward. Seekers are set out, though, by Northwood. Looking to create a little bit of space over towards Garage. And while they do technically create that space, note that they're not pushing it. They noted that only one Seeker went that direction. The other one tried to turn over through Hall. So they're just going to say, all right, retreat back. Leave one over towards C. And that is going to be their Omen. Because the Omen can still be useful towards A with their utility. Toss the smoke long range. Place it over towards long ramp or up towards heaven. But that's not where any player is currently lying for the Hoosiers. They're going to retreat off A site quick if they can even find a pick. They may just go without finding one. Yeah, and I don't think there's really too much of a problem with that, considering, I mean, that some damage has been done. Intel has been gathered. We see players going ahead and getting comfy in different areas of the map, but comfy uh, is a term that is quickly diminished. As we can see, the Indiana, they grab themselves two kills. Untraded, unexchanged, and uncontested almost, because they're giving up the site because they know how they have so much retake potential already coming out for their favor, that if they just don't swing into Tyler and Ollie like that, they may keep oh. on having that luck, but Holly going for a rush into the face doesn't work out. It's once again right back down to Rip Benji and Apolly Gaga. And you know where that player is. You get the read. You know who the spike is. You can go ahead and switch things up or you can just get aggressive with it. But with only nine seconds on the clock, there is no other alternative solution. You have to plan it right here, right now, and really fight this out. Oh, no. Rip Benji goes for the fight the duel despite having the advantage of being able to place down the spike and positioning in the post plant they aggress thinking they'd catch polygaga off guard but when you've already fed the beast three kills in the round you're only feeding the ego to peek it again i'm not pu i'm not pushing a player that's hot somebody gets three op kills and escape and then two rivals afterwards i'm saying yeah leave them be i'm going the other direction it's like sully on map two last game i'm going the other direction you don't deal with adam solman I'm not pushing them. You got to let the player that's hot stay hot, but at the same time, you got to ice them out. Play cold. Play cheeky. Something that Mizzou needed to do before. But the Hoosiers climb back a little bit further. They're able to tie things up nearly. Just two-round buffer between them, but the second half halftime switch now puts Northwood on the defense. We'll have to see who can ultimately take this pistol round. I mean, already, man, in this pistol round, this going to be a big impact here because obviously Indiana needed to tie up the game. Northwood needed to get themselves a lead, and they're not going to get double digits off of it, per se. But still, getting yourself the nine is it's good. I mean, sure, you want these numbers to play into your favor, and we're going to see numbers kind of go into the favor already of Northwood once more. Ollie's pushing right up into the A site, trying to go more towards short, just getting that pressure on again and again and again. And Darkest thought that they weren't really going to be sniffed out, but that's not going to be the case. Instead, a little bit of a retreat and a lap around onto the B site, running into Benji. You get even more intel. You say, okay, now we know Jet's over towards A, Chamber's on B, and that means the rest must be towards C. No matter what, what's the best option? There isn't one. You're in a 1v4 situation if you're Indiana. You just got to win every single one of these fights if you're Polygaga. I think Darkus has been spotted, so they'll just try to bait a little bit more information away and try to force a shot by Polygaga. Three shots left, but the Headhunter, none of them will be fired as Benji finishes the job quite quickly. And Northwood University will take the pistol round, much like they did in that first half. Here, play it by dip, though, Dallas. When you get pushed by two different players, it's very important that you initially survive. Rip Benji had to rendezvous away, so they did get pushed through by Ted. But even with the Prowler that got pucked out and the early pressure given, Dip is none the wiser to it. Says, all right, it's a new player, new fight, new confrontation. I'll take the first, take the second. Hey, that's Spike. We've got this round in the books. Already looking for a little bit more momentum here, a little bit of a way to get on the board and run away with this, these results in North when you can see they're trying to do that with these rifle buys. But I mean, it worked out in the first half. Found themselves a nice little solid start and a very expensive retaliation resulting from Indiana. But I mean, the way this game is going, it's round number two. You don't have really any weaponry to work with. And one of those rifles is going to be on the other side of the map. So not the biggest hole plan towards the sea site, which honestly you're kind of thankful for because you want that armor to be where the push is coming through. You want that half armor to be more of a result of the retake. Having those damage, those numbers already being done onto these attackers to where you know you can just get a one shot onto anybody who really stands in your way so a little bit of influence a little bit of information to kind of go ahead and bring out towards that a main area make the call to the rest of your squad because you know that with 50 seconds remaining and all this utility being funneled on the site you just have to play it safe stay alive stay kind of a little bit submissive but even then that's not gonna be the case either ollie closing things out finding the correct shots finding the kills and possibly with only one player remaining definitely finding that round too hmm Great round result. Note that a lot of the times we've mentioned this before, see it in view CT, see it in the higher echelons of play. You're looking at the fade and you're looking at the rays now on the map of Haven. 
They're locking down that A-Old Pip. They can send out the Tether and a Paint Shell. They can almost net a kill with it. You do see it happen occasionally, but mostly it's a way to keep that attack at bay for a little bit longer to safely and securely pick up the Ult Orb. Because that's the only one here that's necessarily in good position for the defense. The one on C-Long, you're not pushing for that. Though we did see some aggression come out last game, it's just not the go-to angle. The Hoosiers would deny that every time. It's just not the right idea for Dip to aggress that way. But the same thing can't be said for the long. And the problem right now for Northwood is they don't have that raise and fade combo. They have the jet. They had the rifle advantage at that range and the ability to escape with that tailwind and the ability to smoke themselves off. And though they did get flanked a little bit by a classic, it's only a classic and the rest of the team was there to close out the victory. Northwood looked really good in that last round, but now they're facing a very full, confident, rifled team. They're going to have to try to figure out how Indiana would play this. And from the looks of things, Dallas, it's slow. It's well fleshed out. They're looking to early pressure to garage. They'll bait something in towards B, but I think they're going to rotate back through spot and maybe hit C. I mean, honestly, anything's really open. I mean, you got so many options available, at least in terms of C and B right now, that honestly, I wouldn't even blame them to kind of lap things back around towards A. But the problem is they got the trademark, and honestly, it's almost a little bit of a subconscious thought for a lot of teams, and where that trademark gets placed, they're kind of going to go ahead and lap around to it because they don't want that money to be wasted. They want to make sure to get some kind of impact out of it, even if it's just in the post play. Make sure it has some bit of an impact in that round. Force it to. And speaking of forcing, we're forcing our way right up Sea Long, baby, and we're looking for some blood, and we're finding it. More importantly, out of the side of the Indiana Hoosiers. That up quite nicely. Now, a two man advantage. Ollie is going to fall very quickly. That one was very expectant as Polygogger had that angle on lock. Find the last remaining player in the sky right now for North, but I'm saying, all right, guys, a couple steps back. I'll play for an exit frag at best. I have that Spectre that we joked about them losing in round two of that first half they'll lose it here guaranteed because four players ready to bear down their throat a round collected an expected one though for the indiana hoosiers only one weapon being dropped out of their hands so not the best result for northwood as they're just trying to buy a little bit of an economical damage that's so important but what do you see once again when it comes to round four of a half rip benji with an operator looking to bear down with a very destructive force I mean, already just looking for somewhat more of an impact, looking for these rounds where things really start to pick up. Is these operators that we see a lot of these collegiate teams kind of rely on as a foundation. That you, we mentioned the term op clutch a lot, where it's not really a clutch at this point. It's it's almost a foundation. It's a cornerstone. Because it's what teams rely on to get those first bloods instead of looking those, for those early aggressive picks of the Bandle. So here it comes. Utility left and right and center. Ultimate is coming down, raining down from long, getting onto that site to give yourself some space on C, but it's still not really working all that much. Ollie's able to go ahead and still manage to kill in the meantime when that spike hasn't even gone down yet considering the space that we've seen in the anime. Who's are still set themselves up accordingly. Rendezvoused well as back all the way to see long. Be smooth, they'll try to flash themselves out here, but Red Benji still connects the shot to Smart Punch. Ali has still not been dealt with and will punish them accordingly. Updrafting up on top of the objective. They don't even need to be there. Dip will solo the player, though they do lose a teammate in the process. And Northwood will not only survive this round, taking the victory and bringing themselves up to double digits at 10, they also keep the operator for the next round, a very important piece of their kit, not the crutch, the foundation of their defense as well as their offense, because what Benji's like to bring it to the table. It's going to be a matter of going the other direction. You miss a shot, which Rip Benji has not been keen on doing, now having 16 frags. If they miss, though, Dallas, I'm booking it to the other side. I'm not even using util. I'm just running onto that side because at least I don't have to deal with the operator. No, I mean, I'm definitely with you. A lot of these teams don't really know the right ways to deal with these operators. I mean, they find a lot of problems with it because they say, okay, well, if there's a warning shot and it's missed, Last thing we want to do is over allocate, you know, three pieces of utility just to guarantee that that rendezvous comes into effect and gets off that site. But that's not going to be the case right here, right now. You don't have to worry about it, at least from Indiana, because Gaga's already going to go ahead and be shut down. Not even there towards, uh, I want to say, on site a little bit sooner as well, just kind of playing out. And a little bit of possibly with Opted hey, looking to go and pop this nightfall. I'm curious to know whether or not that's just from the spectator or if there's a player perspective where you could have seen that little bit of a buildup for the utility. But we'll never know because instead the fight rains out. It goes ahead. The bell's been rung and players are already once again back on site. It is a 2v3 with a Rolling Thunder available and nobody checking this corner. Ooh. But, you know, once you go ahead and ram your barrel into their ear, you're saying that doesn't belong there and you pull the trigger. 
Uh, they don't recommend cotton swabs in your ear, and they sure as heck don't recommend uh, gun barrels on your ear either, Dallas. Blinded, can't escape anyways, just praying that you're moving the right direction. Uh, still a round result that ultimately favors Northwood in the end, and they'll recollect that operator and bring it here to this round as well. One round away from match point, two rounds away possibly from sending us into map two on the map of Pearl, which was the Hoosiers pick, so maybe that's why we're seeing this map go so heavily in favor of Northwood as of the current moment, but... It has not been a lot of Northwood uh, giving up much, Dallas. Control, map control, spacing, frags. It has been Northwood really burying a lot of the Hoosiers' chances. And they do find a nice kill to catch off the overexpended dip. And there's no rendezvous allowed for an omen to escape. That's really only one kill and only one rifle, and the rest of them are bringing sheriffs. Yeah, I mean, there's still so much time here left. And, uh, I mean, more importantly for Indiana, if they bring it to life, but... I mean, Northwood, they're getting into a stage where they're kind of finding some closure on this game. They're actually finding these patterns, they're reading in the end on these attacking rounds. Their post plants are what's really starting to fall short. That's the thing they need to really start to hunker down on. And it, it's a very difficult game to play. Knowing that you haven't really checked off enough boxes, you're so concerned about getting on that side that you don't know where the retake is coming through from because you didn't get enough information right off the get go in the round. But still, footsteps being heard, at least towards the same main area. That Indiana's trying to make these adaptations and they're on the B side. So we talk about rifles and pistols and the difference between all these guns. Well, one's oh. fully automatic and get a one shot to the head, resulting in Ollie getting one, two, maybe three, but cut short almost immediately. Now Ted's down to five HP. You can't argue that that was a major impact point for Northwood off the back of one player being quite aggressive. Rebenji over killing Ted by a major margin using the operator to get the job done. Oh, Base Smooth may is. be able to find the refrag back, but Darkest up on the board. They've got two and Northwood University will guarantee they have reached match points. One more round just like that and Northwood will be sending us match on over points. to the pearly gates of Pearl. I always wanted to make that pun, but no teams ever play it. Four out by for the Indiana Hoosiers, though they do have soft armor in the hands of D. Ruff. They should still be very well equipped for this round, at least much better than last one. I mean, even then, looking at this game, Indiana, it's just a rough awakening, man. I mean, they found themselves one round in this entire half, and it's one of those situations where even then we saw it in that last map. Where, I mean, just you see the switch up of the halves, and you're like, man, where did this game go? And you got to start considering that what that mental can do. That well, quite honestly, for Indiana, this game is definitely doable. They can find a way to bounce back, but good God, is it going to be a long road they have to maneuver? And I don't even think they really have the mental to scrap for this. And knowing that two more rat maps could be ahead of them if they end up losing it, regardless. So knowing that already they're finding these necessary picks, they're looking good on this side. They have at least one more in the bag. They need to make sure to at least win this round, though, and make it as close to a flawless as possible. Another goes out. Dip will be caught within it. Still managing to fight Ted before they fall. The problem is none of the rest of your team is able to find an even trade, and Tyler cannot collect their spray to find any heads on the opposing side. The Hoosiers make a really big stamp for this round. The problem is they've already gone so far in the negative they're going to have a huge hill to try to climb back from they'll need to go flawless for the rest of this game because they need the match point scenario that north would have brought themselves up to otherwise great attempt look at the speed that the hoosiers took down long smart punch initially used the boost pack to try to get through the gates out of lobby and unfortunately tagging their head on the floorboards but i almost they feel like that slowness that that created uh, not being as quick to the gates under the site actually worked out for them because it kind of gave Northwood this false positive, this false confidence on site that they could win that one on one, like we had seen them do previously when Rit Benji took down one, then rendezvous, then took down a second to get a three K ultimately in the round. That false confidence cannot be allowed to brew up. And thankfully, Hoosiers are just trying to use that same level of momentum in this round. They open blood, but they take two in the process. They most definitely do, but they get a site to work with. And C has been the one site that we haven't really seen too much relative success out of them, at least in terms of these holds. Sure, they found these miraculous shots over here and there that result in multi-kills, but that's not going to be the case here. Darkus has so many kills just under their belt so far. Already able to push on the site with it. 3K, looking for a little bit more. Knowing that the last two players are going to be off that site right there towards long. You filter every single piece of utility you can. One more player dead in Cubby. Darkus is still alive and welcome to go for the Zays. And that's probably what they're going to be feeding him, honestly. So, and why not end this map with one of our players still outstanding and when you're stunned as well as your opposition there's not much you can do rip benji is sticking this letting darkest go for the shots there and there is. it is the ace for the closure for the entire map starting with the 1-0 start leading with northwood great way to close things out northwood saying guys this is why we're ranked number one proving to everybody that 
deserve to be where they are. The Hoosiers will fall on the map of Haven. What a great way to do it. Top three players for the Northwood side. Ollie with 20 kills. Darkest with 19 and ace in the last round to bring them to that point. And Rip Vinci at 18. Really funny to see that be a 20, 19, and 18 in a row. Same thing cannot be said for Tyler and Dip. They were a little bit lagging behind in comparison, but all of them above the competition in comparison over to Ted, who was the top fragger for the Hoosiers, who did great. Not to understate the yeah. value of Ted. Ted was the opening player so much. Just the round that they, the last round that the Hoosiers won, Ted opened into the site for two kills. They engaged. They were the entry, essentially the duelist. Smart Punch was a little slow to the punch considering that they had missed those two boost packs like I mentioned, but because of that, they were able to refrag Ted when they fell. Otherwise, Hoosiers, they looked like they had a really good uh, total composition on that map. They just lost those gunfights. Smarter plays, smarter positioning, better pizza, Northwood, right? Like, <laughs> you get where I'm going with that house. <laughs> but regard, okay, yeah, we'll leave that there. But I mean, still, I'm I'm kind of with you. I like the way the teams played it out. I liked what I was looking at for both sides. But good God, man, just the one thing that really gets under my skin, whether or not be a team that I've worked with, whether it be a team that I'm on or a team that I'm watching, casting, no matter what, even then, I'm sure these players as well of these representative teams. Just losing on another half, completely losing composure, man. I, you just got to start figuring out what is going on here. And I, I got to say, we didn't really see the timeouts to take and slow yeah. this game down, knowing that they were still fully and readily available there, knowing that we saw Indiana win like two rounds in that entire half. Like, we need to say, what's going on here? You got to take a moment to figure it out. And when you don't do that, Honestly, it just feels like you're just letting the game kind of draw out and say, all right, whatever, let's go to the next one, not worry about this. At least start getting a read on your opponent. Start looking at who's the biggest threats, and the scoreboard won't tell you that alone. You need to start figuring out who's really nailing these op shots. Who's playing this controller row, and are they lurking around the map? You need to be figuring things out. It's almost like when you're in a workplace, because when you come up to play these games, it's almost like another form of work. You're out here to play. You're out here to make sure that none of your time is wasted. And when you're out here just losing rounds again and again and again just because you're doing these gunfights and you're barely losing them, that means there's something you can be doing to make sure that lead goes into your favor. That one little tweak here or there, that can be the one factor that really gives yourself the edge. But when teams aren't looking for it and they're just really doing one hand, just riding up the wave again and again, that wave has you losing right now. You need to find a different flow before you find yourself losing a map. But still, there's plenty more maps to go possibly because we're at least guaranteed Pearl. And being that's coming up next, that is Andy and his selection. So this could be a matchup they were looking forward to. Yeah, I think that there's a good chance the Hoosiers have something that they think Northwood cannot capitalize on. So hopefully they keep things back in. Maybe it's that first map jitters, so to say, there, Dallas, and they'll have a really nice recovery for that second game. But we've seen mentals of teams get chalked timeouts work there's a reason why pro teams will even fake tech pauses saying oh our keyboard got disconnected they need that time they need the time yeah. to talk even if it's just to get a breather to slow down the momentum you gotta take advantage of what you've been given in the necc and riot specifically they give you a timeout button and you have the opportunity to use it so that's my recommendation over to the hoosiers for northwood keep the ball rolling let's see if pearl is your go-to map to finish this one out in a 2-0 start to start off the necc We're right back after a quick little break
Back everybody here to the NECC. We're now moving on to the second map here of the match that we got between Northwood and the Indiana Hoosiers. Map one coming to a quicker closure than expected with Northwood taking themselves the lead and winning it just outright on the defensive side. But nonetheless, there's still a lot more games to go because we're now moving on to Pearl, baby. We're getting a little taste of the underwater city that is that map. And maybe then we can get ourselves a little bit of a taste of a decider map as well if we see Indiana really bring in their map pick and really close things out and tie the series up. You got to bring a lot to Pearl. You got to feel confident to go to yeah. Pearl at this point, right? We mentioned it in the break. We mentioned it before the last game, last series, the full BO3. We mentioned it between game one, game two, a lot. It's mentioned a lot. We're beating yeah. a dead horse at this point. You're only going to see Pearl truly at a competent level in the champions division. And you're expecting it to be teams like Northwood, expecting teams like Hawaii, like Houston to be the teams that pick it up. The Hoosiers are trying to prove something here. They're trying to say, we can ball with the big dogs. We are in the top of the top. There's a reason we're in this champions division alongside these greats. So let's showcase why our prowess were going to Pearl. The problem here is if the Hoosiers don't put the money where the mouth is, it's only going to make things look worse. And that just cannot be the way you start off here for the NECC for game one, week one, on day one of this season. And from the looks of things, the Hoosiers were the first team to lock in. They locked in all five before a single one was picked on the Northwood side, meaning they have a strategy from the get-go. They wanted this. I think sometimes it's as much of a strength and confidence as it is a weakness and uh, just kind of arrogance, I feel. Because no matter what, you got to think about these contingency plans. you got to think about these safety nets. you got to think about these backup. And i got to say, when it comes around to looking at layers and teams' compositions, looking at ways to really create these alternative approaches, Northwood does have a little bit more leniency for that. You can go ahead and look at least at one singular agent, one substitution that's made in that initiator role that gives Northwood a little bit of a lead here, considering that you look at the chamber on both sides, one's able to go ahead and get shut down and be rendered useless for an entire round on the save where a tour de force is available, and one isn't. 
And I got to say, that could be Northwood's triumph. That could be their ace up the sleeve. And even then, with the Astra as well as available, we see the double controller coming out for the Indiana Hoosiers. They're looking to play this thing like Korea, baby, but we got to see whether or not they make the actual same kind of run here. Oh, blinds hmm. do go out. They flash themselves, though. A little unfortunate for Ted <laughs> to start things off. <laughs> it's fine to laugh. These things occur. Ted's going to go and swing all the way back, trying to take over towards Connector. They force back Darkus so far, and they'll even secure the kill, only taking about 26 damage in the process. I hate having to do math. Thankfully, it's quick in the head. Quick math. Dip will try to swing out with the Frenzy. Has a little bit of assistance, though, as D Ruff will find them on the flank. These moves trying to maybe catch the play of Rip Minji, trying to swing out through mid. There goes the right click of Minji, good for one. Second two, does not matter. Shut down instead. As Beast Moves has a little bit of assistance in return by their Astra. It's all about playing smart from this point onwards, but the main advantage for the Hoosiers, can they secure their first Evil Pistol round win here? It's not a good question. Comes down to whether or not we can actually see the Hoosiers get that spike down, which they have. Whether or not their post plant is going to be just as solid, which with the flank coming around from B Smooth, who has barely any health remaining, still has a valiant effort to really make sure the impact is being felt here. So only two stars being left available for Ollie. And honestly, you're going to go for the defuse. You're going to listen to the sound cues. You're going to expect something to come out from this, and you're going to try to hit those shots, but that's not going to be the case. Indiana finally opening up with a pistol, able to get that round lead that they need, and the force more importantly to work off of, knowing that this is their map pick. They need to start on the right foot, and that definitely is a way to do it. Great coordination from B Smooths, who not only be on that long flank, but when it was needed, D Ruff and them were working very well together. A much needed duo, especially in a post plant situation where they need to position themselves accordingly. I get it's a pistol round, but still, that's the right idea. Play like every round is the end all be all. Play like every round is the most important round. And the Hoosiers start off on a strong foot. Now they'll have their bonus. They're going to full, uh, full SMG force. Note then that Northwood will only have these pistols, but they're going to meet them at the floodgates. Flooding through A, May started to push towards Restaurant, but they're going to stop just around that corner. From the looks of things, the Hoosiers liked the initial idea of pushing around that corner. They want to take this old orb. They're quite close to contesting it against the side of Northwood, but Northwood cannot find any successes yet. In fact, they'll even give away that first blood. Ted's the one to find it. D-Ruff joins them on the feed. Ted now finding their second. <laughs> Ali's trapped behind this box. They will only find one kill in the process. And off screen, Polygaga says, I'm here too, guys. I'm involved. I got one on our behind. No need to worry. We're all here together. I gotta say, a, a little weird war of attrition there, just towards the main area, but still, I mean, good enough of a read from Northwood to go ahead and push up, get themselves at least somewhat of a, con a contest just to get on the board. That's what they needed, was to make things a little bit iffy, make Indiana feel a little bit uncomfortable, and honestly, probably setting a little bit of a tone to say, either this could be a force that they're not expecting too much, or honestly, it could be a recipe that we see come out again and again from Northwood. You don't expect these teams to push up all that much, and you're expecting it to be more of an act of desperation, but no! That's going to be a formula here for Northwood. As once again, even with the rifles in hand, they're pushing up, finding damage and resulting in kills. Yeah, good for one has a lot of teammates nearby though. Ted can't collect themselves to take down the sliding the on a dip. Now there's a second one gone. If you're the side of Northwood, you've got such a man advantage now. You can just kind of sit free and play smart. There is the plank coming out here from the Indiana Hoosiers. Smart punch alongside their chamber of choice. They went all the way through arc and stepped onto the A site because of that all of the A main presence has been cut down. Only dip remains in that direction. But a player on either side for the Hoosiers that they pressure down to dip. Rip Benji will be nearby to punish them. Head spotted. You got to click the head there, Benji. Does manage to tag down Polygaga, but they'll survive with 30 HP as of the current moment. And looks like Dip will say, all right, I'll give you the spike for now. But if you truly want this spike, you'll have to be aware. I'll take advantage of it. I'll hear you walk towards it and pick it up, and I'll rotate through arc. Is these little situations, these very left. sticky scenarios where you're saying, okay, where do we go? What plays do we make? What do I know? What do I don't know? And honestly, how many teammates are talking my ear right now? Because if you could all shut up, that'd be great. I'm in a <laughs> 1v1 scenario, and I got to clutch this thing up. But regardless, maybe that could help out sometimes. Maybe it doesn't. But regardless, I think Ten Dip is making the right left. move. Has already maneuvered over towards his A site, safe and sound. And just holding out these angles. And at this point in time, Ali Gaga right. is just absolutely paranoid back in spawn. Has no time whatsoever, resulting in a round win for the side of Northwood. And sure, it wasn't in a fabulous manner where they 
just outright kill everybody, but still, nonetheless, they get themselves on the board and they show that, okay, eventually we will have some momentum. We will have the better read on this team, but right now we just have to really scrap together our team to get something on the board. Interesting decision by the Hoosiers to not only save the rifle, but not actually go for the 1v1 post plan. Not the wrong idea, so to say. If Dip was actually still hanging out within that midsection, then maybe you would have been able to see Bogarder be able to find that kill, but it's not a bad idea to save that. And sure, at least at minimum, you're going to have that rifle because if you lose in the post play, you're not gaining much farther. You get a little bit of extra credit. You'd rather have that $2,900 weapon instead. Dip hiding within art. is a little bit stunned because of that. Is quite wary of their spot. The smoke, the nebula in play divides away. Smart punch from being able to be shot, but the tether is down and front much cannot necessarily run away as of the current moment. We noted that both sides like to be all across the board so far. Northwood with the flank over through a main, through the restaurant. Same thing with the Hoosiers coming up through Art. It's because the map is so large, Dallas, that either side can truly be all across the board at one time. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of situations here where you can really get aggressive for no reason on this defense, and uh, it feels warranted. Even though maybe for no reason, it still finds results. It still looks good, and your teammates are still giving you that reinforcement to say, hey, do it again. Why not? It just comes down to whether or not you're actually prepared for this attacking side. But in these mid doors, with that art, Hessian, that real, real chokehold, this spot alone is where you will find the majority of kills anywhere on these approaches to A side. More than just the actual main left. area. But if you have anybody pushed up into A main, that could also be a nice little pincer play to come out from the side of Northwood. But that's not the case. Instead, Everybody's just kind of putting themselves back, saying we're playing for the retake. We want to get aggressive with it whenever it comes out. We need to ring this bell, and everything needs to be on the same page at that point. Both with three players stacked over towards Secret. None of them. Far now just Rip Benji looking to Flowers. Looks like they'll try to step over, make sure they clear out Dugout as the current moment, but the rest of the majority of players of the Hoosiers have actually reached back towards a main with only one kind of stepping up and lingering over towards Art. Ollie starts things off on the right foot for Northwood, but past that, that's it. The Hoosiers red in the feed, smart punch, and Ali Gaga only need the two to finish the job. A dominant round by the Hoosiers. We're starting to see a little bit more and more about why they picked up this map. Their attack has been quite solid. Only Northwood winning out on that third round, purely due to time and forcing the Hoosiers to think twice about going for the post plan. I gotta say, I mean, Northwood, I think the way they're shooting, I mean, their shots are true. They're looking good for at least three of their players right now, but... I mean, the way they're playing the game, I think they're just kind of over-investing on site specifically. Pearl is such a lurk-heavy map, you can be ready for anything. I mean, this is one of those maps where you're honestly benefited to spread yourself in just to figure stuff out. But there it is, a little bit of an exchange right there in the area of B, man. You know that player's down, you know that you can put yourself on the site, but I mean, honestly, it's just going to be a full retake. That's what Northwood's playing for. They know on these kind of budget rounds, things aren't going to look good for them. They can find whatever kills they need in the meantime, which has only been one. But regardless, don't overinvest here. Don't use too much utility. Just kind of push up as aggressively as you can. Make sure you have some cheap utility or free better yet to work off of to at least alleviate that attention for a split second, whether it be the most impactful thing in the world or whether, you know, you just feel that much better knowing you have some security. Like Watch 10, trying to keep the insurance policy up to date. Tyler's going to try to pick up a rifle quickly. They managed to do so and even find themselves a kill. Now they're going to have to be quite wary of the fast lane popped up there, there by Smart Last Punch. Both player players hiding down. behind tower. It's not going to matter too much, though. B-Smooth on site, able to take down the lone player of Ollie, and Smart Punch swings for both kills to finish off the job. We noted that Smart Punch was a little slow to the punch when it came down to the last map on Haven. A little slow to get towards sight. Had to really rely on Ted to be that injury player, even though they were playing the initiator of Fade. This time around, there has been no silencing Smart Punch. They are 8-1. They are dominating at every level of this playing field, and it's been very hard for Northwood to find an answer. Yeah, and even then, I mean, Northwood, they finally have something to stack up with. They have themselves four ultimates, and this could be the real point where they start turning things up. And I think, honestly, that sort of force it does come into effect, so that's big for them. But look, and the retaliation coming in almost immediately. The nightfall is the most important thing. This decay could be the play they make. They just have to make sure to push in on the site and find these necessary shots to really go ahead and find the kills. There it is. Flawless so far. Three players shut down. Northwood creating an absolute stall this approach on the A side, making Indiana second guess themselves. Stall is just the best way to appropriate what we've seen from Northwood. How much was stacked on that A side? How quickly they're able to rotate through Link, 
through flowers back through defender spawn northwood state very early in this round saying hey you want to push the ace site you're gonna have to get through rip benji you're gonna have to get through the astra you're gonna have to get through all of this utility and you cannot get, get the attack. job done now they've started to rotate back one player went through mid one player goes through the attacker spawn and they managed to put themselves onto site dip does find one target but e rough has not been dealt with just yet insecure in their position they're only able to find one finally able to net themselves a second as the vortex pulls them in dip will swing back out with a quick slide to kill finishing the thing that Northwood started essentially still with three players remaining a flawless round start but not a flawless round in but still keeping the game close as possible I mean when you have that much to work and that much to invest on that early in the game knowing that sure things have not been looking good so far you're starting to say okay they're not looking invincible it's not impossible to find rounds for them and even then they invested all to their own in that round so honestly they are really that much better. They should have just won that round outright. Their approach, their push should have won. Smart punch should have looked outstanding, knowing that that's their top fragger. The crosshair placement, the shot should be really sharp right now, but they just weren't. So you have to make sure to work off that fact. You have to make sure to use these audibles. You have to make sure to use this map to your favor. And when you see the double star stacked up towards A side, the little bit of lack of control now towards R, does that actually been given up? The lap around could play into the favor of Indiana, but instead you have Benji holding with an operator right here towards the middle saying, please, somebody push out. Give me literally anything because we got hit allocated towards that B main area to let us know if something goes south over there. Think about how limited the Hoosiers agent selection is for getting through these mid doors. They don't have a race to be able to bring out the boom bot to quickly send it. They don't have a fade to have the prowler be sent. They don't have a great piece of utility bar the Tasmanian tiger, the guiding lights of their sky. Anything else would have been just as strong, honestly, better in a lot of ways. And it's going to be very interesting how the Hoosiers try to act. They're just going to completely Toxins avoid mid out. because of that, and they'll start to all work over towards restaurant. All five, might I add. One of the first times we've seen the Hoosiers send their full frontal team into the action. They're going to quickly cascade onto the site. Cosmic Divide has popped as well. Ollie's sitting the opposite side. They're managed to spray down one. The Polygog and Spot Punch get the upper hand onto two. Frags back, not really succeeding just yet for Northwood. The Vipers pit keeping them at bay. Darkest will do their best to try to swing forward, but they'll have to take a couple steps back to try to avoid the majority of that decay ticking down against their armor and HP pool. Be smooth, lying up on top of staircase. Dips to find they've already taken down D-Rub. Sliding forward, B smooth still sees them, not exactly sneaking away from that position. Darkest down to one HP because of the decay has to take a step back. Rip Benji into the Vipers pit, deep for two, and it's just B smooth left standing on the staircase oh! he's fine but he still finds both as beast smooth collects for the 3k right there that's honestly a little bit of a gravestone starting to stick out the ground for likes of northwood knowing that they found themselves around where they had the advantage they could have played off of it they could have manipulated themselves around the map and went for a little bit of a different alternative avenue but they played it together they wanted to play it safe but sometimes when a viper's split is in play safe it doesn't always mean correct you need to go for something crazy and that just did not work for their favor. A double swing to come out. A lineup, more importantly, and we see Indiana lining up their fifth round in a row, or not in a row, excuse me, but better yet, just kind of lining them together in this half to make sure that they are only one off and even half, and two off get themselves a guaranteed advantage. So we talked about it earlier. This map, it looks like it's favoring Indiana. They chose it for a reason. They're looking better and better as time goes on. Northwood needed to adapt quickly. Northwood sacrifice their Astra instantly over towards Main on A. And because of that, they'll lose a second as they try to swing back through Club. That's one more off the board again for Northwood. The story unraveling further and further. Polygaga has now found three and D-Ruff finishes the job. Lawless market a check mark for the Indiana Hoosiers as they will once again collect. That is their second in a row. Six total. They've guaranteed an even position. And honestly, with the way that they have been playing it here, Dallas, I would not be shocked to see them continue this reign of dominance. We'll have a tech pause coming through. This will not be purely for them saying, hey, we need a timeout. They already have a timeout available. Why wouldn't they just use that? They definitely have a problem. I know I joked about that before between the break of match one here or game map one and map two here. But uh, definitely the case. Probably a keyboard or a mouse problem. And I think, honestly, yeah, you mentioned it. Even then, as much of a joke as it may have been, it, it does have some warmth behind it. We do see players having problems and taking advantage of this time. They can't talk to their coaches during these pauses, Yeah, but they can talk amongst each other. And honestly, an IGL is honestly just as good. When an IGL doesn't have to worry about playing and worry about all the stress of what's going on on the field, you're able to go ahead and kind of really take in the environment, figure out what's going on. And honestly, when you're working from behind, 
these situations are honestly much better. You have a lot more information to come in. It's kind of like looking at the top, reaching the ceiling, and seeing that it's so much more difficult. It's a thousand times more difficult to go ahead and clear that 1% that you're missing to become absolutely flawless as it is to where you have to put in a, barely any effort to go ahead and clear about 60% more to the ceiling from considering how far down you are. I mean, it's just how much there is to work with and how much you can really take in during these times. And i got to say, Indiana probably haven't figured out much. They're pushing on the site. They haven't really figured out a default too much. They are seeing players going to switch up. They're seeing that they're filling themselves out. But when they have so much already that even then, contingency plan, contingency plan, they have safety nets on safety nets. Look at the money in the board for themselves. They have no concern for that whatsoever. Northwood, they're the ones having to figure this out. I'm assuming it's probably with Ollie, being there's no buy from that player specifically. That's probably where the tech pause is coming from. But you got to think about what Northwood can do here. I mentioned it earlier. They got to spread themselves a little bit thin. They have to just say, you know what? We cannot play this game and just spread ourselves out and go for aggressive early picks. It works, but we really have to stray away from that. I think they need to play purely for retake. Gather information, figure out what's going on, place these trademarks a little more aggressively and let their players and their eyes and their guns do most of the talking for themselves and let all this utility be available for the post-plant situation. That's why you have an Astra who can excel in that, who can pick up these stars for whatever need be. You can say, okay, I'm going to decide that maybe this isn't the best idea right now. I don't need to use this pool. I don't need to use this well. I don't need to use this Nova just to stall for something that I know is inevitable. Because Indiana Hoosiers push right now is looking inevitable. They need to make sure to take a much more cautious approach, play for the retake, because both of these teams look to have a very aggressive composition. And I think, honestly, Northwood, with that KO, it plays in their favor much more when they have that double initiate. Take things back a pace here, Dallas. Ever played that Chrome no internet connection game where a little dinosaur having to, to jump over all the trees or cacti right i lived in south georgia for 20 years of my life yes right. i became a professional at that game yeah all right so you can think of every little cactus across the board as essentially another piece of utility that northward are attempting to put on the board round six they dumped all of their utility and they really stalled the push of the indiana hoosiers but ultimately led for them to win that round since then, the Hoosiers have completely circumnavigated or just flat out ignored all of the utility. They got cheat codes for the Google Chrome game. They're just sprinting through the cacti. That's the difference that Hoosiers have made on this map. Everything that North would want to put together has been falling short because it's mostly been ignored. You can definitely tell the difference between these two teams purely about who understands this map at its base finest level northwood university struggling i mean you even have a player in the bottom of your yeah. roster still who hasn't even found a kill through eight rounds that is something that just cannot be allowed they got to be a little bit more comfortable maybe the second half playing attack will be where the difference maker is as this game does tend to be at least this map just tend to be lopsided one direction over the other darkest forced back sends out the fragment can't pull out the gun in time still managed to find one but does get removed by polygaga and having to deal with the neon sliding into their face polygaga Indeed, good for two more. Yeah, and that's going to be a good start here already for the likes of Indiana, considering that they're just doubling down on what they had already. Northwood didn't really take too much of an advantage of the time, but even then doesn't really have too much resources to work with, considering that now two of their players are dead. And it's a KO in the faith. Two initiators, I mentioned. The two triumphs who are going to be your big players. You were going to be your aces, almost, just to get yourself onto his side again. Otherwise, you're just purely relying on dip, clearing every single corner and saying, all right, well, I checked the right spot at the right time and nailed the shot when necessary. That's too much to ask for. That is literally you saying, okay, everything works out perfectly, which is not the case 90% of the time. You need to have these lineups. You need to have these players working together. And with all these smokes being popped on the field, Rip Benji may find the shots, but just can't do it instead. Almost dead is rough, but the spike goes down. That's the most important thing because you're still looking at the 4v2. Standing. Shots ring out oh. again. B smooth buries dip. It's just Ollie left standing at this point. Dallas and for Northwood, this all of your chances falling through your fingertips to try to wide swing over to Polly Gaga. But man, Polly Gaga has been eating up on this map. Smart Punch has been doing the same thing. I mentioned it before. A little bit silent, a little bit, you know, uh, introverted, so to say, on that first map of Haven. Since then, 
Looking like the party animal. Swing in every corner. I, they are aggressive. What a tandem duo. You saw them swing early to mid-connector. Though they did lose one player in the initial peek out. Ted fell to darkest. Two players immediately afterwards. You're not going to win that fight unless you line up. And the only team that's been doing that has been Northwood. And we saw that become a problem early for them in round two. Yeah. I mean, I got to say, for Northwood, man, it's just rough. It's, these situations like this are really rough. You feel like you're left rendered useless. You're not really sure what adaptations to make. You've been trying this entire game. And, I mean, I think, honestly, you talked about it. The timeouts are still readily available. you got three rounds left in this half, and 7-5 isn't bad. You're hitting some of your shots. A lot of your players are still here in this game mentally, but you're just not given that time to get these breathers. The one point you have was a tech pause. And probably if you're in a facility, the rest of your teammates are trying to help you figure out what's going on rather than actually discussing the game. You need to get your head inside of the current moment. Figure out what's going on. And Northwood just has not taken that moment. But they still have somewhat of one right here, right now. Toxins Considering all the silence, the tumbleweeds are kind of blowing across. There has to be somewhat of a call. Optic International pick will be the ring of the bell to say, get on the site. This is going to be a free take because Smart Punch is moving right through to art. Just finding more and more success until Flank finally comes through to provide some light at the end of the tunnel. Argus is the only light ironically enough at the end of the tunnel for northwood university opening remaining. things up two kills now make it three quick use of the vandal four oh for darkest God. saving the day for the side at northwood university the hoosiers finally stopped after a three round spree but the damage statistically has still been done you gotta do more than just have a hero play for the side of northwood university but what a good one for the player of darkest you're thankful the darkest is the player to actually close it out. I mean, consider it was Rip Dip or Rip Benji, players that have already had themselves a taste of blood through this entire game. Darkest, Ollie, and Tyler have barely been awake in this game, or at least in this more specific than that. They've had zero kills for like what? It was like the first four to five rounds of this half where they were locked out, where they felt like their guns were jamming in a game where that's not even possible. They felt like their bullets were just peas. They just feel like they couldn't really do anything. But finally, once everybody's starting to get a feel of this, this could be a wake-up moment, and they can actually start feeling themselves. Because finally, a one-for-one -one trade initially right off the board. You see both teams lose their duelist to some extent, of some initiating factor, more importantly, which would be a better term for it. And in the end, are actually in a negative now. Four to three is the case. North would have three ultimates to work with, and they still got two more rounds to use these. They don't need to force it out right now. They can wait for the last. Punch looking to swing around. They do have the idea that Tyler was lying in wait. Punch still gets the upper hand. And on top of that, there was a second player in Art Dallas. They could have found the kill. Darkest was there. But the speed of the neon, the ability to slide out of danger, reads something for Northwood out of nothing. Ollie cutting down the attempt of Indiana Hoosiers to step back over through a main. But Smart Punch is too fast on the draw. Headshot kill. Fragment over the top. Does not necessarily land on that spike. Will still be allowed to be collected. But Darkest. Darkest, when you need them the most, they still can clutch up big. Find the last player, last Smart Punch denied of any switch. possibility of a 4K, nor the ace that would have been required to win that one out. But this is still the last round before the half. Northwood University will at least escape this half, netting four, which statistically speaking is more than I expected from them considering how well Indiana Hoosiers have been doing. Yeah, I mean, still three ultimates to work with, two of them being AOEs, one of them being a suppressive, one of them being intel giving, and one of them also having that cause of divide as well as a lockdown. You see that Indiana has a lot to work with as well, but they're very in the moment. They're very aggressive. They're very attack-based, which, sure, it's the side they're on, but you're waiting for the retake to come through. These Seekers have already been popped immediately. The Tour de Force is there, but so is the Overdrive now. You just have to wait a lot of this out, quite frankly, but that's not even the case. You can also take it face first and still find yourself a relative success. These other two ultimates have been popped as well in retaliation, shutting down a lot of the potential Indiana had. So Northwood, they're finally adapting. They're finally getting a sense of the game. They're starting to feel like they have somewhat of a fighting chance in this map. And I think, honestly, that's the biggest threat so far because this on the defensive side, they look like they were asleep for the longest time, but a 7-5 half would show literally none of that matters. Let's keep in mind as well, Northwood is an extremely young roster, but even more so the case, the end of Hoosiers are also an extremely young roster. So mental deficits can plague a roster as young and I guess almost would say inexperienced, though obviously the experience has been quite evident for these teams. Experience in this type of setting for the collegiate scene. The Northwood is at least 
well versed in regards to how well they play. Darkest swings out for the Cosmic Divide, a little bit of assistance there, but they will easily clean off the last few players. And Northrop University side. will go five and seven at halftime with the Hoosiers technically having the lead, them being the seven. We mentioned so many times that freshness, that young blood. Mentally, the Houston Premier, who was struggling in the second half, that last game on Haven, their ability to just barely squeak a couple rounds. We said surviving against Mizzou was the best that we could call it. Looking like Northwood are trying to do more than survive, but we're going to have to see how this second half starts because Pearl, nothing's proven on this map. Nothing can be guaranteed. Just yep. as quickly as you start to find success can turn back the other way three in a row, much like Northwood ended that. And I gotta say, even then, just from a mental perspective, attacking side is a lot better for a lot of teams than it is on the defense. You want to stretch your legs. You want to start filling out the map. You want to move around a little bit. You want to have the option to actually have decisions. Defense, you feel trapped. You feel locked into one spot. You can't really move anywhere until you know a rotation is coming through. Your legs are glued to the floor. But on this attacking side, you can move wherever you want to. And this now where Northwood has to turn in their gears up to 11. They have to turn that dial up, and they already find the first pick as well, opting to double down. And there it is. A little bit of a retaliation, but still 2v2 as numbers have now evened up. But a lot of damage has been done in the meantime. And Indiana, they had definitely have more of a help for the work with you. And G around the corner, Ted playing around Central Pillar over towards B Long. That ramp so egregious to try to fight back against Ted's got a reload and can't get it out in time. Finally gets it up and running. And the Hoosiers managed to find themselves the victor of the first round of the second half. The pistol going in their favor again. Which is interesting to note that. Northwood took every single pistol round on the first map of Haven. Their map pick. And the same thing now can be said for the Hoosiers. Statistically, is it going down to the battle of who picked the map they get the pistol? Because it's looking like it. I mean, that could be the case. I feel like pistols are still a very kind of throw-up situation. Not only throwing up because watching them is like just seeing teams lose their minds for a little bit, <laughs> but also just kind of a toss-up. Like, just throw its coin up in the air, and it's almost feels like a 50-50 because... It never really feels like too much strategy. It almost, a lot of teams like to go ahead and especially in the collegiate scene, just kind of run it down to a site and say, ah, oh, just a better shooter wins. That's not usually the case. A lot of teams we've seen actually opt to go for these full classic rounds, rotating around the map. And if they end up winning it, they can go for the full rifle buy for every single player for the second, considering they have the right free utility to work with, the regenerating one. So we got to look at this attacking side once more, what it's going to try to accomplish right now, whether it's going to bait out any utility towards these different areas of the map. And honestly, we're going to see a guiding light come through and a player go ahead and be snipped in the meantime, which can be Tyler, but oh. opted smart punch, pushing into art, able to manage to get two kills, but not really turning away on skate. Go, go, go. Head alongside them. We've I mentioned it so many times that Ted had to be the forebearer of bad news on the side of Indiana Hoosiers on that first map because smart punch was a little slow to the get go. They've, Change up the strategy. If you give Smart Punch the Neon, they go fast and they're not slowing down. Difference is everything. But right now for Northwood University, they're just trying to get that spike down. They're trying to go over towards the old default position. Not the smartest place. You cannot defend it towards long. But at this point, you're just trying to get spiked down in general. Four players against two. They even have a sky to use that regrowth. And it's such an annoying thing to face off against. Benji able to get a nice click on a Ted, though. They were down to three HP. Nothing more they can do. Marshall Scott rings out. Doesn't go for it. But they do get the spike down. Credits and plenty. Spread that out across the board. Pick up those pennies as you now head into the next round. Yeah, big plays here for Indiana once again to double down here, get themselves the ninth round and be that much closer to the double digits. And honestly, that's what they're looking for. Knowing that Pearl has been going their way again and again, they've looked good. And I think it was more of a deficit of the fact that Northwood seemed like they don't have their full roster really participating in this map so far. But they finally get their chance to really kind of pitch in, see whether or not they're actually going to wake up because rifle rounds are completely different compared to pistols and forces afterwards. And honestly, this could be their opportunity. And this is the approach I want to see. I want to see exactly how they split up this round specifically because it looks like they're going for a mid push, but is it going to be a split? Are they going to be feeling out the map and then go ahead and wrapping back around? And how are these results of the fights of the kills really going to go ahead and twist that up in their approach and really alter the way they're going to push through the map and find different places? But already, placement not looking too good for like to Tyler, but thankfully, Ollie is there in a way able to make a very quick return, saying, honestly, it could be an extremely good hit now, considering the two bloods that were lost in that area. Or if they can read this push and this rotation, A is completely open. Oh, great job by Northwood. The initial spray through that screen to try and take down Polygaga doesn't work. A little bit of tank damage there. They'll extend further around that corner and actually manage to remove the player. Rip Benji gets the frag before they can actually run if you back over towards back of the... 
Dip's able to find one more, and their doppelganger, a smart punch, falls to the hands of Darkest, giving the Northwood University side a bit of a breather round to catch things back up. Three, third, took a third round to get the job done. It's the expected round result for Northwood, but still a positive one to see. Maybe we'll see some differences here as they'll continue their attack, but let's note Dallas, Indiana Hoosiers will be getting rifles into this round as the ego will be in their favor. Yeah, and this was kind of the expected. This is where we start to see the game start to iron out a little bit, and it's still 6-9. This is not a huge game that's spread apart from itself. That looks impossible by any means necessary. This is, game is definitely doable. You just got to play a little bit smart. You got to find these plays around the map. You got to find these initial picks and dip opening up, especially in this. I got to say 7-9 looks pretty darn doable, especially now. They're doing their best. Ubisoft trailer impersonation, the smooth walking four. They felt confident. They had a lot of teammates there. That's the right idea. You know when they their trailers, they like walk really slowly and they like slowly pan their camera. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The difference between that's because well, they I had teammates you were talking, to like, watch trailer, their like, back. Trailer park. No, no. I was like, no, well, like all their game anything? trailers that never end up looking like they actually do when they release. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. But I'll tell you what, Northwood looking good so far in the round. Unfortunately, they did manage to take a look at damage in the process of the spike is down. Note, it's actually planted center of this open field, which is quite different than what a lot of teams will opt to do. They've also going ahead and sticking it. I think they're just going to try and hold on to it for the moment. They'll get it done! No way B-Smooth gets it at the tiniest bit before they fall straight to the fragment. And that will be a round guaranteeing double digits for the Hoosiers. In situations like that, where honestly you got to realize what you're working with and pop it that much sooner. I mean, honestly, once you hear that tap, you got to throw that nade in there immediately. You have to make sure it's covered. You have to make sure there's some kind of a backup because those shots, once you already lost that first player, it just makes things very difficult. You got to play it off of each other. And honestly, kind of do it as safe as possible. But still, 6-10, you mentioned the double digits. You Game is play. still within Let's four play. rounds. It's not a 9-3 situation gone on to 10. There's still some rounds that have been put onto the board, nor importantly by Northwood in the earlier half, making sure this game looks doable. But we see the overdrive come into effect as well. Also, once again, managing that first kill. We need to see this pressure into spawn out of Northwood instead of just playing for post plant because that has not worked out in their favor so far. As you can tell, they're pushing forward in some more. They're getting the necessary damage, and they're now making it a 5v2. This is the biggest number of damage we've seen in them so far. Our punch, though, claps back to kill. That makes it now a 3v2. Same problem that Hoosiers came back to this last round. They'll try to swing back the other direction. The doppelganger of Dip gets the upper hand, though. And then it's just B-Smooth left standing, and they're all the way back towards Karaoke. This is not the right idea. They'll have to step through mid, try to work through that central hall. You got to keep in mind, this was a round where the Hoosiers are bringing too much to the table all around, but Northwood would still come out on top. Dip finishes that one off. The aggressiveness. You got to push. The same thing the Hoosiers did on the attack. I would be looking at this if I'm Northwood and saying, you know what? Let's be honest, guys. The Hoosiers know this map. They at least understand it to a degree yeah. higher than us. That may be incorrect, us casting from the outside looking in. It may look that way and not be the case, but the Hoosiers, at least in my opinion, understand this map a little bit better. And they used speed. They quickly took control over through AMA, and they would sweep into a site and just put the defense on the back burners. That's what North would need to do on the attack, and Dip's been doing it every round. The problem is they don't follow up past that point. Well... This game is looking still pretty doable. Northwood finally finding some relative success, at least on that B side. Almost a repeat of what we saw from the zoo on Haven in that last series. Say hit B again and again until it works because it looks pretty darn close. We haven't found those results yet. And honestly, Dip, I, I want to scream for you and give you that height, but that was the most insane spray I've ever seen where that RNG is RNU. Random number, universally, just playing for your favor. You that, that's a very weird acronym, and don't talk about it and break it down. Just go with it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long night. We're here. We're trying to keep this one together. I won't break that one down. We'll, we'll, we'll just gloss over I, it. I know where you live. I We will fight if you want to talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, drive all the way back. You're the one who left quite no, far. No, I'm fine. So. You got, uh, <laughs> I, I can't drive to Louisiana anymore. We're not going to talk about that either. Oh, my goodness. Uh, all right, full 5v5. Next round starts underway. Northwood with a very...
big finish the last round of that speed and tempo. They're trying to take a page of Hoosiers, like we mentioned before. Vipers been placed preemptively by the side of the Hoosiers, and because of that, these moves should have been well equipped for the spot, but he gets cut down by Dip. Tyler and crew all together spray through the astral smoke, and they find another target. A big frag to their name. Ted is still up on the board, a big player to fear on the Hoosiers roster, but past that, you've already removed out the most impressive thorn for their side. It's all about just playing smart and using this objective to your favor, especially when you now have a cosmic divide up and running. Well, a little bit slow, a little bit fast, but and then a little bit bloody. That's what it comes down to. It's a 1v3 situation. Benji looking for the Ooh. kills. I can find two, making this almost impossible, but almost making it look doable. The stick is going down, Benji. It's a half right now. Nobody's pushed oh! it, but you end up clutching it. Northwood University making sure this game stays tight, stays close and within a round. You're sticking in a 9-10 lineup. I'm very... I, I, I'm not glossing over this. That was such a absolute snooze fest by Northwood once they got on site. Impressive entry. You take down Smart Punch. You screw over the player trying to retreat out of art and get like, to at least the team. You're saying, hey, I'm not allowing this whatsoever. Great play by Northwood. After that, you're just... You let them use your own cosmic divide against you. You let them, you placed it. That should be your dominant zone. You let their chamber fire back two shots from all the way over towards secret, where they're the only angle you have to worry about directly and actively, because every other one is cornered off by the cosmic divide. That cannot be allowed to happen. Northwood truly didn't deserve the result they got in that round, but they still managed to clutch up and win it. Now they've put the same level of aggression is towards the A site. Dip's able to take down Druff. Best uh, Emperor Palpatine impression you can get. Here comes Smart Punch. Good for one. Ted joins them on the feed there onto Rip Benji. And now they have at least a tied position. Dip frags back for one more. Darkest gets a fragment onto the player still in their overcharge. But Ted has that Spectre kill. Long range will be at their disadvantage. Maybe collecting a rifle towards the back of sight. But with Spike already down, it's up to Northwood to just play for the post plant. Initial tease, forcing the player back. Polygaga's done and dusted. Darkest had found the kill, and Tyler will secure it onto Ted. Northwood tie us out 10-10. See, I already mentioned it, man. I mean, it comes down to these attacking sides where we start to see these teams start to really pick up the momentum and start to drive themselves. That even then, as much of a dominant of a half as some places may look, it could always be switched up. We saw Indiana, and we talked about how good, how they know this map, how they definitely came into it prepared. They still ended up being in a 7-5 lead at the end of this first half, expecting them to really run away with this game and have that much more. But I think, honestly... Looking at this game now, Indian, it's where they have to step up because they, once again, we talk about it in this defensive side, teams are falling asleep at the wheel, not only just for this series, but the last one as well, that we have to make sure that common consistency is there across the board and that huge well combined with the snake, with the snake bite can be just enough to find that first pick and know that probably a Trojan horse is really into effect here because so much noise being made over towards the B-side as well that nobody's rotated off of this. It's so interesting to see the fact that any of the Hoosiers, despite knowing that North would have gone to the A side every single round up to this point, still are defending actively with two players static on site B. It works out because they do manage to find themselves at least one kill, but they do lose those two players in the process. Still a net negative for them. With two players still standing, one of them being Smart Punch, you're not out of this round just yet. Fast lane popped up, unfortunately, this goes about three feet forward and then stops. Not sure why it managed to slow it down so much. d Ruff's the only player on the side of the Hoosiers to find themselves a kill, but it's fragged back instantly. Player in the back of B and, of course, over towards B Long. Northwood will now collect themselves in a very steady fashion. That's five in a row to bring themselves up to 11. Oh, this is where things get start to sit low, really, really sticky. And honestly, we're Northwood. We're seeing them start to really feel this confidence. I mean, that is five in a round. That's all it really comes down to. That's the problem. That's where we have to see a stall come through. This is where we have to see Indiana really start to feel themselves. And problem is they don't even have the resources to do that. They don't have the guns to really hunker down and hold the sights. So, I mean, this could be almost a guaranteed 12-10 on our hands right now if we don't see indiana pull off something miraculous they have to find a way to dodge this utility know that the information given is going to work in their favor with a double ultimate coming down the null command and the nightfall it makes the job damn near impossible tendrils across the floorboard give them an exact idea where the player is lying we're just an approximate one at that 
They go for the plants, but Beast Moon sneaks on out there with the sheriff and will at least find Ollie. Dip's now got four kills and ace potential on the board. It looks like they'll start to retreat back towards Secret. Dip has the chance they'll go through mid window. They have an opportunity, but they can't close out and Polly Gaga will now have the chance of their life in this round. The miracle you said the Hoosiers need. This could be it. Will we have a repeat of round three? The same exact player decided instead to save the rifle for the next round instead of going for the post plant and planting. The first round that they had given to Northwood University, which now I'm sure is a pain for them looking at the current score line. Alagaga's running out of time. Smart decision by Northwood. One swinging over from stairwell on main. It's Rit Finji. Good for the kill. And Northwood University will secure not just match point here, match Dallas, point. but series point here in this BO3. Here. And there's money available for Indiana, and they have the Seekers as well. So things are looking doable for them, but man, are a lot of odds stacked against their favor right now, knowing that they found themselves their last round six rounds ago. They haven't had a taste of victory in a while here. So, I mean, it's obviously, it's something that they're looking for. I feel like they're almost turning rabid for it by this point to where they feel like it's it's not necessary. It's required to even keep the series going. Know that this is their map selection. They looked confident on it in that first half, but is it just attacker's luck? The fact that you can lurk around the map, you have more space to work with. This we mentioned it again and again that Valor is a war of attrition, and we haven't seen Indiana really on this defensive side push for that space and find that control that's so darn necessary. These seekers, as sure, it tells you a little, there's a little bit of a split, but honestly, at the end of the day, it tells you absolutely nothing. They're just roaming around the map. See the arc. Sure, somebody's in the middle. Somebody's right towards the middle as well, over towards the left side. Somebody's in arc, probably up in the middle. Tells you absolutely nothing where you're saying, oh man, I should have waited a little bit longer because there's finally your first tell. Somebody with blood on their hands and it's going to be dip. Like, you know that the push is probably going on A. You've already lost another body in the meantime on Smart Punch. A 5v3, Indiana have to clutch this up to keep themselves in this game. Sitting inside of Dugout Dip. Fast lane creates some space as well. Now flush around the corner, and no, d -Ruff cannot find the shots to connect. The Palpatine will come out successful. Tyler goes in. Polly Gaga no. not able to find a second despite the first connecting. And that will not matter. The Hoosiers will fall, unfortunately, for Polly Gaga, which is Highland Grant grad student, which is interesting to see. Like I said, they have a lot of interesting facts on their page. I love reading this, but... Still, the victory will fall in favor of Northwood as they take that one 13-10. A huge, and I mean huge, return. Something that if you had told me that after the first half that Northwood would be able to close out with a three-round gap, might I, a three-round buffer over yeah. the top of Hoosiers, I would be amazed. And I got to say, even then, I mean, looking at the set line, I talked about it. These teams, these younger teams, more importantly, are just in newer maps in general. We always say the attacking side is going to be favored. Because teams don't really know how to fight for that control. They don't know where defaults. We don't know where these checkpoints and these chokeholds are really going to take place. So teams are afraid to push on the defense. They don't know where this attacking approach is going to come from. It's literally almost like we see strap roulette in full force on these kinds of maps when they're new. Put a spray on the ground, say, is it A, B, or C? We don't know. We don't care. We're just going to follow the signs and just get ourselves somewhere and try to kill as many people in the process. Defenders, they like to work around that. They like to figure out where these teams' weaknesses are. Pearl, this map was a complete, complete blindside for everybody here. Indiana came into it looking prepared, and they started on the attacking side. And Northwood, I think, knew that. They said that we just need to fight for relevancy. We need to start on the defensive side, which is going to suck. We're going to go through absolute hell for the first half. But that's okay. We need to make sure we keep ourselves in the game and 7-5, I got to say, that is an outstanding way to stay relevant here in a matchup when you look at the opposition choosing this map up against you. The turnaround was almost instantaneous. We saw three rounds come out for Indiana, but Northwood passed that point. Said, all right, hmm, figured it out. One round, two round, three round, just again and again and again. Win, 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 win. We close out the map, series point. Easy as that. I mean, Indiana... I hate to say it, man, but I mean, it feels like you guys were an open book in a situation like yeah. this. And you cannot let that happen, especially against Northwood. The only times I've seen teams recover from a situation where the attack is just so heavily beating down the door on the A side is when you have a hero player. When you've got that raid yep. boss of a player, the one that's just so good, they can solo defend that site. Cyphers can do it fairly well. They can really slow down that initial push out the gates, but 
you got to have such clinical talent and skill. And the problem is, even though you have a ton of clinical talent and skill, uh, Indiana, you, you're meeting another team that's just better. Northwood are an amazing squadron. There's a reason why they're ranked so high. And the fact you put up a fight that much beyond impressive for your team. Do not go out of this one hanging your heads down low. Be proud of what you did. Were you facing a lesser team? The mental damage you did early in that first half probably would have been enough for you to finish yeah. out the rest of that half. Truly could have been the case, but Northwood's not a team that's going to let their mental be dropped by such a performance. They even recovered in the first half, let alone having to play into the second to take the victory. Great game overall. We've seen teams struggle. You talk about the fact that Northwood came into this saying we're expecting that first half to not go so well, saying you're expecting it to be a lopsided affair. Houston had the same problem initially in the map of Breeze. There were even Houston fans in, in game two of the night where they were in the chat saying, where is Houston gone? What's our lineup? What are we doing? And complaining about what they're doing. And then they slaughter in the, in the second half of that game, right? It's not over until it's over. And teams at the top of the books... They know that, and they're sticking true to it all the way to the end. Congratulations, Northwood. You take your victory here in week one over the Indiana Hoosiers, and though their record may now be 0-1, and one, we've set a precedent for them, and they look like a very good team that can maybe make some waves here, especially in the latter half of the season here in the Champions Division Dallas. Yeah, they most definitely could because, I mean, this season is only getting started. Sure, as you mentioned, 1-0 starts, 0-1 starts. It doesn't matter. There's plenty more teams to come around. Northwood's going to step up once again. They're going to be even better in Pearl next week. So you got to make sure to go ahead and get on that map and get prepared for it. Even then, I think for a lot of teams, Haven needs to be worked on a little bit more. But regardless, we're not even going to see those maps every single time. Vine's going to be brought out over the course of the season. Fracture, I know, is going to come into play by some schools if it's a first pick because a lot of teams hate that map. So go ahead and start getting ready to pick that one and get it out of the way as well. No matter what it is, there's going to be a lot more cases, a lot more clutches, a lot more plays. We're going to get a lot more weeks here at the NECC, and we're getting ready to bring every single one of them to you. So thank you all for tuning in for the night. That's going to be the conclusion here, at least for the A stream. I know B stream wrapped it up way back when, but don't worry. we got more NECC action every single day of the week in other esports as well. But for Valorant specifically, we'll be right back here next Monday. We'll catch you then.